Welcome everybody to the second week of our Mon T well, our TOT weeklies here at Monkey Bubble. It's the Peanut Butter Cup. We're back here today. I'm Men of Class, joined here today by Gooba. Hi Gooba, welcome to the channel. Welcome to uh, the event. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. You know, this is uh, going to be an exciting set of days. We have a lot of really good players coming from the EU scene that I'm excited to kind of like break into. Uh, I've actually played with a lot of these players in uh, previous tournaments, so it's going to be a uh, exciting, uh, exciting uh, couple games. Yeah, of course, you're coming in here as the, uh, I would say, the pro player, so to speak. Uh, I'm, I'm here to, to, to learn as much from you as I can and then uh, go into my own games and just beat everyone up. That's that's how we do. Um, but yeah, we're here to beat for EU TFT. That's what we're doing here, you know? And it gets a lot of, lot of attention, so let's do it on our region. Uh, of course, Monkey Bubble has a uh, big history here in the region and we try to perpetuate that. Uh, but yeah, we have 16 players today starting off of the first three lobbies and then when they uh, score enough points They get to join the top eight for the last three rounds starting here with the first lobby We have Jarin, Tsuyan, Harry Frog, Skipeus, Nightmare, TMS, Konogan, Restrito and King Cappuccino uh, I'm looking forward to this lobby actually. There's a few uh, familiar names for us at Monkey Bubble, but in general in the EU scene. Um, very, very notable, of course, Skip Pace from the uh, EU Worlds qualifiers. Didn't quite make it, but it did make it to the top eight. So you would say expect a lot from him. But the last time we saw him on Monkey Bubble didn't quite pull through. So uh, maybe first place is just not their, uh, not, well, not their game. Yeah, I mean, the, the main three players that I'm looking for are Skip, uh, TMS, Conigan, and um, uh, Nightmare as you know, those are the players that I have experience playing against, and you know they've they performed well in the tournaments that I played with. Um, yeah. So I'm excited to see what we got. So we got a pretty balanced carousel to start with. You know, we always appreciate those uh, going into the game. There's nothing worse than a uh, a glove, 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 tier, tier, tier carousel. Yeah, it does. It does look like uh, we're going to get a reset for this game. I think the players are like, "Oh, we started too early. We got to we got to remake the lobby." Uh, doesn't really uh, doesn't really bother me. It, obviously, it just it can't just happen. So we'll see uh, when they get back into it. Um, yeah, car carousel is of course the main thing you have to have to worry about in the first start. Uh, let's see where we end up actually with this because, uh, like we said, this is the peanut butter weekly. It has a slightly different format than maybe people are used to, so uh, points don't get dropped over these all these six games. But for the first three rounds, we have 16 players, so we have to reseed the lobbies after every round, making sure that the top players are well not consistently put against each other and. You know, you actually get a fair seating, so everyone gets a fair shot at that top eight. Uh, and then for for the points specifically, we're not giving that bonus point to the first place. So first place gets nine, then second get eight, gets eight, and then seven, and then six. And there is that bonus point for getting top four. So afterwards, you go to four, three, two, one. Um, we talked about this a little bit before the show started. I know you really like that point change. Uh, yeah. Explain ex explanation why? Because of course, obviously, you know, there's been a conscious choice to do this. Yeah, so my, my favorite thing about it is it really rewards consistent play. And, you know, if you're not somebody like Robin, who's able to go 1-1-5, one, 1-1-1 one, 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 um, an attorney, then, you know, it, it really uh, benefits the consistent, flexible player, right? And uh, I think at the end of the day, TFT is a game that really shows skill expression over multiple games and consistency rather than, in my opinion, or at least how, that's how I feel the game should be played rather than the high roll mode, which of course the high roll moments yeah. feel great. But, you know, when we're talking about competitive TFT, you definitely need, uh, you know, a, a, a level of, you know, feeling good, so to speak. It, it's it's really that same thing where, uh, you know, I, tr I was thinking about it this morning and I was thinking, oh, you know, it's kind of like poker in a lot of ways. Where in poker, there's a lot of people that can consistently, you know, get good hands or know how to know how to play the game really well. And then there's the people who, you know, just just sucker down on the river and be like well you know what i don't even know what yep. i have but all of a sudden i get a straight and that's that's kind of what high rollers sometimes have there's more skill involved don't get me wrong yeah. these are really good players but you know when you do see these players sometimes play they're like yeah you're just you just playing hoping you're gonna get this and then you just got lucky that you actually got it in your shop with the right amount of gold so you didn't have to overspend all those things it's like the the, the risk assessment was not really with you there you weren't playing the odds so much as you were just trying to get get lucky um and it does feel a little bit i wouldn't say unfair but it does feel a little bit wrong to not reward consistent proper tactical players with right risk assessment that just overall play an amazing game 
uh, that being said, I do like emphasis on wins. Like, I do want to mm-hmm. see the person that eventually wins also actually have won a round. Um, but there's always that balance you need to strike. And I think we're doing a decent job today with this new format. Yeah, I think exploration of formats is definitely one of the things that TFT needs most in the competitive scene because, you know, as we've seen, the, the scene is growing, but it's, you know, still a point of contention for a lot of people. Um, you know, does it feel truly competitive, so on and so forth. But I think yeah. that doing there are steps like this are really driving in the right direction. Um, yeah, of course. And another, and, uh, yeah, that, that's the, it's the well, whole thing. I mean, go ahead. Sorry. I'm. Uh, oh, no, you're all good. Another point here. I wanted to touch on was that uh, so for in a situation where like your opener, right, you get full uh, fully upgraded Sentinel skirmishers, right? as opposed to somebody who gets no upgrades, no clear direction, and still manages to top four, there's a stark difference in that like high roll um, and your ability to to go first. So I think that, you know, this format definitely benefits the consistent, um, recoverable player. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it, it, And I do like that about it as well. It's the consistency factor. It's the, uh, you know, which points in the game become more important because of a different scoring system. Because it's not so much as, oh, you get more points for winning. No, it's just the, uh, uh, the consistent play throughout the game, but also allowing someone to sort of come back and still shoot for that top four and not feeling like you lost too much of a bonus. Because if you get that bonus point for winning, you also see people play very differently to try and get that first place for those bonus points. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that that gives you uh, a bigger lead. It makes your game different. Uh, and rather than always trying to not be in bottom four or trying to be in top four, you're going to see people um, min max a lot more, where they either get first or they get last. Very simply put. Uh, now oh. we're actually going to go into a game. We've got one. It's time. Let's see what this first lobby is going to bring us. We're in the carousel, and uh, it, oh, it's a, it's a struggle as usual. Get the right items. No one going for the cloak as we probably expect because cloak it, it's been a bit of a joke this patch hasn't it <laughs> for, for the most part i mean unless you're willing to go into something like uh specifically a jacks board or um you know a couple other like skirmisher based boards openers cloak is definitely one of the lower priority but i am surprised that uh one of our players did take ap over the cloak because i think that at the end of the day ap is one of the weakest starting items but that's it, my personal it, it preference. It definitely can be. It's, it's you know, it's it, again, and that's the, comes, the, what it comes down to, right? Preference and what do you want to do? We're going to see Skip just going for the double Olafs. Uh, you know, Olaf stand right here. Got to gotta keep it up. Got to keep keep the home team. But, um, yeah, for, for now, it, it does look like everyone is uh, getting settled comfortably into their first pathing. Uh, I don't, I'm not really worried for anyone just yet. I mean, losing to minions is really a thing of the past, I'd say. Uh, but we're going to see what yeah. they come up with as they go through the through the ranks. So Skip has a extremely strong opener. Uh, I, I'd be very hard pressed not to see him win streak throughout the stage just based off here, right? He's already got upgraded skirmishers. He's got a path to to more upgrades. The only thing he's missing is that sentinel board. But you know, if I was him, I would uh, I would be a little relaxed right now. Yeah, for sure. You don't have to go hard pressed into spending a lot of gold to get get stuff. You I mean he did he did spend a little bit of gold to roll a bit through, but it was worth it in this case because obviously if you get that uh, the triple skirmisher up straight away, you're going to be happy. Might actually be able to build draconic into it. You see him saving the Zyra, uh, and that can lead to some fun shenanigans later on. He's already got the axe. Uh, I mean, it, it, yeah, he know. has a draconic if he wants to play it. Um, I it. wonder. I think he's thinking about it a little bit. You know, there, there's a there's an argument to be made that he can play this into um, basically any board that he wants, but he does sacrifice a little bit of it. early game strength. He's doing it. He's oh, doing we like it. to see that. We like to see I, uh, that. Very I, I interesting. Like, I definitely like it. I mean, I'm I'm one of those people that played Draconic in the last set. I really like the Draconic trait, uh, and I don't know how I feel about it in this set. It's it's a little bit a little bit different. So with the most recent nerfs, we've actually been seeing a lot more, or at least me personally on ladder, I've been seeing a lot more draconic, um, just because it, like with any patch, there's a little bit of ambiguity that happens as to like yeah. what's the best. So it's always good to lean on something that you know can build you a strong late game. Um, I'm curious to see if uh, this is the route that he goes. 
Um, yeah, for, for me, for me, Draconic right now, it feels a lot more conditional than it used to. So there's a lot of things that need to go your way for Draconic to really spike. Uh, and right now, yeah, the early game can be good. I mean, Ash and uh, and especially Udyr are just like they're good mm. early games. I reckon I put a lot. Um, but I'm, I'm always worried that uh, you're not going to get a strong enough front line in the later game that your Draconic will actually uh, push through because you need that carry in the back line. That's, that's where most of your DPS usually comes from. Uh, and if your front line just gets overpowered, if you don't have those defensive items, you really will just get uh, get thrown over. Uh, let's hop on over to a different board, though, because Draconic, as fun Ooh. as it is, we are going to have some other comps to talk about today. Let's uh, <laughs> let's go right yeah. here, Tsuyan. So, so this is actually uh, an opener that I have started to lean towards a lot. Now, it's interesting. I would not have slammed the Titans there, but what I've been liking to play, if you hit an early um, upgraded Kled, is uh, two Hellion, two Knight, um, two Cav. I've found that that's allowed me to streak through, you know, state, stage two almost consistently, as well as stage three, provided you have the right items. But um, yeah, very, very strong opener. So. Um, you know, now that Skip ha has decided to pivot into the Draconic board, he's definitely sacrificing his early game for uh, a higher payout late game. But uh, I think yeah. Suyan, from what we can see now and, you know, looking through the boards that we have available, Suyan is definitely in a, uh, a very good position. 100%. And yeah, I mean, the Titan Slam, it's, it's you know, it's a, it's a gutsy move. You know, but if you're gonna win streak, if you're gonna keep that up, it's good to start slamming some items so you don't have to spend more gold to get uh, uh, ch champion levels. Um, I do like the Titans in general. It's so such a flexible item that you can put it on any carry, really. It might not be the most optimal in every situation, but if, if you want to keep that win streak up right now, it's a 100% great choice. And of course, you know, put it on them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the, the, key, the key to winning early game, I mean, Majority of people do know this, but the key to winning early game is all about slamming your items. Oh, yeah. I believe Socks, you know, Mismatch Socks, for those who don't know, um, one of our uh, top NA players, he, he, his whole purpose on slamming items is essentially every single round that you have an item on a board gives you increasing value, right? So now instead of um, greeting for items, he's playing a Titans for the next 25 state or round. So. You know, he gets increased value on that investment, even if it is sub uh, Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's a great play. That's, 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 that's the, you know, the economy play right there. When it's, you know, it's gold versus items. And if you use items to substitute for having to roll gold or like roll for champions, then you, you also just basically get a gold net average that you win. Um, that being said, though, we're going to get Carousel and, you know, win streakers are not going to get to go first. So what are they going to get left with? Uh, this, kid, this case is going to be Conagon and uh, and Suyan. So I'm really, really surprised. Yeah, I'm really surprised to see all the uh, the tiers and AP items going first. Him getting the sword here, I mean that that just that secures the lobby or the yeah. the early game lobby for him. I'd imagine that he'll go through the route of a BT, but there's an argument for IE um, as we've been seeing a little resurgence of Draven in the meta. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, you can you can either you can either build a bloodthirster, can maybe build uh, build a, build an edge. You know, I would uh, I would personally go for the edge in this situation, seeing as what the rest the rest of the stuff he's got. But you know, maybe he waits for a bow, puts uh, puts on a hurricane somewhere. It is there's a lot of options for him right there. But uh, oh, he's going for the bloodthirster. Actually, I don't mind that. Yep. I actually do not mind this on Clyde. So he's gonna lean into like a uh, a uh, Jack's board. Uh, mid to late game with the potential for a a, a uh, action later, but um, we'll see what he goes with, what he hits. I mean, he's keep holding on to the skirmishers, so that tends to you know lead me to a a skirm sentinel board pivot, depending on again what he hits. Yeah, I mean skirmishers, they they've uh, they've had a fun time of it. I mean, I remember skirmisher before you had to hit nine. You know, this is mm -hmm. nine skirmisher. That was uh, it's it's the impossible dream. But if you get it off, it is uh, it's a powerhouse, depending on a uh, you know whether you can scale properly. But in this case, yeah, I do agree. I do think that's uh, that's the route they're tr probably gonna go. But they still do still op also get the legionnaire option open a little bit. Maybe the redeemed angle with that. Uh, uh, with that all well, that bench that they've got going on right now i don't know what the vladimir is doing there though maybe that's just a, a save maybe could pivot into four things now but it's a little so, bit so, of a uh, questionable for me yeah one thing that um 
myself and you know the majority of high, high level players will do is if there's a round that you cannot directly make your econ threshold you can buy out the entire shop so what that does is remove units from the pool um potentially give you better odds of seeing something that you do want to see or you know say the next shop um you hit um we'll say another two vlads and a yasuo then in that situation you may ha open up uh, an opportunity for a pivot so if it doesn't cost you anything um to hold that Might hold well. units it's always recommended to hold them so exactly yeah well, i mean it's uh it's always a fun one at least it's not it, it's not a conscious choice to maybe pivot but maybe it could relate into a pivot that's for sure mm -hmm. uh, sure very valuable um so right now we're looking at a situation where konogan is i mean they were win streaking but they have uh, at least suffered one loss and it might go into another one here although it does look like that uh, that front line is just a bit too beefy to get through uh yeah no that is a uh me a good gragas <laughs> yeah you see you see the uh the chug and the uh the nunu coming at you and uh <laughs> not much you can do not much you can do not much no. speaking of i mean the brawler starts i mean we do see a lot of night starts nowadays the sentinels mm -hmm. coming to skirmishers but the brawler starts are less popular than i than, than i would maybe like i mean they're very tanky characters they do a lot of do do a lot of annoying things to your uh, to your other team especially that nunu just bites it's, it's such a chomp you know it just gets gets a unit out of the way most of the time especially early game uh and it puts a lot of health in your way you know that that brawler bonus is insane especially if you stack some armor on it um so it does surprise me that not everyone chooses to pivot to that uh more often yeah i, I tend to lean into the brawler opener um actually in a situation where i have a sigs and a brand so it's interesting to me that he yeah. sold that brand there because that, that tells me that he's not leaning into an ap board no because in my opinion i think uh if you're going towards the ap direction it is worth losing that one gold to pick up that brand so very very interesting oh. yeah so suyan yep definitely pivoting into um a Jax lucian angle just based off that quick uh glimpse of his board that we saw but we have two players win streaking here. I was not able to get uh, Conigan's matchups, so we don't, or I wasn't able to predict if we were playing Jaren. But you know, this is this is a tough board to go against. It, yeah, I, I have, especially now that Suyan has uh, the Nico pickup, it, it's going to be tough for him to uh, not be going into state or level seven, level eight, fairly healthy. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Jaren is just do is is currently uh still with Stray King Kong on actually dropping down the board. Um, but yeah, well, we're gonna see what uh, what Jaren Jaren has been uh, running Nightbringer by the way, in case you were uh, you were wondering. He's running with yeah, Asuo I... and uh, <laughs> and Sejuani, of course. Uh, he's yeah, gonna, despite he's the nerfs. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. Well, I mean, if you get the opener, you can't really like even with the nerfs. If you get the opener, you kind of don't want to. Uh, try and spend gold to try and get something else if you already know you've got a good opener with that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, nerfs, nerfs, patch changes, etc. They sure they mean something, but in an early game like this, I mean, there's still plenty of room to pivot at this moment. You do want to just start off with that Yasuo combo if you can. Yeah, and honestly, those nerfs, you know, while they did seem significant up front, and I kind of dismissed Yasuo as a comp uh, going into this B patch. Yasuo is still a very, very strong comp. Um, the most popular build has been uh, a Cavalier Yasuo, surprisingly enough. It makes him yeah. extremely tanky, near impossible to kill if he has a little bit of sustain. So we'll see if uh, we get to see any of that. But I I'm fairly confident that Jaren stays locked into that Yasuo. Um, yeah, it does look like it. Uh, and we'll see, of course, what uh, results that will bring them. Right now, though, Konogan. I mean, they've just been uh, been tanking some rounds in a row right now. Yeah. Let's uh, yep. let's hope they can either recover or they're just gonna lost streak for a little bit, get the gold that way. It's also a possibility. And Carousel is coming up, so maybe if you can drop a few more places, might get a bit of better item out of it. I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past them. Yeah, and it's it's really curious that we're seeing as many players lean into Draconic. Um, here's we are because I feel like in NA at least, yeah, I, I very rarely see the Draconic. Um, being yeah. played, especially in a, uh, a style such as this. Typically, it's uh, similar to the meta that we saw, what, a month and a half ago, where everybody played to reroll for Heimdinger. Yeah. Um, 
So I, I'm Can curious to see where Connigan goes. Time. <laughs> I, I definitely am, am too, and I do. I don't think you need Heimerdinger to make the Draconic work. I think you can definitely uh, pair it with some other traits that will really work well on it. Sure, the Heimerdinger is amazing to have, uh, but you can also, you know, try and figure something else out of combo with it. I mean, I've seen plenty of people just build that stronger front line, so you put some more emphasis on, uh, you know, maybe getting a Revenant combo up or. Uh, you know, something more brawler, knight, ironclad like, it's possible. Because um, then you can just have your draconic be in the back line and just, if you have the defensive and the, and the offensive items to make that work, then the Heimerdinger, it might add something, but it's always about whether he gets that ultimate off. And if you don't have the items for that, then the Heimerdinger becomes less and less valuable. So we got King Cappuccino here. What's he going to opt into? Sitting at 60 HP, last place. He opts for the one cost here. Okay, so he wants the, the Rage Blade. Makes sense, you know, he, he has an ability to play an Aphelios board. Um, those items can even lend in Dilution or Jax if absolutely necessary. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's in an interesting spot. He's got the, the Tome on the bench, you know, could potentially lead himself to a pretty strong board. It very well could, uh, but he is currently looking for a, a little bit more. I mean, that Skirmisher board, it's something that that has been, you know, that's been played plenty. I mean, everyone knows a good, a good skirmisher combo. But he's got currently got so much on the bench that doesn't quite work out. So now he's having to split split traits between three of them, and nothing's really mm -hmm. sticking out to me. Is like that's the route that he has to go because of his board, because of everything, like the items as well. It's it's a bit questionable like where he can pivot to. Um, there again, the health is not at a point where I'm really worried, but he needs to start moving into a specific, more specific direction soon. Otherwise, this might not go their way. And uh, we are, you know, obviously in the first round. So there is a little bit of leeway. You don't have to worry about the points as much just yet. But you don't want to have more of these after that. <laughs> No, and unfortunately he does fight uh, Suyan, who did aggressively yeah. take the level to 7, and uh, he is going to take a f oh, 4 you know loss. Mm. So, uh, definitely definitely not a great feeling for him. Uh, hopefully, uh, he's not even lose streaking, so exactly. definitely an like, awkward that's, position. That's the thing. Like, his, his economy is not in the best spot. Uh, he hasn't rolled towards level 7. He has not been able to get, uh, you know, to get a, a plethora of amazing items like they're good items but not amazing items so there there isn't really any specific way that i see uh King cappuccino going with this uh does level up the, the olaf a bit late in the game i mean two star olaf at uh 3.6 is not really what you're looking for it's good that you have a two star but you know maybe a little bit more yeah. um and the yeah. same thing like his lee sin is still on one his pike is on one uh, it's it's not a uh, not a hot one for him at this stage yeah, I'll be honest. If I was him, I would, um, I'd be kind of hurting a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. he's he doesn't have, he he doesn't really have anything going for him right now. I mean, he's pretty far away from level seven, where he needs to hit a four star carry if he wants to stabilize. And uh, yeah, he needed his radiant item choices were not the greatest. I, though I am a fan of radiant blessing, not necessarily in this situation. He doesn't have a path to more tank items such as like a bramble that you would like or a dragon's claw. Or a gargoyle stone plate. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if he's able to claw well, this one back up to the top. Uh, well, he did just get Mr. Nine Wind Streak off of it, didn't he? Very interesting. Yeah. Oh, That's, and he gets uh, his Aphilios. He gets exactly what he wants. Wow. All right. So, you know, this game is starting to shape up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what he's looking could for. Be a lot, could be a lot worse. Uh, yeah, no, 100%, 100%, you know, and, and all of a sudden that does open up a lot more possibilities. The Yasuo comes in, uh, he gets to sell a bunch of units, so he gets to spend it on some other things. Uh, the pike goes away. These are these are a lot of, uh, there's, there's a lot of good stuff. And, you know, that just show, proves us wrong. You just have to get the right, am the right amount of, uh, of luck or the right amount of RNG and uh, his gold's back up to 50 now as well. So he's going to start getting that uh, all that interest up on it. This is all of a sudden Cappuccino potentially calling it back. It goes up to sixth place at the moment. Yep. Yeah, um, some might even call Seven. this one the, the classic player diff. You know, that's what uh, yeah. that's what I would yeah. chalk that one up to. So I would now he is, to get this one back perfect. and all of a sudden he's just there. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Oh, and look, there's the there's yeah, the Hector. No. He he's pretty stable right now. He's doing you know? it. He's pretty he stable. Like Cavalier Yasuo, I guess, with the Aphelios behind it, maybe. That is a front line, though. 
Oh, wow. And he gets the Ranger Emblem? Though you could opt into the Mystic, depending on the board. I haven't gotten a full grasp of how many AP players, but Mystic, Ranger, both great choices. You saw him think a little bit, but he was leaning towards Mystic straight away. I mean, if you yeah, want miss that Lulu, if you opt that Lulu a little bit more, that's actually a really good shout, shout because she just disables so much of what that front line wants to against, do against your comp. And mm -hmm. if assassins come at you, you wanna you wanna disable them as much as possible. Yeah, and you can see the joy on King Cappuccino's face. He knows that he is in a great spot. He is, yeah. he is uh, he was worried for a second, but he is relaxed. Yeah. In other news, Chuyan actually losing that uh, losing that win streak finally got a loss on the board so it's uh, uh, yeah. Chuyan not building in, building in a draconic anymore but does oh already has a volley bear on the board well, i mean on the bench at the moment but that's going to go in at some point yeah uh, and he also has so, already as well wow yeah and he also has his fortnite angle um ideally here right the strongest board that he could play into would be that jacks current yeah. state and unless again he gets uh the auction up Oh, the Lucian goes in, maybe... He has a Senna. He has a Senna. He could play he could it if he wanted do it. to. No, he's an... No, the... Oh, he's a Senna in the, in the, in the shop. Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. I was going to say, he doesn't have it on the bench, but... Uh, gotta... Yeah, so he has two angles here. He can either play the Six Sentinel. Um, he can play the Six Sentinel two night. You get the misfor Misfortune in there as well. You get some more Cannoneers in the board, but then you're kind of missing that fourth, so it's not really worth it. Yeah, I think for the most part in this lobby, um, we'll see him lean into either Ironclads or just maintain the Knights if he is going to play additional. Right now, unless you have the Cannoneer spat, um, to make it to late game, it's pretty hard to uh, play for Cannoneers. You definitely need some kind of defensive trait or supporting unit to help, you know, beef up your team a little bit, for lack of better words. I mean, with both the Galio and the, and the Volley Bear, you could definitely go there, but you want an Ivern or a Fiddlesticks with that. Oh, there you go. That's some good units. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what you get for going early eight, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'll be curious to see if he plays the Garen because right now, well, since he did pick up that that Teemo, he does have an ability to do magic damage. Yeah. Because typically in this comp, um, the majority of people that do play Jax, you know, we'll, we'll call them Jax one tricks, Fortnite one tricks. They don't, they ignore. I personally ignore Garen unless I can confidently get him two star because for the most part, this comp does no magic damage. So yeah, it's interesting to see him pick it up. He's got a need. He does have an so ego. He has, he has that option to, you know, bet on the fact that he's probably going to get a fi another five cost, whether it's the Volley Bear, whether it's the Gwen, or whether it's the Garen. <laughs> so that's a pretty big chance you're going to get that, especially seeing how many people there are actually on level eight because it's not everyone in the lobby at the moment. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's that's just a little bit of uh, of statistics right there, just chance calculation. I would I feel that, very confident in that one as well. That and um, the fact that he wins that 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 fight with you know, honestly, I, I would say that that's kind of a, a middle tier board to say the least. The fact that he wins that, you know, that really just puts him in a position to really capitalize. He can either continue and sack maybe 20, 30, 40 HP. Um, and go nine very healthily, as well as with a lot of economy, or he can continue to roll it down and try and find upgrades, especially considering he has that Nico. So interesting. Um, looking down at the bottom of the board, I'm, uh, I'm seeing Skip, Skip A is, he, uh, he did take that risk to play the Draconic early. The roll. And uh, right now he is 25 HP. He's got a couple strong units. Um, he has a Fawn as well. So he has that additional unit to play, but he hasn't found the upgrades on the carries. So. Um, could be a concerning spot, but if he does hit the units that he's looking oh, for, he's he'll stabilize for very, very hard. And with a player like Skip, right? Yeah, with a player like Skip, right, he's going to be scouting. He's going to be looking for his next fight. So um, Velkaz definitely leans very, very well into that. Very good unit to play um, as a default. If you have AP items, you don't have the ability to get a blue buff on a Gwen, on a Karma, um, so on and so forth. So. You know, very, very good, uh, very good board if you are scouting, looking for your next fight, avoiding the ability to get thresh hooked. And he, since he has a double trap call, I mean, he's he's pretty safe. That Velkaz is I mean, tucked it's in like, that corner. It's not just double trap claw, it's trap claw plus radiant trap claw. Like it's a double, yes. it's, it's, it's kind of like two and a half or three, even if you want to, if you want to go that far. So it's, it, it's such a safe place for him to be. Um, yep. Even though he's still, it's still a one star, I think it's, it's just not, you know, 
not something to worry about indeed uh got the full redeemed buffs as well as so a redeemed six inanimate cruel you know gets everything on there i mean yeah it's a hard board to beat and even then if they get to the Valkos, they're still a teemo so mm -hmm. you could also worry about that one it's uh yeah, yeah i don't know I, i'm pretty pretty confident about skip i mean he is on 25 health yeah. so he really cannot afford to lose a lot of rounds especially late game but i don't think he's gonna lose a few, lose a lot right now no, I mean there are some uh, some uh, potential that he does get a uh, well, get a little bit of bad luck, but mm -hmm. ooh, you know, no no healing on this fell cause. He minimizes the damage that he takes, but he does still take a loss. So he's he was thinking about potentially going nine there, um, maintaining econ going nine, but he has to roll. Otherwise, uh, yeah, it's looking like an eighth for him. Mm hmm. We'll get to the extra night bonus, yeah. and then um. The Galio, so so yeah, it's still maintaining that win streak. Yeah, okay, so you got the Lucian. Um very strong board. Yeah, he's gonna confidently go nine. I mean he can Suyan, well they can uh play just about anything that they want here. I mean they they have the money, they have the units, they have the economy. You know, yeah. they there there's not much that they can't do. Yeah, they'd use their Nikos, which uh, they had earlier on if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and I think yeah, that you know in a in a tournament good. situation in a tournament situation, especially in this format, you know, getting that bonus point for just the top four, it's always best to play your strongest board as well as to give yourself the upgrades to play that strongest board. And the fact that he gets a a uh, a tome, you know, it's I, I I'd I'd be very hard pressed. I'd be willing to put money down right now to say that they're going first. Yeah, it's it's a very very hard thing <laughs> thing to argue against. Uh, Emblem's not amazing. I mean, he gets an extra invoker. I mean, sure, you get invoker two. It's a, it's a mm -hmm. fun upgrade. Um, it's, it's just because his, his ward is so optimized. You know, everything else he would have put on on the, all those emblems would not really have gotten him anything because he's got such good traits already lined up. Uh, I mean, splitting across what is this seven traits? That's just uh, that's just a very hard one to beat at this stage for a lot of for a lot of uh, a lot of other boards. That being said, this is looking like a good start for their opponent. This is uh, Konogon they're playing against. And Konogon yeah. did drop off a little bit, and probably because of that lost streak, actually got back mm -hmm. on the board. You can see it right here. All those Forgotten gets Cavalier out. This is a, uh, it's a strong one to go against. Yeah, and I mean, Konogon should win that. On paper, should win that every single time. If we look at the gold, we look at the, the upgraded units. I mean, that's Konogon's fight to win. And to be honest, like I said, we have saw or I personally saw Draven starting to come back into the meta a little bit, and he's got some of the best items that you can get on Draven, uh, Radiant or non-Radiant. So, uh, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see. A lot of the the pro players that I've talked to and uh, I've watched have said that they actually try to lean into um, 4 Legion Air over 4 Forgotten. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if he maintains that 4 Legion Air just because of his economy position, or if he's going to start to pivot out of the MF and the Hecarim to play Knights and Four Legionnaires. So, uh, I think at this stage of the game, I think at this stage of the game where you've got those four forgotten up, it's hard to really pivot back into Four Legionnaire just because of the Legionnaire units that are actually available in the game. Uh, I mean, at this stage, trying to get those lower cost Legionnaires, I mean, you can try and get an Aatrox up, but why would you? Because it's, mm -hmm. it's not going to make your board stronger, just even with the trait. Uh, and Draven is looking like he's doing enough. It means you got the Radiant Rage Blade, and the Last damage. Whisper on it. Exactly. It's just he does so much. Like, do you really need to upgrade him with more attack speed? I think he's fine. Yeah, I mean, honestly, no matter what, I think he has a solid opportunity to top four. I, if I were him, you know, now the focus is on getting oh. the couple little upgrades that you can and uh, making sure that you're avoiding uh, opposite siding the Velkaz. And that's our first out, King Cappuccino. Gets the last place today. Uh, did still, not Skip was not Jaren able to say what's on that. Uh, no, Skip and Jaren are still in a very low spot at the moment, but uh, we did see just see Conogon just uh, absolutely wreck a board. And I think he's going to continue that streak. He's got got the Cavalier yep. emblem as an upgrade as well. Um, I'm uh, yeah, I mean Conogon to top four would definitely not be out of the other realm of possibilities. And Resdrato, we haven't really looked at it so far. He's win streaking at the moment. Um, let's see what he's great positioning he's here. Yeah, and also, um, Skip has not lost a fight since last time we tuned in, so be interesting no. to see uh, how this works out. Honestly, I say that the fight is in uh, Conagan's favor. You know, the, the the Draven positioning is, ooh, you know, the, the front line did just get melted. Can he heal through? No. Uh, unfortunate. The burst was too much. 
It, uh, it happens. It happens to the best of us. Sometimes your burst is just not good enough. A nightmare also uh, taking quite a good hit over there. And now you can see that it's everyone's so lobby. close together. It's really a tight lobby. I mean, Tsuyan is still in a pretty good spot. I don't think Tsuyan is based to worry. And Restrito, of course, on that win streak might be looking good, but everyone else is within 10 health points of each other. And that is a uh, scary place for everyone to be because it takes only one or two rounds and you're just out. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think that this format actually leads into my favorite style of TFT, uh, which is basically, you know, push levels, roll down, you know, even if it's suboptimal, because at the end of the day, getting that top four, you know, is essentially just like getting a, four, a first in uh, traditional tournament style. So I'm glad that, uh, that this is how the game is going to play out. I mean, the fact that we have so many people so low at 5-5, five, five, you know, we could have this game over by 6-2. Connor's actually worlds. get a good two start uh, thresh this late in the game. That's uh, that's a play right there. Well, I'll love to see it. But uh, yeah, let's see what Skip is going to do with this board yeah. currently because he's he's on the on the verge of either being top four or bottom four with that uh, with that 18 yep. health exactly in the middle of the pack right now. Let's see what he's Fair. going up against against Nightmare. I mean, that's actually a good matchup for him. I think. I mean, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Velcos, but I think he's got the better Velcos board here. Yeah, he'll out DPS the Velkaz, though the question is, does he have enough DPS to kill that Leona? That's that's, I mean, that's yeah. actually going to be the, the, the tough thing. He doesn't have the redemption, it though. Is. You know, when you're building boards like this, you definitely want to lean in towards some kind of uh, sustain on the Leona. But uh, good chance that this could, uh, you know, he's got this he, one he's now. He's going to win it, because it doesn't matter if he, he doesn't kill the Leona at first, because all he needs to do is just make sure that his units don't only focus the Leona. And that's what was fine. Like, that's the beauty of Velkos. He, ignore, he doesn't ignore a unit, but he goes through multiple units at the same time. So it doesn't matter if that Leona's there, as long as she's in the right spot, he'll just DPS everything behind it as well. Uh, yeah, so, and so Leona is never going to DPS everything down. It's not a carry like that. It's just a sustain unit. Oh yeah, it's it. You know, the Leona can save you a little bit of HP um, through the overtime matchup. Uh, Redeemed is great for uh, taking you overtime and winning the overtime. So uh, I was wondering if that was going to happen, but unfortunately, it did not end up that way for uh, Nightmare. But we did lose Jar in that round, so the the Draven did not, or the Yasuo did not work out. And we see the Sweat no. Swap, you know, the uh, the Phantom Swap as uh, as Solus has coined it, but. Uh, Great play, did not uh, afford him the correct positioning, but he does deny that uh, the Heimendinger. The Heimendinger can't cast. It uh, should be a pretty free matchup for for Skip this time around. Yeah, yeah the Heimerdinger... Like Velkos isn't too good, of a, too good of a spot right now. Like, he just doesn't get hit by the Heimerdinger ults, doesn't get hit by most of the abilities that go out. Uh, the claws are yep. just in the way. It, it's really The claws yep. are really saving that game. It's not the Velkos' DPS, it's the fact that he gets to do the DPS because of the, mm -hmm. of the claws next to it. We also lose Harry Frog and Conig in that round. So now it is the Suyan. Top four only. Uh, Resdra. It's, it, it's still the Su Suyan show, but so, Skip really got such a board upgrade that I'm really worried. I'm not, not really worried, but I'm really thinking that Skip might just be, you know, playing this one to the end. So I'm really curious as to what Suyan did because they had the ability to go nine pretty healthily, yeah. but now they're 40 gold. They're sitting at 40 gold. Um, level eight. I think they rolled down for a specific uh, for a specific unit, and I don't think they got it. Yeah, because I didn't see much board strength increase. To be honest with you, he's got two two star Lucian, so he might be trying to go for. He might have tried oh, to go for, you the, know, uh, for the third. That is a a, uh, a feasible play in this current meta. Um, interesting that he continues to roll it down, but uh, it it for me personally. It has felt significantly easier to hit three star four costs. There will be games where I'll see three to four three star four costs, um, you know, across all the different uh, boards. So walking off the revenant units as well, like both fiddle and volley you know, on his on his on his bench. He's yeah, really that this one uh, playing this one close to the chest. That and uh, it looks like Skip has this fight on lock. You know, positioned perfectly into Suyen. So we'll see how this plays out, but. Uh, Looks like Skip is doing all the right things. Yeah. I mean, showing why he's in, uh, you know, in the EU top eight. Well, he's both in the EU yep. top eight for qualifiers. Not at all a surprise, of course. Yep. Nightmare dropping out there. This. Oh, it's, wait uh, a minute. Lucian is really beefy, but Ooh. he does eventually get through him. The Titans resolve not enough. And the Bloodthirster. 
I think I think Skip has got a nice balance of that overtime damage as well as just quicker bursts. Um, because obviously, if you have a lot of health, like healing units, health units against you, you do really need to worry about that. It does actually swap out, swap hmm. out to the Revenant themselves, swapping out the knights. That's an interesting too. decision. I'm, I'm curious to see how this plays out for him. Yeah, I mean, he's looking. He's looking for those two-star Volley Bear and two-star Gwen. He hasn't quite gotten it yet. Yeah, the rolls are not in his um, favor today. Well, gets a oh, we, we do get another Lucian. Oh, it's almost there. One more. No, uh, no, it's not happening. That's unfortunate. I mean, he's still got a very strong board, but it's so unfortunate that you're not getting those uh, those units that you're rolling so hard down for. Yeah. And the odds were really with them. Like, that was not one where, oh, you might not get it. No, that was really a, uh, a solid choice. It just didn't work yeah. out. And those roll downs, it's a it's a very careful balance, right? You you don't necessarily want to be rolling for your three star four cost, and the whole entire lobby is dead because now you've had you have dozens more of those four cost units back in the pool. But at the same time, yeah. you have lower odds because the odds of somebody playing the same unit um, does increase. So it's a risk versus reward, and it looks like Suyan is taking the third. I confidently said that he's going first, and uh, I guess I have to pay some people some money. So. Well, I mean, I don't think anyone accepted your bets. Uh, I mean, we can check chat a little bit later and just check if anyone actually accepted that one for you and said, well, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take that bet. But I don't think you ever gave an amount. So you're probably yeah. going to get away with no. it if they try to sue you for it. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I'll, I'll just pull a soju and I'll flake that bet because I never shook hands. So that's, cool. that's on you, buddy. Exactly. Didn't write it on a napkin. There's, there we go. Exactly. All right. So yeah, th now this game just comes down to a positioning matchup. You know, he, he wants to really be does. same side. As that, uh, as that Heimendinger, you know, opposite side isn't the worst, assuming he's able to snipe the turret. Uh, but he's gonna, they're, they're gonna, oh. they're gonna do the, they're gonna do he, the play. They call they're the bluff. swaps. They're gonna do swaps. <laughs> yeah, this, this is looking pretty good in Skip's favor. Nice. One shot call left. Oh no! There go a few units. Elkaz is kind of, uh, kind of trolling. I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it was not able. Not look. Oh, great angle, amazing angle. Uh, Might still be a loss, but that that Hyper ulti that went off was really the the play that made it happen. There goes Valkaz. But, Will still be alive. He gets another another try at this. So let's see the positioning. Uh, oh angle. no, the the summoned unit post damage. So uh, sometimes what will happen in the game oh. is. Um, when there's a summon unit like a, a daisy or an abomination, you do take the delayed damage. So that's very unfortunate for Skip, but uh, it's a top two. We take those, you know, exactly. we take those. So of course, we have two lobbies going on. Let me actually check on the other lobby whether they've already uh, gotten their scores out. It does look like it. They actually finished off as well. Um, so lobby B uh, was one, but it's not one yet. They're still two playing Try to PvP and Fabu Fabulotus still playing it out for first and second uh but yeah the other top four players were braba and rengar so they both got seven and six respectively and then the bottom four last place was awkwardism fifth place enka tms ak or ackk got that uh sixth place and then seventh place was on death magma so uh, that's where we're at for that lobby. We're just waiting for, uh, of course, we're gonna wait for that to finish. And then we're gonna reseed both lobbies, making sure that we get the, uh, well, the right seeding going on, making sure that everyone gets uh, mixed up a little bit, that we don't get the same players playing against each other again where necessary. Uh, but yeah, that first round, that was really something. I mean, everyone kept on, kept on pivoting. There was not really a clear direction that everyone wanted to go with. Uh, and that is very indicative of, you know, that, that, mindset of what they have just play the strongest board you can make at that moment because you want to win as many rounds to get in that top 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 four yeah i mean you really do have to keep your mind open especially in situations like this and surprisingly enough we did not see too much overla or overlapping comps um we saw a lot of teamo being played which uh not necessarily a surprise but it definitely uh led bad into some of those you know attack speed based matchups like the lucian and whatnot so be interesting to see what what comes up in this next lobby. I'm personally, you know, I'm still pretty invested in the chug bug. You know, we need to get some of that back in here. So I'm pretty upset that I didn't see any of that. But I'm confident that uh, our next lobby won't let me down. 
Yeah, they definitely will. Of course, we still have uh, still gonna have two lobbies for this next round, uh, and players have indeed been seated. So we're gonna be seeing uh, as Rodrigo try to PvP Tsuyan, Rengar, TSM, Konogan, TSM, ACKK, Jarin, and Awkwardism in lobby A. Lobby B will be Fabulotus, who ended up winning that other one. Uh, the lobby B just now: Skipeus, Braba, Nightmare. Penka, Harry Frog, Death Magma, and King Cappuccino. Let's see if uh, King Cappuccino can do a little bit better. I mean, I think I think he had a direction that he wanted to go in, but then early game uh, kind of got hit with a few unfortunate chops. Maybe some other players stealing some units from him, and then uh, sometimes it can get a little bit awkward in terms of what items you have versus what you want to play, what you thought you were going to play. Uh, but that makes the hallmark of a good TFT player always being able to adapt. Oh, absolutely. Um, if you, and at the end of the day, like if you can adapt, if you can't, uh, find another angle and sometimes you legitimately can't, but I think that when we're talking about players like this, you know, some of the top of the leaderboard, they'll always be able to find something to minimize their losses. So at the end of the day, sometimes you can't always play for top four. Sometimes you can't always play for first, but you can try to play for not eighth. And, um, unfortunately somebody does have to go eighth. Um, it's always somebody. But it's always somebody. And it's usually me. It is usually me. Same. But, um, yeah, no, that's one thing we have in com common. Oh. But hopefully we don't see a ton of ace in this upcoming lobby. I think that we're going to uh, see I, 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 first across the board. I mean, there, there, is a, there is a good argument to be made that we're going to be seeing a lot more variety today in terms of who gets uh, who gets on top and who uh, who wins. I mean, and we did see a lot of that, uh, you know, min-maxing going on today, where or like that first lobby, where we really thought certain players were going to go, basically go all the way. And then all of a sudden, they either made a weird call or the roll down didn't go well, or, you know, something else happened that just didn't go their way. And they didn't have the right way to adapt to it. So they were going too hard in that direction. And it feels like unless you're really high rolling and you you actually just keep on high rolling you always need to have that other branch open always that other possibility yeah. maybe multiple uh and not every player had that as ready as they as they should maybe uh, because they thought they were high rolling maybe you know mm -hmm. maybe it looked like they were and then all of a sudden you don't get that two two star gwen you don't get that two star you know velcos maybe even like it, it can be any unit that you're just not able to get to the point where you wanted to and the odds were just really with you and it just didn't work out um that being yes. said you know it's only game one still plenty to play oh yeah i mean with tft you know especially in the lobby or in the tournament format um you can you know there's plenty of room to recover you know I, i've had tournaments where i have started out with um the eighth you know as i as i naturally go and i've been able to uh, come back and place first so you know end of the day you know, it's not the end for uh, Awkwardism, who also got Nath, this first one, who will be in this upcoming lobby, or King Cappuccino. I think that uh, there's plenty of room to recover. Uh, Definitely. And another thing to um, to point, yeah, to point on your uh, your comment about finding your angles and looking for the next move. There is, regardless of the size of the tournament, there is a significant mental factor that comes into competitive TFT. Um, your ability to stay cool, like even when you're low rolling, even when you get that eighth, really matters a lot more than your, we'll say, technical knowledge of the game. Because as soon, you know, there, you have fantastic players that even in some of our regional games who should have been at the top of the leaderboard, they had one, two bad games and they, it ruined everything for them and unfortunately killed their world's run. So, you know, it happens there, it happens here. So. Hopefully uh, we have some iron mentals in these upcoming lobbies and uh, we get to see some strong recoveries. Yeah, for sure. I'm uh, I'm all ready for it. I am uh, hot on the action and we're going back into the lobby with Restrito Fabulotus. Try to PvP. Um, who else are we going to get? I don't know. Tsuyan, Rengard. I think this is the same lobby that we had before. Oh, it is actually a new one. Let's go. No, this is a new one. Oh, this. Yes, this is the new one. Yeah, uh, with Jaren, Awkwardism as well. This is, uh, we're going to be able to follow anything. Both the TMS bros, Gogan and ACKK, or AK, if you, uh, if you want to go there. It's, uh, it's a fun acronym. I didn't know what it stands for. I could ask him. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not sure what that one does. Uh, or what, what that one stands for, rather. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Like I said, coming off the last game, we have Awkwardism coming in with, the, you know, fresh off an eighth. We have Resdra, you know, fresh off a... Uh, 
Where is that? A is that first? Were they, they the player that got first in our last level? No, 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 no. So, uh, so both Re Resrito and uh, Fabulotus apparently got first in, in both. Okay. I mean, Re Resrito, we yes, still yes, do yes. ourselves. We, they got they got first, and then Fabulotus got first in the other lobby, and Tri Tri to PVP got second in that other lobby. So that's why Resrito and Tri to PVP are in that same lobby right now, first and second respectively. Um, but yeah, I mean, let, let's see if they uh, they can do a little bit better. Of course, Awkwardism is the one we're going to be looking for to see make a comeback, not get another uh, eighth place again. And uh, I mean, I'm just excited. I'm just excited to see this new yeah. matchup of players. I think that's that's the fun part because they these players know each other most of the time, right? I mean, we've got a, a little bit of an upper limit as to how you can sign up for the uh, for the Peanut Butter Cup weekly. Uh, sign ups mm -hmm. are always open by the way there's no limit on like until when you can sign up uh and everyone has an equal chance of being picked unless you have already played one so uh definitely don't forget to sign up if you need to link should be in the chat if you uh, type exclamation mark sh uh, sign up of course you can always go to our twitter monkey bubble o on twitter and uh should be on the stream as well so yeah feel free to join us and uh yep. we'll see you maybe in the next beat about a cup so, um, just to clarify, is this tourney restricted to um, EU or uh, European regions only, or is this available yeah. to NA uh, regions? Specifically in EU or EU, EU tournament, uh, we did that because, you know, like we said, we want to highlight that EU region, and we're going to yeah. make sure that uh, these players get uh, get the right spotlight that they deserve. So uh, it is definitely open to EU. Also, of course, the uh, the, the closer regions, so, uh, you know, the EU North, uh, it's, probably like, it's primarily EU West, but of course, other EU regions, you can make an account on EU West and we'll, uh, we'll let you play as well as long as you can show that you have the right uh, right skill for it i think we're doing masters and above uh yeah that, that was what i read exactly so uh you know if you got what it takes join us we'll uh, we're happy to do it and of course we do actually have a prize pool for today it's another 300 euros on the line which is distributed ac across the top four players so you actually have to get into the top four of those 16 and the exact breakdown is that the first place gets 100 euros second place gets 75 Third gets 50 and fourth gets 25 euros, which against totals to uh, 300. Yeah, not not a bad prize pool. You know, it's a weekly tournament. Uh, you know, for me personally, whenever I play in these, you know, it's not about the money for me, but more so as the ability to play against really great players, because there's an entirely different feel to the game when you're uh, um, when you're up there. <laughs> yeah, when you're when you're playing against people that are, you know, that you know for a fact know how to play the game they're in the tournament setting it's not ladder where you're just like you know what i'm gonna play 50 games today and i'm gonna play reroll zigs for half of them so i don't care what happens you know so it's uh for me personally it's all about getting in there playing with some of the best of the best and uh you know making myself better so i imagine that you know this is a great opportunity for the people that uh are just getting introduced to the tournament seat in these lobbies for sure. I mean, and we do talk about that. We say, like, you need to have these avenues open. You, have, you need to have these other choices. Sometimes just one of those players sneaks in that says, I'm just going to reroll the same exact comp and you're, there's nothing you can do about it. And if they just get a little bit lucky, they'll make it work every single time. Like, they're just so good at finding these different options. They know which items can, can work on which champions need to put it. And they're like statistically they can always guarantee like a minimum effectiveness of that composition, which gives them a right amount of consistency. Do they win a lot? maybe not do they get a top fours a lot probably a lot more than you think and then yep. you know if you're not if you're talking about a tournament that's not all about getting first place like this one maybe they even end up winning the entire thing it's it's possible uh so yeah whatever your style is whatever you really want to go for whatever you think might work for you you know who knows maybe the next set will be completely different as well and these players that we see right now i just end up in bronze i don't think they will yep. but it's possible you know, it is possible for me to end up back in bronze. So, you know, I, I won't, I won't, uh, I won't say, I'll never Don't say never. It. Don't jinx it. I'll never say never. never. <laughs> but, um, no, it's, a, that's a great point because you see, there's a lot of names that I would see at the top of the set four ladders, you know, across yeah. the board that, you know, don't really, uh, don't really make it back up. And it's the same thing, you know, sometimes the meta changes, you know, a, you know, entirely differently. And it makes it hard to play the way that uh, you you know you were good at in past sets. So I think that this set leans more towards um, the traditional TFT method of playing the game, which is you know strong boards, good fundamentals. Though it is a little bit easier, and I think it has something to do with the amount of champions of the pool. 
does make it a little bit easier to play some of the, the reroll comps. So, you know, there's an argument to be made either way. Um, I know me personally, I was a big fan of the Chosens because if in a perfect world, it was great to play flexibly, you know, no matter what your Chosen you got, you had different opportunities to, uh, yeah. to play different boards almost every single game. But some people would be, were able to abuse and use that to their favor, similar to the shadow items that we just most recently saw. Exactly, shadow items. Now we have the radiant items, which you can't build. You just, you know, you, you get one. And I do think yeah. that uh, the the extra RNG involved in that, as well as you know that you only get one, kind of shoehorns you more into specific directions that you might not want to go with. Uh, but there is usually something for you to pick out of. So that traditional TFT style that you're talking about, which is you know all about that more flexible approach to things, where you can't just one trick the same thing and always force it. Uh, that really makes the strategic level and I also think the skill level of players that can be shown a lot higher like the skill floor yes. might still be at a very similar place but that skill ceiling is just going higher by those multiple possibilities so not being able to really steal people's champions and just be lost mm -hmm. if you're not that person uh, really opens up avenues for everybody to still be creative enough uh, to find their way out of situation which with the chosen mechanic kind of got away you know if you just had the wrong chosen yeah. you couldn't get, get the right units with it then it really fell apart really quickly and you know being able to contest each other for compositions a lot more since then has made uh, has made competitive tft at least a lot more interesting to watch yeah i would say even like not only competitive but you know um casual ranked tft is a little bit more fun in that aspect um you, you start to see way more fun comps again you know we'll, we'll go back to chug bug you know everybody loves the chug bug you know but you didn't see too much of uh things like that in set four there didn't feel like there was a ton of uh you know fun comps but you know now we're back in game uh we have another solid carousel you know no uh no mort dog carousels as someone call them uh yeah let's see we have jaren opting for the ap Lord. Uh, poor cloak every single time. Yeah, it, this time it wasn't the Leona unit. Like, you could say, I want to start off with Leona. Cloak can be used as a defensive item, so you could argue that you could start with it, but still, everyone opting not to go for it. The item outweighs the champion that it's on, as usual. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Start. So, we're starting it with Tuyan again. Of course, we know where Tuyan ended up last time. They're uh, they're on seven, seven points, so they ended on third. And, uh, well, they need to get the opportunity to build, <laughs> build the solar. Um, yeah. That's nice. Yeah, assuming, you know, great uh, opener, you know, right? We have the Skirms, we have the Sentinels, uh, we have that angle open. You also have the Gragas that you could take, um, right? When you get that Sunfire open, or Sunfire opening, you really want to prioritize some kind of upgraded front line. If you put that on there, at the very least, you're, you're losing by one to two units maximum throughout stage two so uh good opportunity you know we just got to see what uh what comes out get the two gold nico stark interesting i love it i oh. love that we got nico early i mean they've moved to do it as well my only problem with getting nico that early is you're so tempted to use it early on a unit you might not really need to use it on uh i i'm i'm much happier getting a nico in that late game when you might want a three like two star you know a garen or two star a gwen or something like that because that's a much more valuable one to actually uh, actually do, but I'm interested. I'm interested to see where they're going to go with that and if they're going to use the early indeed. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of tank items get dropped across the uh, the boards that we've we've looked at. We've got Rengar Bot Bot, you know, looking at, uh, you know, potentially a knight, a knight opener, you know, has the opportunity to also play the uh, play the sins if they're feeling a little uh, a little risky you know you got you got the glove you've got a couple other items that don't really matter too too much but holding on to it so i think that's in the back of their mind well it's funny um, that you say that because both in our banana split as well as last week in the in the peanut butter cup those sins were really playing out they were very present I and mean, we haven't really seen that yet today so i i do want to see a good sin board at some point just at some point i want to see it come up and do well even if it doesn't do well i just want to have seen it because the spin to win has just become a meme internally with us like behind the scenes just <laughs> constantly spin to win that nocturne just keep on going yep yeah, and I think players might be leaning away from it um, just due to the nature of the nerfs. But I yep. still think that Nocturne has a place in this meta. Um, I think the, the the thing that was hit the hardest was the six assassins. So, and yep. you know, oftentimes you're not getting that six assassin. So there is opportunity. 
All right, they just uh, opt into making gold. So oh. no, uh, no assassins. It looks like that's ruled out for us. <laughs> oh, maybe they're going to get it back. I mean, there's there's eight players in the lobby. Let's not count it out just yet. But uh, yeah, I think I think right now, if you really want to make the sins work, you, you got to get that three star revenant, that, uh, that nocturne that you got to get that. Um, and rather than going six assassin, I do like the avenue of trying to b beef up the revenant trait uh, to just keep that uh, that reset going. If you also get a you know guardian angels going, then you just have the constant reset. You have the constant being alive of that carry, and that's also factors out a lot of. Uh, oh, he got caught early. You know your revenant yeah. will always get a few abilities off. Will always ramp up properly, and uh, that is. Kind of the only avenue in my mind that I would really consider playing Nocturne if I'm able to get that Revenant buff off and those defensive items. No, that absolutely makes sense. Um, looking at Awkward's board, you know, it, uh, he is in an awkward spot. He is uh, <laughs> actually in one of my favorite spots. You know, I actually don't like to upgrade my units when I'm playing the game. I prefer getting nothing but pairs. So, you know, I'm very envious of him and I'm sure that he is jumping for joy. Um, Curious though that he did play that uh, Zyra over the the new or er, the the Gragas because you know that would have given him a little bit more board strength and actually enough to uh, probably win that fight you know with that Dawnbringer buff coming in and additional uh, unit to tank while Nidalee does what Nidalee does in the back line. So I think that they're they're really holding on to that uh, that skirmisher in the back or er, in the back or not the skirmisher rather but the uh, draconic in the back of their mind. But uh, in my opinion, right, we're playing for top four here. We ditch it, you know. We make gold here, and uh, yep. All right. Totally, so, totally. Yeah. Making making uh, the good decisions. <laughs> of course, yeah. And and when you look at um, when you look at this board in general for awkward, you know, like he's got he's got definitely got some room to, room to work with, got some places to go. Uh, again, we always love a good Gragas on the front line. Doesn't quite survive this one, and I don't think he's going to come out on top on this matchup, but it's starting to take shape a little bit more. Uh, you know, the two-star Olaf is definitely a good start for to something. I uh, got the Udyr and the Gragas. At least he's going to be able to get a lot of health points as well, some burst on the board. Uh, but again, he needs a little bit more to give it some form of direction. Because currently, it's not Skirmisher, it's not Brawler, it's not really anything just yet, uh, but it has room to grow. Yeah, I'll be curious to see what he uh, opts to pick up here. Interesting. Goes for the glove. So, so, you, so like Conigan is is leaning towards. It looks like you know right now with that IE slam, you know, just naturally off the top of my head, looks like they'll be leaning back into the Draven. Um, you can also play a couple other things. You can play the Lucian. You know, say you have the opportunity for a Deathblade. Um, Deathblade IE plus one Lucian, not all, not the worst, and definitely not best in slot, but it's uh, it's something that you know I'd play, I I I'd throw it down. Yeah. Definitely a strong board though. You know you got the skirmisher skirmishers, you got the sentinels, you've got that Callista in the back line for the potential snipe as well as the corner bait. So depending on uh, who hit, who is in his pool of uh, units to fight as well as uh. You know what the uh, enemy boards are looking like. You know, pretty safe for this uh, this Olaf to run through the rest of the team. Yeah, I mean, with the items as well. You know, there's there's like it's it's hard pressed, I and mean, we're gonna get the Olaf matchup here mm. right now. <laughs> we just get the sun the head to head versus the claw. Uh, they got the solo yep. swords on him, but if in the end it is just going to be Conagun coming out on top of this one. Not surprised at all because he's got those um, those other legionnaires behind it. It's uh, it's a good back line that does the extra damage that you need because that front line is just functional for him. Yeah, and another great thing about Callista, you know, teching her in where you have the ability to, she can yep. snipe. You know, she can steal uh, a back line unit that, uh, you know, somebody might be heavily defending on. Like, for example, Suyin. I think I'm pretty sure Suyin's running a, a scrim board, but, you know, has the ability to steal away a fight that uh, otherwise they may not win. As well as, you know, just eat that threshold. Tune is on that Legionnaire uh, board right now. He doesn't really, I mean, he's, uh, he has yes. a cannon. And I really, uh, but that's that's all the skirmishes he's got. He's, he's kind of kind of stuck at the moment between a few different things. His cannon is really tanky though, but that's about it. Um, also, I, I am a huge advocate of the Ziggs carry and it looks like the Ziggs carry might be pulling it in. But actually, you know, just as I was mentioning, the Kalista is able to uh, to steal that Ziggs from the backline and secure 
uh, Conigan that top or that four win streak in the neutrals. Get him. So Tuyan is still on that uh, on the on the undefeated track, but uh, there is a little bit of a uh, leaderboard coming up here. So TSM ACKK uh, with Conigan and indeed Tuyan. Now we're gonna go over the Tuyan board. Uh, does Ooh, have no. that decked out Genon, which. You know, it's only a one star, but with those two items, that's going to be a tough one to get. Plus, with the Sunfire Cape, he's going to be able to touch on everybody that he goes with the ultimate. Uh, and the only the unit in the back. Yeah, the only thing that kind of concerns me if I'm in his position here is that you have no damage items. And it doesn't look like he's going to have a path to slam a damage item here. Um, so unfortunately, this may, depending on what units he hits, this may not be a strong uh, stage three. No, I mean he's got he got the, he's got the Nico, he's got the Reforge. So there's something he can do in terms of getting some different champions on the board and different items. Uh, he's at least able to two-star his Callista over here, yep. which was long overdue, I'd say. Uh, but does need to have a little bit more. Uh, I mean, it's not even just the defensive items, like you said, it's the offensive items. He hasn't got really any defensive units right now other than the Riven. Um, Mm -hmm. So it does need a little bit more of either beefy units or just going full damage, which either of those are not really a possibility right now. So I am indeed a yeah. little worried to end as well. Yeah, and he makes or they make the correct decision here, I believe, to not pre-level. You know, any rounds that they win from here on out, I think are a uh, a blessing. We'll say, yeah. you know, so not leveling definitely the correct decision, right? You just want to maximize your economy, go seven as fast as possible, and as healthy as possible. Um, and you know, point. yeah, yeah, and, and the, the win has infinite value here because now he's going to be able to level, um, be level six, 40 gold. You know, we take that every single time, gets a couple of other little upgrades, so minimizes any damage they take, can play the knights. You know, pretty solid, uh, pretty solid fundamental board. Um, be interesting to see what they lean into because right now, with this opening, with the flexibility and no damage item slam, you could play anything. You know, obviously you're looking or leaning a little bit more towards like an AD style board, but you know, you're at the uh, the will of Mort Dog with uh, your radiant items. I think here, you, you do need something though. Like it's some something needs to come up in the in the next few rounds to really give that direction. Because if you can go anywhere, that also means you have no real uh, uh, one thing that your board really does, other than just you know comboing and, here and there. Yeah. Like the units are good, but there's no real there's no real carry at the moment there's no real yep. front line no real back line yeah and it looks like we're going to start to see that when streaks start to fall off but one good thing like we were talking about some of the set mechanics um the radiant and set 5.5 um the one great thing that it does is it gives you that agency right it gives you five different options um granted you know they're random options but you get five separate options to really build out like the next best move so i think that uh despite having the opportunity to lose the next three rounds. Uh, Suyen is definitely in a fantastic position to uh, play strongest board and, you know, recover that, that lack of damage. Yeah, with the Radiant items, you, like, you could just feel the, the conversation that went on in the background like, with, the dev with the developers where they're like, why can't we just let them build Radiant items and just not make them as strong? But then you always get that same problem that was there with Shadow items. That there's a limited yep. mounting carousel and then some people are able to build it and it kind of just spikes people that are already doing well even further up or it, it kind of brings back people that are lower that cannot be beaten anymore. So I do really like that mechanic. Everyone gets one, you get a choice between five, not four, but you get five choices. Uh, and it's just it's just always something there for you but almost nothing something that completely spirals it out of control it's, it's it's a very nicely balanced mechanic yeah and i think it makes it a lot easier for the casual player too right if you're not a psychopath like me and don't want to play 900 games of tft in a season and keep up with every single patch then you know radiant definitely lends better to that because that was the downfall of the shadow items you know you had to know what was best you had to, you know, memorize dozens of different combinations of items. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm glad that they, you know, I'm glad that they tried it. But obviously we saw the player count drop a little bit. And uh, a, a lot of people that, again, were not psychopaths like myself, um, yeah. ha have valid complaints about the game. So what do you think about the carousel, um, though? Because there was a lot of cloaks and spatulas right there, which I think are widely regarded as not the most amazing ones currently in the patch. I mean, yeah. you can build a bounce with it, some defensive with it, get a lot of spatulas. Like, 
you know, this is not really a great carousel for anybody. And honestly, the spatulas um, also really aren't that good. It's starting to shape up a little bit in this meadow because you start to see a lot of um, Cavalier carry. So you can play like Cavalier Draven to play a Cavalier Yasuo. I think that there's probably even room to play a Cavalier Riven. So that was an angle that uh, is available, though a little bit less traditional, but I think we'll start to see that pick up, um, especially as the new Draven buffs come in with the next patch. Um, yeah. But for right now, you know, a lot of people actually steered away from those, uh, the spats, so minimizing their high roll opportunities, but maybe that's the nature of the, the format today, right? We're playing for top four, we're not playing for first. Exactly, and I mean, you might still play for first at every now and then, because eventually if you play your strongest board, you keep being, being on top, there's a good chance you're just gonna get first through that. Yeah, naturally, uh, of course. But you're not you're not playing the high roll for sure. Like that's just not a not a goal for you because you wanna you wanna make sure you get the strongest board you have and not the strongest board you could have. Exactly. And so this is a, an exact example of what I was talking about, Ooh. right? Suyan so has the ability to play AP here, has the ability to pick, play AD, though they're missing you know several components that can lead them to you know a capped AD carry. Um, so they opt into the Radiant Infinity Edge, edge. which is uh, edge. interesting. Edge. Right there. I, I will. Mean, uh, I, I don't mind it. I'm just, you know, there was the the gauntlet was there. Get gone for the for the book, maybe. I don't know. I, I think I think the edge is fine. I, I'm not yeah, worried that, about it. But you know, that's a very hard decision. Um, but I think this player has a couple different paths, right? That um, yes. based off what I'm seeing in the meta. You know, they can go Draven carry. Um, the, the Radiant Infinity Edge, the uh, Zenith Edge, is a fantastic item on Draven. They can play the reroll um, Riven, though I don't think the Zenith Edge really benefits her at all because she more uh, scales with flat AD rather than critical strike damage just to the nature of her ability. So um, probably does not play that. But yeah, it's very interesting. I don't know what I would have taken there because you could have played Karma, right? You have a really strong front line, but you're not as strong on the um, defensive units, but starting to shape up like it is a Draven angle. Yeah, and a Draven angle, again, we talked about it before, right? Where Draven, it, it, it's coming back. It, it was mm -hmm. it was almost lost. It was almost forgotten. Well, you still have forgotten, but it's coming back. And uh, with this Legionnaire angle that they've got going in general, they also have a little bit of a path potentially to go towards either Skirmisher or even uh, even Dawnbringer, maybe a little bit. Oof. But it is uh, with, with these item drops, I mean, you got to worry a little bit that they're not oh, they're, you, they're, they're not going to go there for sure. I mean, you got the double cloak, you may make them a claw. Uh, but what are you going to do with the spatula? Still got their Reforge, which is I would say increasingly invalu uh, unvaluable, <laughs> and. Uh, We'll yeah. see where, where they're going to come up. I mean, Reforge is such a... It's such an interesting item that doesn't actually give you a lot unless you happen to be lucky. What's interesting is it looks like we actually have multiple players looking for that Draven angle. So, you know, yeah. something that uh, you might have told me I was crazy for uh, for saying what happened last week is starting to increasingly uh, pick up. So we'll see if this, uh, this tournament ends up leaning into that, like, than Draven mode. You know, we, we see people picking up forgotten units. We see people, uh, you know, selling otherwise uh, potentially strong angles, right? The the Aphilios could be a play here. The only thing that they are missing is the attack speed. And quite frankly, I don't see um, the ability. And then Rengar Bot Bot also picking up the Draven. Though I think that that's just for the Legionnaire board. Yeah, of course, no. we're looking over at Konogun's uh, oh. wow. board right now. Yeah, it's uh, looking like, like almost four people uh, are looking at that angle so it's gonna be uh it's gonna be an interesting one for sure i mean the double aphelios right there i mean doesn't have the nico but might not need it is already level seven um there's gonna be a roll down here happening for uh <laughs> for another one oh they're gonna find what they need they get the karma on this is definitely this is looking like maybe a, a dawnbringer karma uh, angle together with the drake maybe they want to go for a double carry no, they're gonna throw oh. away those uh, those, those Dawnbringers. This is oh, this is going for the full forgotten Draven. Yeah, no, it's there. It's happening. Yeah, Just that Omar. Out. There could be a little bit of dizziness. They do have the upgraded Riven on the side, so there is a potential, depending on how his shop shape up, um, that you know nope. we we have the three star uh, Rivening. 
He's, he's, he's throwing away the Dawnbringers. He keeps the Riven, though. I definitely uh, definitely appreciate that one. Uh, and if you have the, the Riven, who was, of course, also a Legionnaire, you still have that Legionnaire bonus that you get from the Draven as well. You can keep the Forgotten bonus up. Uh, but they are they, they did just definitely lock out their Dawnbringer, uh, Dawnbringer route, because otherwise you definitely are going to keep that Karma. Um, yeah, so we are locked into the Draven. But, uh... That's why they kept this. That's why they kept the ribbon, so they could just swap them out. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Looks like uh, Conigan is a little, a uh, little dizzy here. You know, thinking about a couple oh. different angles that they have. Um, looks like the Draven is not going to be the option for him because Ak has three. Um, Rengar is playing a Draven. You know, we obviously uh, saw Suyen. You know, finding that Draven. So, you know, it, it looks like Draven is the name of the game. Some may call it the League of Draven. That's uh, yeah, that, that, I'm showing my age a little bit. I, I, I do want to look at the at Rengar's board after this if we get the opportunity because I think Rengar is uh, is putting up something that is. I mean, he's on eighth place, so he does need to need to get some wins going. But it does look like he's got some interesting stuff going on on his board. To just uh, lose another round, but with that, uh, he, he he looks like he might he might be suffering from like the split. Uh, like multiple people going after that same stuff after the same uh, champions but he does have something going on here for himself which is uh in terms of like the cavalier forgotten route but also got some rangers in the back line that being said he got let's get the rod and the heimerdinger so he could go draconic even but i think he's just gonna do it for the rod yeah Although, so yeah, definitely gets the uh the rod to open up that last whisper so now right you have two of the best items for draven you're just looking for a third i believe he has cloaks on the bench so you can either go a um a runin's hurricane you can go a bt um ideally you'd want something like Gwinzo's, but it doesn't look like you have the path there yeah. and rengar bot bot with the uh the reroll uh vein yeah He's doing it. He's got. He got. Yeah. Uh, definitely got the gun with on her is now. She's gonna do a lot of damage now, especially if those crits keep hitting. Um, mm -hmm. And got the ash next to it. Uh, full forgotten bonus as well. I mean, it's forgotten four, but it's gonna be able to upcut. And he's got a bank. Yep. That's an actual bank. I think. Uh, I think he just wants to go to eight without go dropping below fifty or something. I don't know why he's saving so much gold. This is uh, uh, kind of insane. Yeah, sometimes you'll players will do that um because they can't decide you know if they want to level or roll and they'll see how their fights will play out some players like to do it just because you know if you stay above like 60 gold and you get a shop with three four costs you're not going to lose um economy exactly. but definitely a couple different reasons but i think that with that loaded dice on the side they're gonna roll to try and find as many oh, forgotten yeah. units as they can before they utilize that it's gonna be amazing. I'm really looking forward to that moment. I really want to be there oh. when it happens as well. But uh, the Thresh upgrades, the the Hecarim, the Sejuani, like he's really tanking up that front line. The Knights, the the Cavaliers. It's all starting to come together. Oh, we're, yeah, we have two off the Hecarim three star, and he has fantastic Hecarim items. Found him. It's, it's oh unlucky, unlucky. But you know, we get another Thresh pair, allows him to continue rolling at uh at seven. <laughs> Fortune option to get to as well. Got another forgotten on the board, so he just needs the sixth one. The sixth forgotten is all he needs. Whether it's an emblem or whether it's an actual forgotten, it doesn't really matter anymore at this stage. He just needs that six, so he can uh, properly buff up both the Hecarim and the Draven and the and the Thresh. Like everything is going to come together for him. I don't know what item he wants to put on the Thresh though. Like what's the what, what special item he wants to make with that? Because it's, it's likely like oh. a Ranger, maybe right. You can't make the ranger spat, unfortunately, but it's likely, yeah, the most default item that you can make is the cow spat. Um, mm. Right now we have, what, they have 15 items. I did not see how much dropped from the uh, the Radiant Blessing, but um, right now they have, yeah, a, or 12 items. So it's pretty unlikely, actually scratch that, the, the spatula, unless picked up from Carousel, does not count as an item anymore. It's a bonus drop. So they have 11 items. So it's pretty likely they get a couple item drops here as the max that you can have is 14 um or component drops rather what but yeah so be? So, ooh, so he can yeah so he can play the the ie on the vein but that does kind of take him away from being able to play the six forgotten because at this point he absolutely needs oh, attack speed he's rolling 
One off. Kind of the misfortune instead of the Draven. I like that. You know, two star over the over the one one star. Nice. Goes okay. Three star Hecarim. That's what you needed. That's what he was waiting for. That's the roll. Definitely. Stop. It definitely makes him feel a lot better. And the question is, what do we play eight. at eight? Uh, I mean, at eight you can put the next Forgotten in as well. You can put Draven back in. Um, but you're still looking for that sixth or an emblem. Yeah. Based off um, what we're seeing here with uh, Conigan, you know, no no um, action, right? No ability to break armor. Probably just going to be a last whisper as a last um, Tekken. You know, just get a, a couple little, you know, points of armor across the board. Uh, continue to make that Hecker Realm even more unkillable than it already is. He was half HP and, and had an ult coming up. That that was where he was at in the end. Oh, those are not the emblems you were looking for. I mean, the so, knights, nah, maybe the hex, ah. You could hex play the knight. Actually, it is the knight, um, in my opinion. You, you play the knight and then you put in, um, uh, potentially you can swap the, what? Oh, that's interesting. Cause I was gonna say you could swap the rel in the Sejuani, and then you can put in another knight, and you can play four knight, um, two cav, two ironclad, four ranger, and it's pretty strong in the lobby based on what we're seeing, right? Ton of AD damage, not many last screws. It's like he ha if he had the rel, then I would definitely go that route, but you can't count on getting that rel. I don't know what everyone else is running specifically, but there are already a few rels on the boards on other places, so getting that rel at this stage of the game is going to be too big of a gamble, I'd say. Um, so unless you already have it on the board, I, I would not... I understand why they didn't go that route, for sure. It's going to be interesting to see that one, they're, how their their board does shape up, because they have a couple of different options for that last slot. See, but look at that Hecarim. Yeah, that Hecarim... Uh, Standing there and watching it burn. Especially, you know, I think that this Hecarim is going to cause a lot of uh, overtime. Oh, it's actually, gotta go down in the end. It, it happens, but it's just you know, it, it was a struggle to get through there. So the problem that they're gonna have is, yeah, the Hecarim is really strong, but if the other side has tanky enough units and the DPS go down early, like especially if Vane goes down early, the Hecarim is just gonna stand there. Like it's not gonna, like, it's not gonna win. He's not, but he's gonna lose eventually. Unfortunately, um, no Galio off that uh, that loaded dice. Yeah, you know, you could even say that that one was uh, no dice. Oh, but it does come back around, and uh, now we have a pretty strong board. Right, got the iron cloud, like I mentioned. It's got the knight. Really helps in the head-to-head -head for the Lucian matchup because he is a tick-based champion. Um, it does not help him here, though. The I really up front is really uh, really gonna make a big difference. Like, it's the health the health bar is super high because of the war mogs. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's got that ironclad eye emblem as well as the redemption. That's just a very tanky Irelia really up there, and she's just running around the map, making sure that people go for her rather than anybody else. Yes. It's a really and good build for awkwardism, and of course, awkwardism needs to make up some points. It's on uh, on 15th, 16th shared at the moment because yep, they got so that awesome last one. That and they take out try to PvP, so that brings them down. Try to PvP, they got third in the last lobby, so. Um, Probably gonna end up middle of the pack after that, but you know, plenty of room. Actually, we have one game left after this one to uh, decide our, you know, our final eight. Yeah. So, gonna be down to the wire for that player. For sure. I mean, it will be for awkward as well. Like, even if they manage to win this lobby, you still gotta do well in that last one and not get in, mm -hmm. in bottom four to sort of guarantee that. Um, but currently, awkward. Yeah, I mean, they're in a good spot comp wise. I don't think they're gonna drop that low i mean if they get get fifth that's a possibility i don't think they're going to get much lower than that Speci spe specifically seeing where tsm Ac A ackk is right now uh, i don't think they've got the boards to really stick this one out for a lot longer and uh, i mean they got the two star jacks but that's a tough one i think the problem with jacks currently is that you just i don't think you ever get enough time to properly ramp him up anymore i think there's too many compositions and items and, and champions that do damage too early on to really be able to tank through that and have jacks, jacks wrap up properly. Yeah, the, the one of the main killers of jacks that I've found is, you know, while you would think that you want to play jacks into the Draven matchup just due to uh, the nature of right Draven doing attack damage, but once he gets that last whisper, it makes it extremely difficult for the jacks to, uh, to 1v1 him if you're not already at that capped attack speed, so... Um, so yeah, definitely in advantageous positions for a lot of these fights.
Yeah, well, because everyone has been building into these Draven comps and he's just got successful and got the items on it, you see a lot of these other players with their knights, with their, uh, you know, with their ironclads, they're just going to get wrecked by that last whisper. It's such a good item in this current meta. And it always, it, it has been from the start. Like since this set started, when everyone ran that, ran that Lucian, con the Lucian Cannoneer with, uh, with the last whisper, you just have seen the Last Whisper transfer into all these other compositions because it's so good. Because people want to build these tanky front lines. And what do you do? Well, you just burn them down. No, absolutely. I mean, uh, Lucian definitely lends into that very well, especially with these items, right? You have the Last Whisper. You're not relying on the action to break all the, uh, the armor for you. And uh, definitely does well into comps like this as well. Or additionally, um, Assuming that the Lucian is able to uh, break through and at least kill the turret, but does not seem to happen here. Nope, it's uh, it's not coming through. It's going to be a risk to taking that one away. And that means that the top few players have actually been losing a few rounds in the in this last one. The only one that's actually streaking right now is Restrito. Everyone mm -hmm. else is, again, is getting very middle of the pack. You can just see Conagon is already out with ACKK still in. But uh, it's getting closer and closer. I think it's even closer in the last lobby in terms of how, ever, how far everyone's apart, and uh, that's exciting. Like no one's no one's above thirty anymore. I think last lobby we still had someone on forty plus at this stage. Yep. Yeah. No. Uh, one thing that uh, I think that awkward could do to recover a lot of their position here, um, and you know, maintain placement is center position the solution so he finds the action that he was looking for so that that actually does help him out a bit he gets the iron cloud he also got another last whisper so he could even put that on somebody to help with the extra armor break uh iron clad's coming in doesn't really matter on who you put it it's of course about the bonus more than anything else yeah he, he would definitely it would definitely benefit him from what I can see, I don't see any Viegos or anything to center position the solution because a lot of people are stacking that front line. So what a center yeah. position Lucian can do is essentially avoid that heck room that we see right there in the center and go directly towards the back line. But, uh, you know, doesn't look like we get that. So it'll be interesting to see how he works through this team, team fight. He's got, he's got the Whisper. That Whisper is really going to burn out a Hecarim much faster than anyone else is going to be able to. So the Hecarim's gone now. And now it's just the Rangers versus Lucian, really. But his Galio is still alive. Because yeah. again, last Whisper wow. is not there for Rengar. And he's just got too Ooh. much Warmuck on that Galio. It's too much. And they but do make not, that top four. Top four acquired so awkward now at least fourth maybe even higher Rosdrito still on their win streak so they're really the one to beat at the moment but uh who's going to be able to do it i mean there's Rosdrito right now with his board i mean we don't have a a pov of it but it's definitely uh it i mean it has to be a good board i don't remember what they were running at this stage yeah oh, i mean sorry, yeah no. Now you it know, looks you know like what the, time it is. <laughs> yeah, they're they're kind of capping out right now. It's going to be hard for anybody to come back. Suyan has the ability to, but it requires essentially perfect positioning. You know, otherwise, not a lot of hope. Not a lot of hope for the rest of the team or the rest of the players in the lobby. He's just got the resurrection comp all down, Restrito. He's got the you know two star Timo, two star Volley. It's uh, it's going in the right direction for him. But right now, Ooh, the awkward is not a is he going to go out or is he going to be able to survive and live another day? That Draven, Draven is playing. Just, just hitting. It is hitting very hard. But that Galio is refusing to go down. So Lucian is going to get some more time to work. Nope. Nope. That, uh, that looks happening. like that is uh, it for Awkward. Fourth place. He's fourth, not third. Jaren just edging him out over there with the last fight. So it's going to be the, the wind streakers to finish it off. Suyan versus Rodrito. We've got one but one of the POVs at least. So we're going to be able to see at least a little, little bit of what's going on. And we get the classic uh, two people left, both of them wind streaking, you know. And Star uh, Khan coming out. Rodrito has been upgrading units every single round for the last few. So he's, he's still he's still upgrading. Whereas Suyan has been kind of stuck at this composition for a while now. So I'm a little bit worried for Tuyan, but we're going to see uh, who's going to go. I think we have at least one, maybe even two more rounds left, depending on how well this one goes for uh, for Tuyan. Fairly, uh, well, I was going to say fairly solid positioning, but it looks like that that Draven just gets deleted. And uh, seeming like uh, 
almost the end of the yeah it's the end of the road you know that's the end of the road Rosdrito just uh, a little bit too strong in the end like I said he kept on spiking those units it's unfortunate that we didn't have that POV from it I would have loved to yep. see where everything was positioned how he built that up but uh, that was definitely a very strong game right there. I'm looking oh, forward yeah. to seeing what, that, what these players can do when they try and secure their spot for that top eight. Because of course, only one more round before we do that. Yeah, and uh, you know, yeah, one thing. Oh, we're gonna actually go over to lobby B fight for lobby the B. final fight. Let's see what we're gonna get. Oh, is well, it another actually, Draven yeah. board? Double Titan Giant Slayer against Aphelios. Can the Sejuani do it? They can Saves him a little bit of HP. This is uh, this is definitely a battle for HP. Fabulot is once again in the top two, by the way. He won the last yep. lobby, so he's already... Uh, he's, I mean, he's pretty much secure top uh, top eight with that, I'm guessing. Mathematical yeah, absolutely. Speaking. Skip, uh, you know, getting the third. Maybe eight points. Geek Cappuccino doing better as well. Got fifth in this lobby. Still not quite that top four that you're looking for, but at least not eighth again. Yeah, definitely is a dangerous position for him if he does want to make top eight today. But I have a feeling that, uh, you know, if there's a will, there's a way. And, you know, if you get that first, e even a second could put you in contention. Um, but yeah, no, I mean... See, this Bravo? is unfortunate. He, he got he got that reforge, and you just you just see that even at this level, players just don't use it. He's gonna try and reforge and maybe get something fun out of it. It's a gun blade. Yeah, why not put it on your lease in? Might it might as well. That's a three star. Can take that. I mean, yeah, he'll put on somebody. He's not gonna get anything else. He's just leaving it there, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, this fight can go a dozen different ways, right? Um or that Draven is built in and that Kale, like it's either of the two you can just do so much. Two last whispers. There it's just the core Ooh. item at this stage. If he also he gets, gets stunned one time, gets the attack speed slowed, gets stunned again, and gets focused. But you know, it's a three star. He's not taking any damage though. He's just not taking oh. any damage. Oh, that is uh that secures the first for Brubba. Brubba gets yeah. him. You know, not getting too excited. He knows that uh, there's still a couple more games to play, but feeling yeah. pretty confident off that one. At least I would be. Oh yeah, I would be too. I was Brubba. Uh, Brubba currently in uh, in third place overall with 16 points. So he's doing uh, amazingly. Uh, but yeah, Resistrito <laughs> winning two lobbies in a row. He's on 18 points. Heavy Lotus on 17. Yeah. Uh, we'll go over the scores in a little bit properly, but uh, let's first give ourselves and the players a little bit of a break. Make sure we can get some, uh, everyone can get some more water. You as well. Make, make sure you get some snacks, maybe get some, uh, again, hydrate. Make sure you do some bio breaks and we'll be right back with you for round three, the conclusion of the pre-finals rounds.
Welcome back, everybody. Still here with the Monkey Bubble TFT Peanut Butter Cup Weekly. 300 euros on the line, and we're going into the last round before the top eight has been separated from the other eights. 16 players started, and uh, well, we're almost there at that point where we got to separate them. Currently, we have a leaderboard of eight players Restrito, Fabulotus, TTV, Brubba. Tuyan and Skipeus really uh, going a little bit away from the rest of the pack with 18, 17, 16 and 15 points between them. Uh, and then afterwards it gets a lot closer. Like we're really looking to work to about, you know, four or five players to potentially still make it into the top eight or fall out of it. Uh, and this round is going to be super decisive in that uh, in that regard. So going back into lobby any moment now. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, this is can this is can really go either way for a lot of players, and I do think that format, you know, not giving that bonus point to the first place has a lot to do with this. No, absolutely. Um, looking at the scores, right? It's it's not so much, you know, who who were who's at the top of the pack right now. You can almost yeah. entirely forget them. It looks like they're pretty locked in for uh, the they're final eight. Yeah. But our middle of the pack in this lobby, especially, you know, we have Rengar, try to PVP, Harry Frog, and Awkward. They're probably the closest. They can all um, still make it. They can all still yeah. make it. Sure. So yeah. we're definitely going to be focusing on them for uh, seeing who's going to fill in those, uh, you know, remaining spots for the top eight. And I think mathematically, even like uh, a Penka and Cappuccino can still make it, uh, just depending on how everyone else does. But they're a little bit more, like I said, they're more dependent on what the rest of the lobby and then the other lobby actually happens. Uh, if they get first, they're in a decent spot to potentially get there. But then other players need to really score low not to go over that. Because if they get one of them gets first, they'll get a total of 14 points. And 14 points currently would net you in sixth place if you would have 14 points at this stage. So there is a little bit of under that to go under. Uh, but it doesn't mean they're going to get there, obviously. Uh, they still have to show it. Cappuccino did a little bit better in the second lobby. First lobby, they get last. Uh, yep. And uh, one player that I'm really not looking looking to maybe get anything is Death Magma. They're currently on four points all the way at the bottom of 16th place. I think they're pretty much out, yep. but they can still throw a wrench in their people's plans. I mean, that you, that's what you sometimes see with those players that kind of got nothing to lose anymore, nothing to win anymore. Yeah. They're just, uh, it, yeah, they're having some fun with it. They uh, might play some different compositions. They might go for some other cheeky strats. They might be blocking other players. There's a, a lot they can do. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how, how Magma plays this, you know, right? Yeah. If I'm in that position, the only way that I see myself qualifying is with a concrete first. Or, yeah. you know, yeah. like you said, you can go uh, the, the, for lack of better words, the griefing route, you know? Maybe uh, maybe one of your buddies is sitting uh, at 10 points. So, you know, we'll see how it plays out. But, you know, we're getting consistent carousels. I feel like every time I get to watch uh, a weekly or any kind of tournament or playing them, you know, I see fawn carousels. I see spat carousels. So I don't know how you guys rig that to make it work. But uh, we're not seeing too much of that today. So maybe we'll get one for the final game. <laughs> That's how we do here. Uh, we always have everything going going our way. Uh, Fane start, nothing weird. Gets the bow out. I'm not uh, all too worried. Of course, we saw Brabba just now uh, get that win in their lobby. So they're uh, actually no, they got second in their lobby. Never mind. Um, yep. So a second. really strong composition right now is actually the Vayne reroll. Unfortunately, Brabba does not see any more veins within the shop, so that kind of starts to you know go out. But he does hold on to the veins. And also, one interesting thing is, so, the way that the forgotten, forgotten mechanic works is that every round that you win will give you additional stacks that essentially increase your attack damage and AP. So you can play the vein in the neutral rounds, and those count as combat wins, so she will get additional stacks. She does get additional bows, so right, that lens really favorable to the uh, the vein matchup, and I think that Brubba just commits. He sees one vein, a thresh, two bows, and uh, a Gwinzo's, and he, he says, I'm all in. Yeah, I'm yeah, all in. He's got the two knight, two forgotten bonus already. He's gonna win streak most likely, at least uh, if, if he can keep this up and get some, some nice drops. But uh, I'm all with it. I'm all for it. Yeah. Let's see what comes out of this. Maybe we get another Draven play, maybe another Hecarim buff. We'll see. We'll see what comes up with this. I'm uh, I'm all for it. Wow. And we talked about wow. we talked about the players that are low on the board right now. Like, are they gonna be able to make it? Are they gonna be able to uh, to maybe get back in? 
But you gotta also remember, points don't reset after this round. So even the players that are on top, like Brava, like Restrito, Fab, Fabulotis, you know, they still have something to play for to potentially make a bigger lead, make a bigger gap uh, to, to get closer to that first place overall. So it's not like they're just waiting for this round to be over and then they get to go again. No, no, no. This round still matters in the overall scheme of things. Um, which is another good thing because it means that there's almost no one who can just throw away this round. Everyone no. is in it to win it. Yeah, no, I think um, that also, you know, is an interesting take on the format because I feel like a lot of times we'll, what we'll typically see is, you know, wrap points reset. So now it's like you said, you know, all right, I went, I went one, one. I'm now, uh, I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm taking a nap today um, yeah. until the next game, but you can't do that. Um, though you, you have mentioned, just, you know, it's still not it. I yeah. don't want to. <laughs> so one thing you had mentioned is the potential for Draven. I am fairly confident that Barubba is willing to lose essentially every round. Yeah. He has perfect uh, vein items. He's willing to lose all these rounds for a uh, open fort scenario. I mean, if he wins, you know, it's good, but ideally you want to lose every single round. So you maximize your econ. Ideally get to, oh, there is potential vein contest. So that kind of, you know, throws a little bit of a wrench in the plans, like we had mentioned. Um, so yeah. I think that he does want to take this vein because he right is, now with those items slammed. Like yeah. It does it, the other player because he's got he's got those uh, he's got the hacker already on the uh, he's got the hacker in the bot he's got the night bonus he's got the items of the vein already like he is he is a step ahead of the other player it doesn't mean he's necessarily going to get away with it it's still a contest uh, but that does mean that his his contesting opponent uh, is currently looking for certain items that they don't have yet he, they haven't slammed anything yet so they are still more open than where Brava is at the moment in terms of committing. Yeah, yeah. And one thing, so, you know, sometimes when I play these comps, these reroll comps, I'm a, I'm as, you know, some of us in the TFT community will, will refer to as a degenerate. So I, no pivoting, right? I, once I'm there, I am there for good. And, um, yeah. And so he looked at that board and we noticed that they're also picking up, um, Legionnaires, you know, in the form of Callista, as well as, uh, as well as some of the redeemed units. So I think that that lends, you know, um, probably a little bit of confidence that he has the ability to, you know, maintain this and show that he is not pivoting either. So yeah. um, am I, am I, am I, if I'm in his shoes, I'm confident that I still maintain that and that that person ends up selling that vein to play Callista or one of the other rebel cops. It's such a staring contest. It's just, you know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I know what you're doing, but who's going to give up first? Now you're going to get the matchup, the Hecarim, Vayne, and the Leona with the Warmogs versus Brabba and his uh, his band of Merry Knights. Yep. Got the Vayne in the background. I mean, his Vayne is going to be doing more damage, but might not outlive the other one because the Leona is in the way. But now damage damage champions are gone. It's just the Leona with the Warmogs. I think he's going to get through this. He's established himself as the alpha vein player at the moment. Not sure yeah. if that's really what you want, because if you want to lose streak, of course, you know, it's not the ideal situation to beat the other vein player. But at least you've established that your vein is currently outputting more than yours is. And I think it also helps that they fight that early um, yeah. from a mental standpoint. I think a lot of and oh, I, I try to do this on ladder, right? A lot of what happens when you see multiple people contesting is you know, you really want to get in the other player's head, essentially, right? You want to yeah. say, hey, you know, I I'm here. You can be here, too. We can hold hands and we can go to the bottom. It's, and it's, uh, it, it's, it's again, going back to the poker metaphor, right? It's the, uh, OK, there's only two of us. We both just yep. throw down our cards and see where it may land. Uh, it's, it's kind of that same situation, right? Where do you then, because you see the other player's cards drop out, or do you go all in? Like, because there's still a few close ones on the board, so you don't know where it's going to go. Um, and it looks and like... Similar. Yep, it looks like Rengar Bot Bot, you know, they, uh, they say, you know what? That's you. Yeah, I I'm out, out, you know? Uh, they've, uh... They've given up, unfortunately. But, you know, that's great for Brubba. And Brubba, also, he has nothing to lose, right? Nope. He, he he went one and two. He's locked in, essentially, you know, out, out, Bear potentially getting an eighth, you know, so yeah. and it, it's, it's in his benefit to, you know, to play the contested comp. 
<laughs> yeah, and Rengar is not in that spot, right? He's on 10 points, so he, he does need to actually score a little bit to sort of secure this top 8 spot. Um, but, it, you know, not not to worry. I think as long, I think as, long as Rengar gets top 4 or at least, you know, top 6 probably, he's, he should be, should be really looking okay, uh, depending on what everyone else does. Hangry Frog, the, Harry Frog though, on, oh. on that top together, streaking together with Fabulotus. It's going to be waiting until they match up. I'm, uh, I'm all for it. I really want to see where those two go, but they're just streaking at the moment. They're fine. One thing that uh, we did just get a little glimpse of is I believe either Fabulotus or Harry Frog has a Lucian already. So uh, oh. pretty strong opener. You know, if I was that person, yes, Fabulotus. If I am Fabulotus, I'm not upset. I'm not upset that I get that. You know, I would say I would even go as far as to say I'm happy. So... And hopefully, you know, for for uh, Rengar, you know, the position that he's in right now, he loses this fight. You know, right? You want to maintain that loss streak. You have the ability. I think that he does still play a reroll comp. There's something that I forgot to mention yesterday, or yesterday, last game. Um, we've been seeing a lot more throughout uh, various pro player games, um, throughout ranked, of one cost reroll comps or two cost reroll comps and we haven't seen too much of it today but we're getting at least two in this lobby and i think that uh it's in, it's just like an interesting uh take on the meta between at least na and eu because i can't speak to the latter so much as uh i can you know obviously na but it does seem like a lot of people love their reroll right now yeah, and, and again, it's not, you know, uh, whether it's the reroll or the roll down, it's it's just, it, you know, reroll in a lot of ways is just rolling down early. Um, this is kind of kind of what you're going for in that stage. Um, but that does mean that you're, you're putting a different emphasis on which game of uh, which part of the game you are spiking, uh, because mm -hmm. with that reroll, um, you are you're trying to get that early game going properly and then just go from there. Whereas the high roll is you probably got a strong early game or a weak early game another way. You're not really in the middle of the pack anyways. Um, you're trying to uh, trying to, you know, reestablish a spike in the in the late game. Not quite yeah, sure what France coming out. They might want to give the get the A-bomb uh, angle open again, which I understand. You know, A-bomb is still a fun one to throw on there. But yeah, do, do think the better of it. Now, so one thing you can do when you're rolling for one cost, three stars, um, you can do what's called, um, it has the, the name of hyper roll at this yeah. level, right? If you're above yeah. 50 gold, you can just essentially roll for that 55% chance that you see a one cost unit in one of your uh, your shop squares. Doesn't opt into doing this, um, would rather take the potential for another loss streak and then just slow roll at five. Um, arguments for both plays you know n neither is necessarily wrong but if you don't hit um you do lose economy threshold and potentially you know um just propel yourself on a continuing downward spiral but this gives you the maximum gold efficiency so let's see if uh, hopefully that pays off for that. let's see what uh <laughs> let's see what they're gonna be able to get out of this one they did pick up another vein maybe they just want to block a little bit of what uh, bravo's trying to do by just holding that vein hostage uh, wouldn't put it past anybody. I mean, it is, it is a valid strategy to make sure that the pool is uh, in someone else's, not in someone else's favor, but in yours. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, that's something that I do. Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would do it too if I, you know, had a brain. But um, unfortunate, <laughs> sometimes that just doesn't happen. No, no, no. But it's it's one of those, right, where you do scout other players' boards. So you do know what other mm -hmm. players are playing for. He was early on already contesting with Prabha. So there might already be a mental rivalry going on. We're like, ah, oh, I just want to mess with him a little bit. Just throw the yep. vein away again. Does look like they don't want to go that route. Uh, the Ironclad is uh, forming, though. It's got a lot of extra of those health and armor bonuses at the moment. So Last Whispers might be necessary in the future to deal with this board. Mm -hmm. No, extremely strong early game board. The only thing that he is lacking is that Infinity Edge on the Callista, which yep. you know he will ultimately go for, um, or a little bit of attack speed. Um, some players have been leaning in to the Giant Slayer on, uh, on Callista as well really helps her slice through those uh, frontline tanks because obviously she's an expert at killing the backline. But uh, the frontline tanks do give that unit a little bit of trouble. Yeah, and if you've got the Last Whisper on it already, you know, you've got the Last Whisper plus the Giant Slayer, it just it doesn't matter whether you have uh, a War Mugs or just a, a large Ironclad bonus, you will just go down to that Callista regardless. 
So that definitely is a, a fun combo. Uh, I, I don't think, you know, like I said, I do think they want to go for the edge instead of the, <laughs> instead of the Giant Slayer. But Giant Slayer has been a fun item in general to build into comps whenever it's possible. Uh, you do see it a lot on these type of backline ranged units. You know, the, whether it's a Lucian or whether it's a Callista, it's, uh, it's one that comes out not when it's needed, but rather when there was it was just the option that was available. Huh. So Broba did not opt into playing the Vayne reroll. Very interesting. Nope. Though those items definitely can be tough. Um, not necessarily fantastic Draven items. Not necessarily fantastic uh, Auction items. But you know they are stable. They're winning fights. So you take those. You take those. So it'll be interesting to see what Broba's board does shape up to be. Obviously, you're holding the Forgotten units, so that that lends itself towards the Draven angle. But there's a lot of time between now and the. Uh, the four one four two potential roll down. Yeah, it doesn't have the op most optimal carousel position, of course, being in fourth. You know, you do uh, you, you're not one of the first. You don't, you know, you're not the last, but you're not in a great spot. Uh, there might still be plenty of items left for them, uh, although they might want to go defensive. Yeah, yeah, they want to go for the belts. Yeah, and you just want to like here in these situations, right? AP doesn't really give you much. You're leaning more towards attack damage now that you slammed the last whisper. It's always a belt. Belt, in my opinion one of the most flexible items you can get if there's nothing that you really need right you can build a trap car which is always fantastic you can build a uh um redemption which is the belt and the tier item you know so i always you know default to belt worst comes to worst so good decision there and you get four gold too so you know make a little money on that one exactly decides to uh could have send to level or... seven yeah, could have taken Necrim, went for the Ivern, because the Ivern is, of course, two costs whole, higher, so you got that extra bonus gold. And uh, that means their economy, I mean, it's not, you know, their economy isn't high, but they've been rolling, so that's been fine. Um, mm -hmm. Doesn't quite want to pick up the other Cavalier, though. They keep the Sichuani in the shop. Yeah, the, the difference between even two to three and three to four Cavalier is essentially negligent, uh, or negligible. You know, there's the not a... That's about it, yeah, for sure. Yeah. The only time you really play more than, like, sometimes even two Cavalier, because as soon as he finds a better unit, he will swap that cut out. Um, the only time that you really play above, like, two Cavalier is when you get the Spats. Um, ooh. So he has three damage items. Um, in my position, you know, I I prioritize, even though that, that, sh that Demon Slayer is great, I would definitely prioritize that Sunlight Cape. Yeah. Um, Sunlight Cape is fantastic for um stabilize also um these items especially mid to like late game as we get towards the end of stage four definitely does not help out the jacks very much but this is a you know a stabilization method for him so you know good good uh good natural shops you know we take those also one other little thing i want to point out um sure that you know you might not think of when you're you know playing the game is like a lot of people would tend to frontline that Hecaro. So the reason why he frontlines the Kled instead is because of the shield and the nature of Kled's passive. What he does is uh, it's called the dismount. So when he breaks the shield, he jumps off and all the enemies stop targeting him. So you go from one full HP tank to the next, and you kind of maximize and juggle that aggro. So you, uh, you know, get to save some HP, you know, keep your board healthy, and then the rest of your backline tears through the front. Yeah, so, I mean, for everyone smart. who's. Uh... For everyone who's, who's familiar with the concept of main tank and off tank, this was a tank swap in the making. It's quite going out here. It's, uh, now, what game is that uh, referencing? Uh, plenty. There's, 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 there's plenty of games that are uh, that are working with that. There's quite a, quite a few MMORPGs where you, uh, for instance, can have two tanks in a raid, uh, where an off tank and a main tank start, and then you swap the tanks to ah. have the boss go for the other, so you have the defensive goes back up. Uh, it's a thing in certain uh, uh, team-based shooters like Overwatch that has some MOBA elements in it. You have the main tank and an off tank, but they don't really swap because the main tank is like, you know, uh, Makes it's a main tank and off tank. But yeah, in this in this case, you do they do he does swap between these two tank units because you have a cavalier which is Kled, cavalier which is Hecarim, and then uh, because Kled's shield breaks, he jumps off with his passive. Then Hecarim becomes like the default main tank because that's where everyone's going to focus on because the cavalier just jumps in on it. Maybe sometimes it's Rel, but with the item choice that he's put on, where he's put the item on the Hecarim that is meant to be. Uh, the next tank after Clad drops. 
Makes sense. Yeah, I never. Uh, oh wow, you know, fantastic position. If I'm him, yeah. I, I'm uh, I'm writing home. I'm writing home to my family. And I'm saying, hey, you know, I'm taking the money. I'm taking the money today. So right. I'm uh, I, I'm you know, if I'm Brubba, I am very very happy. But yeah, no, I never uh, never played too much Overwatch. You know, never really played uh, a ton of MMOs outside of uh, the RuneScape. So you know. We learned something new every day. It wasn't really a thing in RuneScape, as far as I know. No. So that definitely makes sense. There weren't really other raids there. Oh, this Lucian is popping, though. Look at that. The Deathblade, as well as the uh, as the Titan's Resolve. Oh, that's yeah, that, uh, that's hard one. Doesn't quite have that, those armor breaks in it, but doesn't look like he needs it. No, that Radiant Titans, as well as the uh, the Crick Glove, um, the yeah. Jewel Gauntlet, you know, really, really pumps out the damage. So. Fantastic item on the Lucian because he just ticks so much and he's able to build up the 25 stacks. What he gets at the end of that is 100 AD, AD attack damage and 100 AP, um, which is you know or, or, you know magic damage. So it helps him uh, helps him out a lot because he utilizes both. He can be a full damage tank as well as a full AP tank. Um, some of our top tier players in the scene, um, also bigger streamer, um, Raiditz loves lucian because he claims you can essentially put any damage item on that lucian um so no matter what you can always default to a lucian board so yeah uh, very I mean, flexible it's, unit. Why, it's why it was so popular in the beginning as well like all those lucian comps was kind of near comps and the misfortune mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh nukes at some point you know there, there, it always helps to have a lucian because uh, he, he just puts out damage and like you said any any damage item can kind of work uh doesn't mean that you will optimize with illusion in that situation it's kind of like the you know he's he's the titan's resolve of champions in that way um mm -hmm. but yeah it, it's it's a good unit that you can always use and as a forecast his base output and his base value is already quite high yeah no it's a it's a, it's my default too you know if i have if you know i'm not sure where to go you get him. Yeah. yeah i pick him up and in I, mean, the I, had, units. I, had a period, I had a period in the beginning actually where i you know i wanted i was you know i was trying to trying to find some lucian comps etc and he just wasn't dropping i just couldn't <laughs> find lucians in my shops for the life of me which was my similar situation with karma in the in the, in the set before um yep. but yeah no lucian has been uh has been more more frequently viable in shops at least more 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 c uh, and that's why you see people drop towards it. Also means that oftentimes, because it's such a popular flex unit, um, it might you might be contested on it. Yeah, I think right now the meta is so healthy that you're able to kind of like almost always get the unit that you're mentally thinking about, just because there's so many th options of things for people to play. Yeah. But uh, looking at Awkward's board, you know, we had just talked about it, the uh, spin to win the, uh, the assassin. Yeah. So now we have that assassin yeah. on the board. All right, spot, not, uh, all right spot not too much uh econ but you know we'll work on building that back up slow roll for the uh oh is he gonna ooh, go for the Viego? Yeah. i think he wants it he wants the viego he doesn't even want the boat. does not get it yeah, i think at this point um i didn't see what he has on bench but a lot of really really good uh items already slammed on the board so you know, doesn't really matter here if he does decide to take a champion like Viego, but obviously now he can lean into the sword, you know, get a belt that's a Zeke's. So, For sure. you know, uh, we take that. We take that. And get he's, another got Glove. A, he's got a little bit of a, of a semi sin board going as far as I've seen. He's got the Revenants for sure. So he's buffing up that Nocturne and uh, and he's got the Assassins going. He's got the Assassin 4 bonus already. Uh, he could try and go Assassin 6, but he doesn't really need to. I think he's going to be fine with this 4 bonus and then uh, put the Gwen in. Indeed, Revenant is starting. I mean, it would be ideal if he finds an Ivern on 8, so he can just put mm -hmm. in that 4 Revenant as well. And then that Nocturne is just going to spin the win. Uh, we've seen it plenty in the past weeks. You might want to buff up a few more of those low, low star units at the moment, especially that uh, that Kha'Zix. I don't know why that Kha'Zix is still a 1 star. That's That's kind of insane, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's one thing where on occasion it's good to play. Ooh, unfortunate on that nocturne. It's good to play assassins into like a high roll early game board. Um, on occasion, like, of course, not. but you do run into that issue where you end up with an unupgraded Kha'Zix because he is that one cost unit. Yeah, and then try to PVP, taking the early eighth. You know, four or five. I think that's the earliest we've seen today. Um. They went 3-1, oh, so right now they're sitting at, I believe, 17 points. 
Yeah, uh, try to PvP. Yep. No, no, no. To try, try to PvP. Got a, got a. What is it? A uh, seven, seven, eight oh. in this situation. I am um, incapable of reading. Uh, two, eight, eight. He got a two, eight, eight. He got a, he got the second place in that first lobby, but it's gone two lasts now. So he's on, uh, he's on ten points total. So that's yeah, likely might not be enough for that top eight. Might be the end of the road. Yeah, I, uh, I misread that one. So thank you for uh, catching that. It happens. We have, we have an interesting score sheet for you, for you guys at home. If you wanna, if you wanna find the score sheets, exclamation mark score in the chat, and you'll get the exact same sheet that we're looking at as well. Uh, you can see what, uh, what. <laughs> <laughs> why Kuba was having a bit of an issue. Um, uh, and I don't think that was a fault of the score sheet. It's more of a fault of the me. Yeah. But yeah. King Cappuccino with uh, a favorite board of mine. You know, I had so much fun playing the reroll Tristana. And I'm glad that he is bringing it back. Um, that Radiant. Tristana, love it. That Radiant Titans is going to put an in infinite value. And now he's in a position, that right? Too. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, he's in a position where, right, typically you want to reroll for the two star cannon, the two star, or the three, sorry, the three star cannon, the three star MF, but he hit all the MFs very, very early on, gets another Hellion spat. He has the angle to play eight Hellions. He is, he's gonna, uh, uh, you know, for me, you know what? Hey, I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna have he fun here. I'm playing eight Hellions. A little bit careful with his health, though, health though, because if you want to get the Teemos up, it's you know it's 26 health. It's risky. You know you gotta really be confident that you're gonna be win streaking after that. Otherwise, yeah, you're basically out the next round. So, uh, gotta find one Teemo first, of course, but it's not a guarantee. You can also you get the Zigs down. as well. So the Zigs is an option here. It's possible, sure, yeah. I think that's um, it's a safer route, but you need to find him first because, of course, a Ziggs at 15% chance, not the easiest one to find. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But it is a, an option. Now, I feel like, you know, if, from how things are looking, more dogs looking out for this guy. You know? It, oh. He's All right, yeah, the Tristana picks that up. Um, one thing about this comp that I do see as a potential misplay, and it is correctable now that he has the... Uh, the Hellion Spat is playing that Kled. So one of the purposes of playing these units specifically is so you draw out the back lines of the enemy units. Um, yeah. Really good when people are playing a lot of like uh, Velkaz, a lot of uh, Heimerdinger, but the Kled does you a disservice in that aspect because the Kled runs up. And depending on how units, uh, the unit targeting works, and it's essentially random outside of Assassins, um, if the Kled runs up first before one of the other enemy units, it can throw off that positioning. So it'll be interesting to see if he if he catches that, if he um, has an opportunity to remove that from his board. That's unfortunate. If he doesn't play it. A couple of gold by buying and selling things again. He's back to one. I mean, it didn't really get him, it didn't get him a um, a bonus, but it was still, he had, he had a little bit more gold than when he, when he started out that, that buy phase. Oh, perfect. See, yeah, that Lucian uh, opened up that little gap right there, and the Tristana was able to get right in the back line and uh, essentially assassinate the Lucian. So it just shreds. It's amazing. Tristana just, uh, especially if she gets that ult off a lot of the time, because then mm -hmm. the enemy units just keep boring her running around, ring around the Rosie, try and find that Tristana, but she just never targeted it until she's the last one left. Yeah, I mean, if I'm in, if I'm in his shoes. I just continue to roll here, right? You have upgrades to make, you have the Thresh that you can get, you have the ability to get that 8 Hellion. I think it's always the correct decision to roll here. Yeah. Thankfully, though, getting the win streak, that is, that's the biggest thing, you know, maintaining gold, maintaining the HP. Fairly healthy lobby, though. It really is. Uh, I wasn't wasn't expecting it to be this healthy, but it turns out it uh, it is. Uh, Rengar currently as well, you know, is also win streaking. So we two win streakers in the lobby at the moment. Uh, and I think the reason why everyone is so healthy is because PvP went out so early. Um, not sure if they threw, but that also means that a lot of rounds went people's way quite free. Because if you're going yep. out four round four stage five, it, stage four and a half already, I think it was. Uh, that's just an easy one. Now, Tristan, I see the last one left. Finally gets focused down. Yep. We'll eventually lose. Um, yeah, the yeah mitigating damage. That loss you can definitely uh, credit to that radiant sunfire. That radiant sunfire, um, you know, as soon as it procs on that Tristana, 
basically count or uh, limits her days. Oh, so we do. So we have the option of another Hellion Spat, or we have the Teemo with the Cav Spat. The Teemo obviously right. is fantastic, but Cav Spat also again suboptimal. Um, ruins a little bit of the positioning opportunity here. That's that's three Hellion Spats for Cappuccino. That's that's uh what we might call a high roll. It's yeah, I mean it's it's a different form of high roll, but it definitely is a high roll in and of itself. And he gets like, the zigs. Wait, why why would she it doesn't even have to anymore? I mean he can, but he doesn't have to he's well, got the Hellion 9, does it do anything? It doesn't do anything, but no, why not, right? No, but now you can drop that and uh and you can play oh, the yeah. uh the small yeah. bear. Bear, yes. Oh, I'd love to see it. This is gonna Big be fan of the small bear. It's gonna be hell to run into. Um Oh, and yep, yeah, that's the Cavalier bonus. There you go. All right, all right. Let's see how this plays out. A ton of reroll coming out in this yeah, lobby. I guess Rengar. Very These are two guys that were win streaking up until the last round. Now we're going to see what that they do looks. Callista with those items. I mean, she almost got taken out. There she goes. So that's the carry gone. The Velcos has nothing on him. And that's Tristana this just bursting through everything else. That Kale needs to maybe get her, sta her stacks off, but it's not happening on time. Ooh. And that's very just close fight. Left. It's just tank units left. That Legionnaire is not going to do enough, I think. Ah, uh, yep. That the Aatrox gets focused down. So I, I think Look. the biggest problem with the comp of Rengar is that he's got the items on the wrong units. He doesn't have his carry uh, itemized because he's got a Kale that just doesn't really have anything. And then his Velkos has nothing. Like he has a lot of damage units that aren't able to do damage. Just because the sheer fact that they're not focused on, so he could he'd, he'd probably be better off trying to buy trying to build some defensive front line rather than just having a bunch of back line that's all not really able to do everything at all. Well, actually, um, what, one of the comps that is definitely making a, making a splash on the scene is the Callista reroll. The Callista reroll can definitely um, and that's and that's fine. Like, that's cool. It, 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 and I, I understand. And then I, I'm I'm agreeing with you. Like it is, you know, the Callista reroll is really good, and the Callista Ooh. that he has is really itemized. But there's nothing else after the Callista goes down. Yeah, that very good point. You know, in a lot of these situations, you know, this in this situation, not so much he doesn't. Uh, well, this is Cap King Cappuccino, of course. Um, doesn't yeah. need that additional damage because the Tristana just attacks so fast with that AI anymore. Yeah. But in um, it's hard to catch because she keeps jumping around. So you know that's because she, she repositions. She's she doesn't have to be protected as much. Yep. Um, she is her own distraction almost. When you look at Rengar like this, right? So the Callista is built in. There's a claw around her. Cavalier's uh, Cavalier has been started. Uh, Kill gives her gives her attack speed, and that's great. But um, there's not any other damage units going on. He did swap out the Velkos, so the Velkos is gone, which I think is a great choice. Um, mm -hmm. So he's got some extra tankiness up there, and this might put him better if he goes up against uh, Cappuccino. Now it might be a different outcome. But before he just had too much squishy in the backline that wasn't doing anything in that backline. It wasn't a supportive unit. Like, it wasn't like a Lux or anything, um, or a Syndra. Uh, it was just a Velkos that was sitting there without any items. So it was kind of a fill for the redemption. But now that he's got mm. an extra support unit in, he can put the Galio in as well. This is in a, a lot better place. He can even get a two-star Karma up. Don't know if he wants to do that, but he can. He's got it in the shop. And there is the Karma Revive. Yeah, these are a lot of upgrades that are being made right now for, for Rengar. Yeah, interesting that he uh, takes out the six redeem to play three knight. Um, obviously, the Galio two very very strong, and it will help in that Tristana matchup with the Galio taunt. If he positions it the right side, and that uh, Tristana jumps to the backline, the Galio could pull that off the Callista because right now that's his worst matchup. Right, if that Callista gets back there, uh, or if the Tristana gets back on the Callista, there's not much she can do because she always throws at the furthest enemy. So. Uh, Hopefully, he's able to uh, utilize that Galio to its full potential. Another Ironclad. Interesting. Yeah, and of course, you see more and more players dropping now. Cappuccino actually out this round fifth place. Ah. I don't think that will be enough for him to get. No, that definitely won't be enough for him to get into that top eight. Unfortunate. That was a good round he was having. It was just not coming together in the end. And now this uh, this this Callista reroll is really taking shape. This is where you want to be. Get that Ironclad bonus up. Have the knights going on on you. This is a lot of armor. A lot of things in the way. It's going to reposition a few things to make it even harder to get to that to get to the. Callista. 
and the Kale and the Callista being in separate corners makes so much sense as well, because when one gets targeted, the other one still gets to be free and, uh, and fire off. Still gonna put her back, okay, okay. Yeah, so he does have the opportunity with that Yasuo positioning, that if there is a Thresh on that left side, that it will get caught by that uh, Yasuo yes. in certain circumstances. Yeah. Great positioning, though, um, on the, the Callista. I mean, right, gets full back on access to that Karma. Ooh, though it does get picked. Ooh, that was a huge hit. I mean, you did see the Giant Slayer Karma in the backline of Harry Frog, right? <laughs> Oh, I actually did miss the giant slayer. I'm not gonna lie. With the jewel gauntlets and the and the and the cap, you know, it's it's that's uh, that's some old school karma building right there. I mean, giant slayer maybe not so much, but that's uh, that's a, a karma that hurts. Uh, so now we've got Harry Frog Fabulotus. Fabulotus playing an absolute banger of a day so far. It's got uh, a, a three two. No, uh, actually, he got the first place and the second place. Yep. Looking to steer towards another top three at least, so he's uh, he's going to come out on top of this one, I'm guessing. And uh, I mean, both lobbies still going, so we don't know the top eight quite yet. We don't even know who's winning in the other one at the moment, but we do know a few that have gone out already. So Diego not hitting the unit, it had a one in three chance to to get the Karma or the Teemo, and unfortunately does not pick up either. But the Draven wants to win the game. Oh, well, got Giant Slayer. Was still around. Unfortunate Harry Frog taking that one. So Harry Frog on their win streak, going up against Fabulotus. So far, the uh, the the winner of the day got a first place, and now at least two second places. Maybe another first place, but it's looking rough because this Harry Frog comp is, I mean, it's not saying unbeatable, but it's very strong. Yeah, and Harry Frog needed this uh, top two to uh, propel really? them into the final eight. Yeah, they're yeah. sitting at nine, 10 points nine. currently. Uh, nine points, actually. Nine points? But, uh, yeah. I can't read or do math. It's okay, man. He's got nine points right now, so he'll at least get eight from this, which puts him in on the, on 17. Uh, and 17 is going to be 100% enough to qualify for this one. Fabulotus currently sitting on 17. We will also get eight or nine points for this one, which uh, leads him to be pretty much guaranteed on uh, first place overall. Of course, it doesn't matter seeding for the last lobby, but it does mean he's already in the lead leading up to those final games. Uh, last round, potentially, Harry Frog versus Fabulotis. Let's see what the Garen and the Volley Bear are going to do against this front line. Are they going to live long enough to keep doing their CC stuff and their regen? Uh, feels good to see Karma popping like this. Look at that go. Yeah, I'm a, uh, what, what some may call a karma stan. I love playing karma. Oh yeah, same here. That We got that one going for us. I mean, that Dawnbringer karma, that was the the one trick I was rolling with uh, for a while. Yeah, But yeah. that is uh, Harry Frog getting the win, nine points on top of it, puts him right there, 18 points in that top eight. Fabulotus securing their first place spot, but it's still very close between at least the top five, top six. So plenty can happen in the next three games, but yep. we know now who are going to be our top eight. Of course, it's going to be Fabulotus, like we just mentioned, 25 points currently, then Skipeus, Brubba, Suyan, Resdrito, Harry Frog, Rengar, and TMS ACKK. We have no need any tiebreakers today, because that is the top eight that we are going with. 25 is the highest, 12 points is the lowest, so there is uh, a plenty of pos a possibility to get into this, because the lowest pl uh, player in that top eight only got one top four. Hmm. So there you go. You don't even need to do amazing in order to get into top eight. Uh, but then, you know, that's today. Maybe next week, maybe the, uh, any previous week, it's going to get a very different story. Of course, we got to set up this uh, first finals lobby. So you're going to take a very quick break. And after that, we're going to show you the scores again. Make sure that everyone's aware of what we're going into. And then we're going to play for those hundred for the three hundred dollars.
Welcome back, everybody. It's time. We're getting there. Top eight of the TFT Monkey Bubble Peanut Butter Cup. It's the second second week we're doing it, and it's already shaping up to be one uh, well, another great one. It really is. Uh, I mean, today, me and Gooba are here to talk you through all the action, and currently, we, of course, know who are the eight players that we're bringing in to this top eight. We're going to be playing for the prize pool of 300 euros. Here they are. On the first place, currently, Fabulotus with 25 points, and all the way at the last is TMS Ek with 12 points. There's a big gap between them, but we've seen how quickly a gap like that can close. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, TFT, there's a lot of variation from game to game, and the ability to uh, come back really does uh, increase over the more games that you play. So, still anybody's game, you know, obviously, Fa uh, Fabulotus, Skip, Brubba, Zuyan, um, all, all favored to be at the top of the leaderboard but you know we got three games to play that's three ace that can happen and you know we'll, we'll have to see how that plays out but i yeah. do really I, i'm really interested to see how fabulotus continues to play if he uh or if they decide to you know go on their own little robin run for a peanut butter cup you know stay right. consistent you know top twos uh and you know ride out the uh the entire lobby yeah, but no, I'm to see the what a treat that would be. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're still trying to get a sponsorship from Rhesus, but it hasn't been uh, going that well, unfortunately. That being said, though, uh, these games have been going amazing because we've seen a variety in terms of what meta what, what comes out in the meta. We even saw a Karma comp win last last game. I mean, who'd have thought? Uh, but yeah, the one we're still waiting for is that spin to win. The Nocturne hasn't come back from last week. And yeah, sure, you know, a patch came through. We understand, you know, it was nerfed and Assassin's Earns is good anymore. It, it's it's understandable, but it doesn't mean that Nocturne cannot still wreck some faces when they want to slide through the game at all. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing whether someone is going to pull it out and pull it out successfully because it, we haven't seen it at least not work. Now I want to see it work. Yeah, and on top of that, you know, I'm really disappointed in this group of players because I still have not seen the chug bug. And, you know, I think that we're not putting enough stock into into the bug or the chug. And it's it's disappointing because that that's that is the true top tier TFT gameplay that I was looking to see today. Yeah. But no, uh, all jokes aside, you know, we've seen a lot of like variation in comps obviously not a ton of the one cost rerolls um placing first but getting a lot of top fours um you're seeing a lot of uh variation like you said the karma is winning we're seeing draven which you wouldn't have expected the one thing that i would have thought would have had more popularity is the oslo and that kind of hasn't um been as prevalent as i would have thought so definitely yeah. uh, a lot of twists and turns today in terms of uh champions being played and compositions as well yeah, for sure. And uh, as we were loading into this fourth game of the day, first game of the top eight, uh, we we just, I mean, we can always say we don't know what's going on, but of course we know exactly what's going on. These players are playing amazing TFT, but the main thing we don't really know is what they're going for, because these players individually also have been swapping up a lot of what they're running. It's not just been, oh, this player keeps trying to force this or keeps trying to force this. Now they're all, uh, they're all really diverse in the way they play it, which is very indicative of the current meta, of course. Uh, the one thing it has been constant, though, is that that cloak is not getting put, put picked up in that yeah. first carousel. It's yeah, just they're... not happening. I keep saying it. It's just not meta. And, you know, it, it turns out I'm still right. Unfortunately, there is no love for the cloak. Um, nope. But, you know, maybe if we get like an all tier AP car carousel, we'll see one person go for the cloak. But I, I honestly doubt it. I doubt. I mean, it makes sense though if you think about it, right? I mean, superheroes have increasingly started wearing less cloaks because you can just get sucked into, a, you know, an airplane turbine or you get stuck yeah. on something else. You know, cloaks are just not a popular fashion accessory currently, and it turns out the TFT is just following the trend. So, um, I, you know, we could have seen it coming. We just haven't watched enough Marvel, I guess. Yeah, and honestly, you know, I would be the worst superhero to wear a cloak or a cape because, you know, I would trip. I would trip, trip every time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah no, no crime stopping there. The only thing I'm stopping is me. So, well, yeah, no cloaks for me either. I guess it's not tripping. It's not Scapeus because he's got the double Hellion on. Nice start oh. right there. Got the Kled. Does get a double tier, which is maybe not the m most amazing thing. But hey, you know, maybe you can get a fun blue buff or an Archmage on the, on the, on the right carry. And then you can so, actually, <laughs> let, let me tell you something. Um, you know, I, 
I tried this when I played in Giant Slayer last Thursday. Uh, sure. I tried to force Zig's reroll. I went five, five, five. You know, consistent. I'm at least a consistent gamer. But I do think that blue buff on Zig's is one of the strongest openers that you can get. I mean, do you want to um, slam it? Would you slam yes. it right here? Like right now, yes. you would slam it. Okay. Every well, single time. I don't think they're going to. And looking at what they're getting on their uh, on their bench, they might even drop the Hellion altogether soon. But for now, could still stake it. Go for the go for a little a bit of a Cavalier play. I mean, I would. But at the same time, I did not qualify for Worlds, so we'll see how Skip plays this one out. But I do have a yeah. or I, rather regionals, but um, he has a lot of options here to say the least. Okay, so he's going Knights over Cavaliers at the moment. Does drop the blue buff? He, he's doing it. He's doing it. Yep. He's got the stream on. He's just listening in for tips. I don't know. No, yeah. skip, uh, skip going for the blue buff on the zigs. I mean, you say you like it. I'm not sure about it yet, but uh, maybe I can be turned to. Maybe after this stream is over, I'm just going to go in and try and force the blue buff zigs. Who knows? Yeah, I, I, I do put a lot of value on that blue buff. I know a couple other uh, GM challenger players do find the value in it. You know, it could just be... Uh, could be fluke, but you know, I, we'll see how it plays out. The one thing though, especially since he doesn't have the two star zigs, he's gonna be praying for that brand to come in. Yeah. So just, just you know, because the new spell weaver buff, you get continuously stacking AP. So right, the longer the fight goes on, the more bombs that that zigs throws, uh, the more AP he'll get. In my mind, you go for the AP, uh, the AP again. You just make the hat here. Um, again, the hat is fantastic on the Ziggs because he has a low mana pool, so an Archangel's Staff does not give you as much uh, value as, say, you know, a flat Rabadon's would. And he does go with that. Yeah, and look, uh, right now he's just buffing buffing magic, which is great, you know, and then maybe he can, if he wants to pivot into a different ma magic user completely fine you know it's, uh, it's 100 mm -hmm. a valuable trait uh depends on how many hellions you, hellions you get depends on uh, depends on a bunch of other things but ziggs right now is just a very strong uh early game unit does want to start it up a little bit might want to st he's, he's still rolling of course so it's still possible uh but you do see for instance already two star ziggs on the other side here for brubba uh your ziggs is likely stronger just because of the items it has but is the rest of your comp resistant to this uh yeah i think he's gonna come out on top of this one still yep it's uh it's a close one like a ziggs is taking a lot of damage and he does go down in the end but he still has enough ziggs left in his portal to win out against the brand yeah the one thing that really you know uh took that fight for him was him holding on and playing the knights so the knights right gives you a flat damage reduction uh yeah and those ticks on the brand can be deadly especially when you have the spell weaver ticked in or teched in um, but, you know, the Knights uh, outplayed it. He is not upgrading units on his board, though, so it does kind of look a little precarious going into uh, a stage two streak. But, you know, the uh, the blue buff zigs. It does surprise. I mean, yeah, you see so. him look around. He's, he's looking around. He's like, everyone's got these two star units. I've got nothing. Come on. Come on, game. Give me something. Because he's really sticking it now. Like, he's not even mm -hmm. trying to pivot. He's really sticking on this Hellion, uh, Hellion start with the Knights with that blue buff zigs. Uh, and granted, it's still working. It, it hasn't failed just yet, but we're getting to that point where too many two cost units will just outweigh this, even without items. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to come. That's going to come probably after next carousel. Maybe definitely on a start to stage three, but it might already start happening after carousel when everyone else is getting items. And lucky enough for him, he, uh, Skip is getting really fantastic uh, matchups here. So it's allowing him to streak. Um, well, I'm going to maintain that. Another six with a tier. Probably don't take that, but you know that is an option if you had another pair. Really, um, really go for that two star zigs. Like if you really feel like you need it, then I get it. But I don't think he's going to go for it. I think he might go for the rod, maybe for uh, for the bow. But the rod I seems would like choice for him. Yeah, I would personally go for the three star defensive. Yeah. But you know, neither one is a bad uh, decision. But he's already made made gold, not to not sweating his uh, econ at this moment. So yeah, do, does not find any of the upgrades needed. But we do get the knight in the cavalier in, and I think that that is a fantastic early game uh, trait. 
to, to yeah. play just because it's so hard to get through knights as well as that damage reduction that gets thrown on by the cavaliers and he's really really close to starring quite a few units like that sejuani the Kled. like there's there's quite a few things that are on his bench right now that he just needs that one unit and all of a sudden he gets like that extra little spike it's not a huge power spike but it's something uh and i mean what would he throw on his zigs is he gonna throw the jeweled gauntlet on it i think he would i think he would yeah jewel jewel gauntlet is great here um the only time like blue buff and jewel gauntlet aren't good is if you're playing karma and you don't have that death cap just because the nature of her ability right there's not a ton of uh casts happening to where you can consistently get those crits but once you have the the rabbit ons it helps out a lot unfortunately it does go down i mean it's inevitable with uh, the lack of upgrades that he has but definitely it's still looking up it's impressive that it went on for this long like he's almost we're almost at stage three and he's only gotten that one loss now he's going to upgrade he's got another, another zigs in the shop as well which he's, he's definitely going to pick up uh, another thresh which he should pick up as well if he wants to keep that night streak going might stick yeah the only not. the only issue with picking that up is that uh there's no clear way for him to make econ here if he does pick it up unless he does want to sell like the cl or the club pair or the poppy pair mm. so it's definitely uh an interesting decision because you know you might not necessarily need the cut of the poppy but strongest board here would be assuming you had it um to play the ford hellion at level six yes two knight two calf I think I think it might just be waiting for the fourth Hellion to take out the the, the Thrash and uh, and put it in that Hellion or something. I don't really know, but because then he kind of needs that mm. because he won the Knight and the Cavalier bonus. I don't know. In that case, you might just want to go six, but we're not quite there yet. Yeah, unfortunately, another loss coming in, but at least is able to make that twenty gold. I always say that if you're not in a position to streak. He could lost streak now if he wants to. Like you know, he could he could make that decision. But even when he gets the units, he's just not putting it on the board. Uh, yeah. So he could get the econ off because he, he has he has HP to lose. He has definitely has his room to play with, um, and he doesn't have to put in certain units. He can just play from a weaker standpoint and then lead just lost streak on purpose to get that econ back and then roll. Yeah, one of the benefits of playing the Hellions early is that you almost always kill at least one to two things. So it does give you a really strong loss streak just because, you know, you get multiple uh, rats coming out to uh, continue to whittle down the target. So definitely the favorite way to play loss streaking if, you know, if possible, of course. We're back on board here with Rengar. Rengar, of course, in seventh place currently. Really needs to start making up some ground with these rounds. Is currently uh, at least doing well in terms of win streaking. Is the only player still win uh, that has a win streak uh, on fire at the moment. And uh, yeah, when, when I look at this board, you know, I see a winner. I see a possibility here for him to come out on top. He's got the ab abomination going already. He's got some good items on that ribbon uh, that he's also building out. Not quite sure if he's going to stick with the Riven long game. Uh, it's just for the Legionnaire bonus at the moment, I'm guessing. But might want to go for a Velkos with it or something. Did just yeah, just did just pick up a Velkos, so that's perfect. Yeah, I was thinking that, that there was uh, you know obviously the Hurricane kind of throws a little bit of a, a wrench in that plan, but there is an opportunity to get that Velkos in. Um, and Velkos is just like an all-around strong. Skip yeah. ended up getting another hat or another uh, rod. I apologize, and slamming two rabbit on. So if he does end up playing the karma board, which based off you know that Soraka hold, you know is an option in the back of his mind, he does have uh, a rather strong karma. Oh, uh, the double cost is gone again. Item. So where are you going with this, Rengar? Could this yeah, be? I'm sure. Could this be like? Could he be wanting to go for like a Zyra, maybe like the uh, the good old Zyra bomb? No, I think that this actually has the potential to be a Yasuo game, uh, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah, you're with that as well, yeah. You're not gonna play. Uh, you're not gonna play a, a Riven reroll with these items. Hodge just doesn't benefit um, Riven that well, as well as like another bow item does not. You know, doesn't do a ton for you. Um, you want flat AD in general on, on Riven. You could play if you hit, you know, as a backup. You could always play the Jax, albeit a little bit suboptimal. Like, you, you definitely want a Last Whisper. 
but the Hodge can do enough healing to, you know, at least streak you to a top four, especially from a 96 HP. Uh, I, do, I do feel like he's putting a lot of eggs in that one basket to try and get that one comp together because he's the drops aren't happening for him, right? So he has the items on the Riven right now, which is like, it's fine for what it is right now. But he's not putting any items on the Abomination that he's got, got, got up, so it's a very basic one. Um, there's not really a Fiddlesticks use case here, like it's there, but just like to fill some space, yeah. fill some nice unit. But he does really, w it does seem like he wants to go for that one route, and as long as that route's not happening, he's just sticking with this basic. And yeah, you know, it's working out so far. He's got the units and the items to make it work, but at some point, people are going to outspike him, and that is, this is not going to fly anymore. And honestly, this is a pretty scary board. I mean, He's going to be uh, pretty hard-pressed to work his way fully through this, but yeah, I guess uh, we'll see how the uh, the Abomination helps him out here. Fiddle gets a great ult, to be honest. Doesn't get to survive, but gets some pretty significant ticks down that uh, could benefit them. Unfortunately, the Sunfire, a little too strong. The Chug Jug comes through. <laughs> <laughs> Chug Jug being Gragas, of course. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah, I mean, he's got a jug that he's chugging, so... But, uh, perfect, perfect nickname, nickname for a guy like that. Oh, yeah. uh, can we see what Rengar picks up on this one? Uh, does Ooh, he, does he get the bow? He, I mean, he still has the has the loose bow, of course, in the Riven, so he needs something to combine with that at, at some point. He's going to pick up the belt or the Zyra. Uh, does open up the opportunity to just stick that Zyra on the board and go with that. Um, but like we said before, that's he's likely he want, he's looking for that Yasuo. As long as that Yasuo is not dropping, he's not really happy, uh, most likely. And Zyra is indeed just gonna get sold. So we have a belt and a cloak. Could potentially make a gargoyle, but I don't think he's gonna. You know, now that I'm see looking at it a little bit, he also does have a Varus angle. So those items, um, you know, say he gets an AP here, um, Gwinzo's does actually benefit the Varus a good bit. And I think that those items ultimately are not the worst if he wanted to pivot into like a Kale. Also does have the spin to win, you know? Again, suboptimal items with the Hodge, but you know, all, all it takes is a glove um, to make the last whisper. And you know, you have a pretty strong uh, Nocturne. Yeah, and of course you have the Revenant angle open already with the Fiddlesticks. So it's not, a, not out of the realm of possibility that you just put in a Nocturne and it kind of doesn't do anything. Uh, but you do want to already have a two-star Nocturne at this stage of the game. Like, the one-star will not really do that much. Uh, so you do need need to upgrade a little bit more. And I think a lot of his angles right now where he's going into, he's going to be stuck with one-star un one units for too long for it to really be viable. He's got that early, he did get that early fiddle, which definitely helped him out. He's still got the A-bomb up. He's got some good items on that Riven again. Um, but he's going to go, oh, he's going to go for the gloves. Putting it on the Yeah, fiddle I'll send the well. Rascal's glove. Very interesting. Let's go. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm really curious friend, to see where he goes. A friend of mine started playing those gloves. Like every single time the gloves come in the shop, like I'm just picking the gloves because it's the best item. Because you get three radiant, two radiant items for free. Uh, which oh, is it's a very a good fantastic. Idea. Yeah, it's, like, it's a really good argument. And you know, there's nothing you can bring. You said, yeah, but you don't might not get the right items. It doesn't matter. You get two items, so it's better. Period. Like it's it's a very statistically sound uh, uh, argument. But if you get the wrong radiant items, there it's kind of going to waste. Uh, but that rarely happens, obviously. Yeah, I, I always like, so say I'm in a position like this where I kind of like, my, say my comp's decided. Actually, Yasuo is a fantastic comp um, to play that into because you, you're you rolling for multiple three stars, right? You're gonna get, you're ideally getting that lease in. So Rascal's Glove works perfectly on him. But what I do as a rule of thumb is to say, hey, you know, do I have um, enough tank items? He found him. Am I comfortable? He got him. He found his Yasuo. Yep. Yeah, am I comfortable with my tank items? Am I comfortable with my damage? Um, and if, you know, the answer is yes to that, then it's always Rascal's Glove because it can provide fantastic utility. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, great, great pick up there. You did see yeah, slide like when he picked it up. He was like, I, I know this is good in my heart. I know it's good, but does it feel like a, like a cheese, you know? Does it feel mm -hmm. like something I should be doing? Yeah, so the Yasuo and the Zyra have both been picked up. Uh, by the by the drop, uh, Yasuo. I mean, you would assume Yasuo is going to get played at some point, but he might just be waiting for the two star to put him in the over the river. No, nope, he's got level seven. He can do it now. That's the Yasuo in the game. Oh. He's finally found him, and now he's going to get all the other units that 
he never even dreamed he could be getting. Revenant bonus is up from the Ivern. Very interesting. Now he's uh, back in that uh, what we'll call dizzy position, right? You know, if, not depending on and not everything dropped at once. <laughs> yeah, hitting that Kale definitely threw a wrench in his uh, in his plan. Sometimes it's uh, you get, you suffer from this issue where you get too much, and it uh, can definitely feel a little bad. It's ultimately it's a good problem to have. Oh, I think that's just that's the problem. He got nothing for so long, and he was thinking, oh, I'm just gonna go into this Yasuo, and then he just kept on getting. He got everything at once, uh, and then it's indeed you have that you have that decision making problem where you got to think, figure out. Can I do I still want to go Yasuo or but then I got Kale and then you know also got Arel and Diana Fiddlesticks dropped again like there's there's so much going on on his board right now and on his bench especially so he does have the ability to play that Gwenzo's I think he's thinking about it he does he's got some Viego in the shop like his shop is absolutely on fire at the moment he's yeah. not doing it he's not buying it he's got the Rage Blades on the Kale which is big, you know excellent choice of course at the Hand of Justice Runan, so kills itemized. Yep, it's, and it looks like it's just a go go eight angle here from here, you know. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that he's trying this because I've always thought about, you know, now that the AD scaling um, has been nerfed a little bit on on Kale, what other item combinations? So I've always been curious about the hurricane. So, you know, in a tournament such a situation, you know, I'm glad that the, he's testing it for me. So we get to do a little yeah. bit of experimenting here. Yeah. Skip also does find that karma. Yeah. Because you also know the other players aren't memeing around. You know this is a good lobby, so the test will be accurate. You'll have a good sample size. Even if the sample size is one, it's still a sample size. It is a st stat uh, nonetheless. But yeah, Skip did find that Karma has a Nikos on the bench. Um, Karma is actually a fantastic matchup into the Kale, especially the Kale 1. Um, yeah. So it, everything, you know, it, it makes sense. everything is a fantastic matchup into a kill one. Like a kill one rarely does enough. Like it rarely does what you actually need it to do, unless you have a bunch of three stars around her. You really, you really want that upgrade. Uh, even with the right items, kill just it takes her too long to do something, and she dies too quickly for kill one to really uh, ramp up enough. Yeah, uh, like, like you had said. Because by the time she actually ramps up and does her thing, the rest of her com the comp will actually have won the fight, and she's just an afterthought. So she wasn't the one that made that difference. Um, so I really, I really like, I like Kale as long as she's a two star. But like that's on my own boards. I do understand that you know there are differences. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I do want to see Kale do a little bit, a uh, little bit more and get a two star. Otherwise, might have uh, put that on the board for the wrong reasons. A lot of people leaning into this karma angle, right? Uh, Brobo with the radiant blue buff, um, obviously. Skip with the uh, the two star or the karma, you know, fully itemized. And I believe I saw one more fully itemized uh, upgraded karma. Uh, I think that know, was just skip on the other side of it. I think that was that was just skip again. Honestly, uh, there is another karma in the carousel. Let's see if that's going to get picked up. I don't think so, but at least not by the. I don't think it's going to get picked up by uh, by Reg, Rengar, but could be. Not Suyan gets the bow. Ooh, Skip only going to have cloaks left. No, actually be able to potentially pick up a fist if he wants them. No, gloves not happening. So it's going to be the chain mail. It's interesting. Now that uh, we have the option for the Radiant Zephyr in the game, feels like Zephyr uh, does not nearly get as prioritized as it uh, used to in um, yeah. past, you know, past sets. Yeah, it just kind of feels underwhelming. Like Zephyr was always amazing when you had two Zephyrs. Like one Zephyr was OK, but two Zephyrs was really it because then you disable two units. And now that all oh, that radiant kind of does the same thing, only just for one unit. It just disables mm -hmm. a unit for ten seconds, and that's you know if you just as you manage to disable the enemy carry for ten seconds, especially if it's like a Jax or something, you you just win. Like if their carry can't do anything for ten seconds, you're just going to win. Um, oh, absolutely! But it's fantastic also, positioning, by the way. Yeah, no, this is really good positioning. Uh, and talking about positioning with Zephyr combination, especially. You know, you always need to position that Zephyr correctly, so you need to constantly be scouting those boards and hope you're in the right spot. Like, there's a little bit of that involved, which Ooh. it only really gets the top value in the last few rounds when you can position a little bit more accurately instead of trying to position for everything at the same time. 
No, absolutely, right? You know, early game, like you had mentioned, uh, you're, you're positioning for potentially four units, right? Or four people. You can, you'll have a pool at any given time when there's eight players alive that yeah. of four players that you can fight. So definitely makes it a lot harder as to, you know, compare it to th two other players left alive. Um, also very interesting board by Skip. You know, if you take a look at that, he is playing the four Cav. Um, he's playing, you know, two Dawn and two Knight. So very interesting board and it's, you know, it's paying off. Again, fantastic positioning, you know, accurately scouting the lobbies, you know, keeping track of his matchmaking, knows exactly what he's doing and uh, where he's where he wants to be. So, you know, fantastic play from Skip all around. Let's see, yeah, Skip, Skip's just uh, just on a roll at the moment. It's going to be hard to figure out. It's got the right HP. Nice. Um, and then we see Brabba on, on second. I mean, Brabba, we saw him in the last round, of course, doing, doing a pretty good job at that top two. Um, but now, in the middle of the pack, uh, TMS ACKK looks to be potentially going out. Harry Frog not on the greatest amount of health. And uh, it's good that we're in an NPC round right now. Let's see what they're... Let's see what they're gonna... Let's see what items drop from this, because there's a few players that definitely could use a few more items, uh, at least a good item to uh, start that last those last stages with. Yeah, just finish off, cap off the boards. Um, skip, I think, you know, given the health, given the streaking into neutrals, likely wants to just uh, prioritize going nine, um, starting to play that that capped you know invoker comp that we you know so so often see when you're in positions like this um you know there's even an argument that you do the gwen carry some people like like top and opt into the gwen carry also harry frog's board little insane you know garen 2 level 8 upgraded uh karma you know he is uh definitely a threat not something to be messed with Way for perfectly swapping to avoid that thresh Ooh, you know it looks like it does not work out perfectly in his favor but um we'll see if uh you need to, get, uh, need to get a few casts off that's all she needs one off already gets another one look at those bombs just hitting it's insane oh wow yeah your back line's still alive that varus and that lux but as soon as everything is gone ACKK just uh, dropping like a fly Oh, look at that Lucian with the attack speed. Oh, I'd love to see it. Oh. Yeah, honestly, I kind of prefer those items on Lucian, like that exact item combination. Yeah. As opposed to like an Ophelio board. It just feels so much more consistent. Um, it, it, so, Lucian in general, know, I mean, he has, uh, you know, Ophelio has one gun, Lucian has two. You know, logic dictates yeah. Lucian better, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly how that works. So, you know, yeah. it, it makes sense. Um, Math. The issue. Math, yeah. The issue with the uh, the Aphelios board, unfortunately, is that uh, is that it requires so much gold to get to your ideal state, right? You want to be playing Invokers, you want to be playing Revenants, you want to be, uh, you know, you want to have that team on the board. So not only are you investing um, a lot of gold, but you're also literally investing your life. Um, to, yeah. You know, you're playing that team. So not definitely not a. Uh, a favorite in current meta, at least for me. I, I don't know about you. I, I don't know about you, but Skip being on sixty nine HP and sixty nine gold is just very perfect in my mind. Like it just looks amazing. Yeah, that's a uh, does lose that round, cool. so he does lose, and then you'll get some gold, so it does lose that statistic. But that was a nice moment. Was one yeah, nice moment. Yeah, <laughs> nice little nice little gamer moment. Gets uh, gets the that. Gwen there as well as the Ophelia is still in the bench. I think at this stage he's just he's just keeping a lot of avenues open. That he doesn't really need to anymore. I think he's in a great spot to uh, to continue from here with that Karma. And uh, yeah, I mean that Zig's opener just flourishing in a beautiful composition mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, don't don't sleep on the blue buff Zigs. Nope. You know it is a uh, it's it's a force to be reckoned with. As long as he, he built into the right, the right things after. I mean, the fact that he got yes. that karma is, is definitely helping. See another karma here right now with the Radiant blue buff. Which, uh, uh, level 2 uh, Heimerdinger right rolls. beside it. Yeah, the Heimerding is probably going to be the bigger factor here. But karma still uh, alive. Enemy karma going down, skip actually losing this round again. Might, uh, might have to be thinking about oh. a little bit of a reposition here and there. And maybe it's good that he has those few... Uh, champions on this bench because looks like his uh, his luck has, is running out at the moment 
honestly, that lo that loss could be worse for Skip. So, right in my mind, Skip is doing the uh, the healthy go to nine. If Skip takes yep. one more loss, they get the uh, the radiant blessing. You know, the stimmy, and yep. it could really catapult him into you know that capped you know level nine. Get all the three star five costs or two three star five costs. You know, uh, I'm getting a little overzealous. All the two star five costs and you know, really just spike over the lobby. Our on, uh, on board with Brabba, finally back to Brabba, of course, with the, uh, with the, like we said, with that Karma, with the Radiant Blue buff, especially that Heimerdinger. Two-star mm -hmm. Heimerdinger, not something you see um, like totally often, because of course, two-starring any five cost is already a struggle. Uh, especially level but eight. also get the two-star Garen, gets the double also two-star. Yep, and you saw the mental turmoil there, right? Yeah. There was, uh, you, you know, do, do I do the Gwen? Yeah. Do I do the Garen? Gwen, the Gwen is also one of those I champions know, that I but, personally, I sleep because on. Because it's itemized, right? Like you have the gloves on it, but you have the Garen on your bench. You know you're going to two-star him. You don't know if you're going to two-star the, the Gwen. And like that's the, that's the choice in that situation, right? Like a two-star Gwen might be better, but the two-star Garen is guaranteed. I think that was the choice that eventually then they go with where, you know, do I want to push my luck here? And if you're on 24 HP and you're leaning towards that stage five, that stage six almost, you might want to go for that chance. Uh, and especially because he's not going to get to level nine. Like this is not happening this game. No, no, not at all. And Skip, so Skip actually does take a little bit of HP there. Looks like that they bought a Teemo. So they're uh, definitely uh, proceeding with that cap board. That off carry uh, Zyra with the four star, or the, the upgraded Zyra, I'm saying Zyra. The upgraded Karma, Karma with that Radiant Blue buff, even though it has no supporting items, is going to, you know, pay dividends. All right, doesn't even need to lose. Gets the natural... Uh, two-star Teemo. Yeah, gets the natural two-star Teemo. Oh. Gets the Radiant Blessing regardless of how this round goes. Skip is just in a fantastic spot. Still playing the Cavaliers too, by the way, which is, uh, yeah. you know... I, I think it's a player diff, right? There's a reason why he went to EU Regionals and I didn't. Not also yeah. the fact that I am in NA, but we're going to ignore that one. But yeah, great well, he, board, he, he great got, build. He got top eight in EU regionals. Let's be, you know, let's be completely honest in the entire story there. Not just he got there, he got to top eight, which is yeah. uh, a, a very, impressive. very nice, very nice thing. Yeah, because that means he actually got streamed, which unfortunately a lot of EU didn't. Um, but let, uh, that, that at least uh, did make it to the top eight. Now, Garen... Yeah, strong unit. Ooh. Two star Garen, really beefy. Oh. But unfortunately, when you got three units around, which one is Teemo, it is a sl slim chance you're gonna get we'll get away with that one. So Skippe is just keeping that alive. Gets another Thief glove. Oh, these items. Yeah. Holy, now going for the full board pivot. Now he's dropping. That's go. Oh, I love Revenue to see this. Pickups with the Gwen. Cavaliers are almost. Uh, they're almost oh no, they're basically out yeah i mean i don't know why he's sticking to them if he's gonna stick with this board but maybe he's thinking i get the, like a two star this or a three star that yeah I, I, I love plays board. like this i love plays like this i love seeing the full board swaps i love seeing Which how much dip somebody getting. could fit on someone or on their own ship right and i think he's going for every single bit of it let's see if he hits uh, it'll uh, even picks up the lucian and velcos because why not i have the money why not spend yep, it? Rolling down. All right, we got we got the Lulu, we the got Garen. the Garen, and we want that. Oh, we got the Gwen pair. This All is right. an insane pivot. The amount of this economy has like swung up and down in the last twenty seconds is insane. Like this is fortunate that this is high level TFT at its finest, though. Like any ca casual players will not make these moves because there's such a mental preparedness you have to do really quickly within between these rounds to swap all of that out and still know what you're playing that that's just that's definitely player diff right right there oh absolutely absolutely and another another uh, really smart thing that he did there is and this is something that i'll even catch myself doing is you obviously had the ability to uh zephyr either the the heimadigger or the karma but he chose yeah. to Zephyr the front line so his Karma could get the damage on the back line even faster. Because sometimes with Karma, what will happen is um, you'll Zephyr, you know, a carry unit, and that'll actually just save them from taking the damage that they, you know, would have taken otherwise. 
he wants the two star Gwen. You can see him thinking about it. Like, do I sell something to get the two star Gwen in? Because he can buy yeah. it. It's in the shop. Yeah, I honestly think the correct play here is to sell the Sejuani yeah. and replace. But, you know, again, the player diff. He might also want the Volley Bear. I don't know if he wants to pick that up because it's in his shop. I think he's still thinking about that one because he is a small volley, of course. So he yeah. doesn't have to. Yeah. Right? We, we do love the small volley. Yeah. The, the, the smallie? Is that what you call them? The smallie. I've never heard that one, but I'm going to start calling it that. With double L, you know, S M O L L. Small. Bear. Small. Yeah. Small bean. Right the there. No. The, no, this board, that, that upgraded Gwen, you know, it's, it's just shredded yeah. through. You know, it really And is. it seems like the yeah, name of this game. Yeah, it seems like the name of this game is up. Who can have the strongest upgraded Garen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though the strongest upgrade grade Garen didn't win that scenario. So, yeah, it's uh, unfortunate. Uh, Rengar, by the way, got that uh, other top four spot. So he's the, the last one that went out in that, situa that situation. Fabulotus, first game, he's not in the top two. Got yeah. number fifth, this one. But let's look at how these last fights play out. Someone's going to get the shadow play. Someone's going to get to play against the clone version. But uh, yeah, I mean, Brabba currently on a, on a win streak, five win streak. You can see why with that board. Got the two-star Gwen, got the two-star Garen, the Karma with the blue buff, the Heimerdinger in the back line. This is just a uh, a buff comp. That Lux kind of stands out as a, as a sore spot. You know, the one-star Lux. He's got the two-star in the shop, but he doesn't have the gold. It, uh, it'll yeah. happen for him. Yeah, and at that point, He's it's really just filling down. in that four Mystic, uh, yeah. that four Mystic buff. And also, one thing I want to point out, Blue buff is dominating this lobby, right? It really right is. Right now, it's a, yeah. it's a battle of who has more Garens, who has more blue buffs. And uh, well, actually, it seems like I am absolutely wrong. This, this, yeah, this Teemo is not enough. Losing. Yeah. Unless. 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 No. 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 Maybe. Nah. Unfortunate. Uh, that was close, though. That would have been fun if you get the Teemo, the Teemo dragging him back to hell. But yep. uh, couldn't come out in the end. Oh, there's another so, Gwen and another Garen in the carousel. Well, did Gwen's he get the Gwen upgrade off that? He... I... Did he? Was he playing I Gwen? Don't think so. I don't think so. I think they both already had a two-star, but I'm not entirely sure. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. It's just for the gold in that situation. Yeah, no, he doesn't. And the, uh, and the Shroud. But he, got, he does get the, the two... Yeah, and he, and he, did, he did get the two-star uh, Lux, of course, because we're already, already in his locked shop. Uh, yeah, he, he doesn't really have any upgrades left to give. Uh, the Shroud can go on the summon. I mean, he could swap in a Garen, but I don't think I don't know what he would swap out. Can't go to nine. Uh, just push it, position your Shroud correctly. That's what. That's all he has to do. Yeah, that's uh, the only angle he really has to play. He's gonna play it right. He's gonna he's gonna use the yeah. Shroud. <laughs> Unless you're me, then you forget every single time. Oh, he, he was just he, looking at where were the enemy units positions. Yeah. Yep. No, smart move. Yeah, you typically always want to save that to the last minute just in case you do get uh you know repositioned on yeah so you get you can't get counter positioned exactly because it's, it's easier to put on an item than to swap a unit um exactly Ooh, fair, another on. close Dragon fight this dragon boy there's the turret well, does it seems like the b it is a bt diff in this scenario right the uh the teemo does come through you know bloodthirster giving you that extra little shield uh Nox, little rub turret, it down though. a couple notches. That little turret. It stayed alive for it's, a lot longer than it had any business to. Yeah, so we have essentially, potentially one fight left. So it's really going to come down to positioning. Um, radiant items, right? You got all right, Gwen ones, you know. Or Radiant, Thieves Glove items. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. I'm excited. Two more games. I do like the cost. And it's already already ramping up so hard this one. I'm 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 yeah. all for it. I really like the conscious decision to keep the Gwen on the back line to keep that uh that damage reduction buff. Because right, as despite, you know, in the the karma matchup, you don't want to be clumped up due to the potential for more karma spells to come back your way. You do at least yeah. have that damage reduction coming from Gwen's uh pool. So definitely helps. Um avoid uh what i'll call the american sniper karma that just targets your own backline but again yep. you know doesn't seem to help too much and uh the teemo with the bt bringing it home 
Yeah, we love skip that. Getting the, skip getting the dub. And of course, uh, Skip Ayers wasn't on first, but definitely will be now. What a uh, what a first game that we got right there. Yeah. The blue buff starts. I mean, we were I was questioning it. You said, nah, it's fine. It's hey. going to work out. And hey. guess what? It definitely hey. worked very well. It's all about the blue buff. <laughs> it's all you about know? the blue buff. And then the radio you know, blue buffs came out and the death caps. It was uh, it was a great yeah. round for sure. I'm uh, I'm so impressed with these players are being put up. And of course, we still have two more rounds to play, but gonna have a score update for you right now because of course skip Bayes, winning that lobby gets all the way up to first 33 points ttv brubba also doing a great job in that game 31 right now and our player that had done consistently the best over the rest of the day in terms of getting uh, top twos fabulotus is now on third 29 points so uh those are the top three right now and the fourth player that is currently in the money is Resdrito, together with Harry Frog, both on 25 points. Getting here the overview. Still have a few other players in the lobby, of course. Tuyan, Rengar, Botbot, and a TSM Ak. Uh, Rengar actually making a decent, decent start to a comeback right there with yeah. that uh, fifth place that they got. I think it was the fourth place. Um, but they do need a little bit more to start getting up on that uh, on that scoreboard. And the best thing that can happen for someone like Rengar is for um, the top players to get about a mid placement himself, getting on top, and then uh, everyone that's below him getting like you know the top placements yeah. as well. Because of course you want the top players to get less points, and you want to close that gap. Uh, but so far, top players have consistently been performing. That's why they are the top players. They're known for their consistency. Everyone. Uh, they're gonna probably keep that up in the coming rounds, but anything can happen. It's TFT after all. Yeah. No, I mean I'm pretty confident that Skip maintains uh, a relatively high placement. You know, right? They've uh, they've been pretty dominant throughout the entire day. You know, yeah. playing strongest board, uh, always pivoting. You know, never over committing to one thing or the other. Uh, same thing with I mean Brova too. Brova's been playing a great uh, great set of games today, but. Uh, I'm excited to see what uh, some of these, you know, bottom four players do because now you have to play a little bit riskier, even with the safe, uh, or not, I won't say the safe, but the more consistent favoring uh, point system that we have today definitely requires some uh, first or eighth plays and, you know, those definitely bring some of the best games in my opinion. Yeah, and uh, when we look at this, uh, when we look at this current lobby, you know, all these players, they have such a, a capacity to play all these different types of comps. Uh, but now they're really pivoting towards these, you know, the backline bursters, you know, the Karmas, mm -hmm. the Lucians, the, uh, uh, we, see, we see the Heimerdingers come out. You know, that's really what's been favored over the last few rounds. And then they're consistently able to put these five cost units in front of them, right, as well. We have the Garens, the Gwens coming in the way. That was really what that whole last lobby was about. Who got the best Gen Gwens, Garens, and, you know, then that backline unit that helped them out. Um, and so far, you know, that's not necessarily been something we've seen in the other lobbies. It came out a little bit more towards the end of the first three games, but it's not been a tournament meta yet, but we might get there. This might be the place where we go to the tournament meta and it's going to all be about the blue buffs and the Gwens and the Karma and the Karmas and the, the, the Garens, and the, the Heimerdingers and the Teemos. So yeah, it no, be it, it's been interesting to see even like this small uh, tournament meta shift, right? You saw a lot yeah. of Draven. You saw a lot of uh, like Lucian. Now we're seeing Karma. Um, the past two games, so it'll be interesting to see if you know the Chug Bug comes back out. You know, I'm I'm banking on it. I'm I'm putting all my money in the Chug Bug, and unfortunately, nobody else has that stock. But you know, I I, yeah. I, I have faith that these players will uh, not disappoint me. You know. But no, great games, great games. No, for sure, for sure. I'm really, uh, you know, I, I just want to see more. I just want to see more games. And luckily, we're going to get more games, namely two more, before we know who's actually going to come out on top of this one. Uh, still playing for the 300 euro prize pool. First place gets 100, then it's 75, 50, and 25, respectively. So you still want to get in that top four to get at least in the money. And not every player is there yet, because of course we've got eight. So we'll see who uh, ends up in the end. For now, we're going to go into lobby two. Carousel is starting. Let's see what everybody picks up. Ooh, so we we get our first Mort Dog Carousel of the day. A lot of uh, a lot of bows, a lot of swords, a lot of AP. So we don't get to we don't get to deny uh, a cloak from being picked this time around. No, definitely do not. And. Uh... 
you know, looking at a little bit of, you know, you can always look at a little bit of player history, right? Like, what do players favor? What have they run recently? What's their, um, you know, what's uh, what's their preferred style when they play ranked? Because obviously, tournaments a little bit different from ranked. Uh, yep. And a lot of the time, we Ooh. look at a player like like Skipace, for instance. They really Ooh. like their tanky tankiness. They like their knights. They like their ironclads, uh, and they combine it with Invoker a lot of the time. And yeah, it, you know, they could do the same thing. Right now, we're looking at Skipace starting out right. with a very more than decent start here. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Suyan, same thing. Great. Great start, you know. D double, uh, double Lee Sin. If that other Lee Sin comes out, decides oh. to make the gold, you know, smart play. Yeah. Definitely I mean, a smart he, play. It could just stuck up on Hellions if he wants to, but it's not going to. Mm -hmm. He's just gonna keep the Cleds. I mean, the Cleds are fine. They're not gonna lose against the units. Um, does throw a Thrash on it, which is, of course a nice combination. And the Vein. There we go. Might actually go for the Vein crit early on. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, getting that free stack, getting a couple extra AD, a couple extra AP, right? If you're in a position where you end up wanting the loss streak, you know, maximize your econ. Um, definitely a good decision, right? Skip also may lean back into that, uh, that, uh, that Cavalier board that we saw him open up with the last time, the Cavalier Knight board. Gets the Hellions, does get the Knights as well. So, very strong opener. Now we're just missing the Cap, the Cavaliers. So, yeah, gets to pre-level, maintains gold, has already, by the end of this round, we've already made three extra gold, probably ahead of everybody else, assuming nobody else got that gold start. So, it's definitely going to be uh, one of the richer people in the lobby for at least the for next two turns, or next two stages, rather. Yeah, let's see Let's see what happens in the first play every player rounds, right? Like, let's see who's, uh, who's starting off strong, who, uh, who's not, because, of course, we, don't have, we haven't seen all the boards just yet. That uh, we'll be seeing here is that night ma night matchup. A little bit of that legionnaire in the background for uh, ooh, that's actually yeah. the skirmisher coming out. Of the doing pretty well. Oh, this is might you be know, a win for uh, Vanguard. This one, I think he's gonna yeah, get out of this because he's got too much. Unfortunately, uh, the little the little baby could could not uh, pull out the clutch, but you know a one unit loss right there, not bad. You know, we take no. It's every fine. Single it just it just shows that that early game comp is not uh, not it's not not necessarily the I'm gonna streak for 50 rounds comp just yet. Like yeah. it, it needed a little bit more. Uh, that Nidalee was just a bit too a bit too tanky. As skirmishes are, that fight goes on for too long. But um, yeah. not lost by any means. Of course, not not lost. No, not at all. And Rengar is actually in a pretty unique position. You know, a lot of different angles that they could go, right? You have that upgraded Vlad. You had the uh, opportunity to play uh, Yasuo with those items, but decides to opt in for the last Whisper Slam. So, um, interesting to see how they go. Got the three Renewers on the board, the two Dawn. Should be a fairly tanky board that uh, gets to, you know, sustain while Nidalee just, you know, does Nidalee things and dodges in the back line. Nidalee thinks she does. So she goes straight away onto that Lee Sin with that last whisper. Straight through the shields. Well, oh, unfortunately, he does have. Yeah, unfortunately, he does have that uh, that last whisper. So Nidalee is not able to dodge any of his attacks, but I think the rest of his board will come through with a uh, pretty healthy clutch. Not at all worried about that one. Rengar is going on a streak here, together with uh, Fabio Lotus and Restrito so far. So we'll see whether they're uh, like who's going to be the one standing at the end. Maybe they'll all drop. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Rengar, Rengar currently in a good spot. Has a very healthy bench as well. With a lot of uh, ability to pivot and add to his board. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's in a, yeah, he's really in a great spot. Of course, got uh, got a nice place in the last round. But looking for a little bit more of this one. Yeah, and it, it's I'm, I'm curious to see if uh, Rengar decides to double level here to really ensure the win streak, considering there are two other people um, at 100 HP. And Fabio Lotus also does not double level, but albeit his board is not very strong, does not really tend to a win streak despite his current position. So it makes sense that he does not go for that early uh, level five. A lot of one star units to upgrade on both of their sides. So, you know, definitely the correct play to, you know, not hit that double level and just try and streak out, you know, low levels as much as possible to maximize your odds of hitting those upgrades. 
Th those last whispers are really coming out in uh, in force today. It's uh, it, it might be the item that that was the blue buff last round. And this time around, mm -hmm. we're going to see the last whispers come back from everybody. It'll be mm -hmm. interesting to see what boards start to shape up. Uh, yeah, what items they pick up is going to make a big uh, decision towards that as well. So that's going to dictate a lot of where they want to go item wise, which then again translates a lot into what type of tree they're running. Rangar, no There's more options see. left. Another glove, another wanted, bow, another bow is interesting. He wanted the gloves. You can see he wanted the gloves. He's going to get the bow instead. Um, mm. No this upgrades, unfortunately. <laughs> this is, uh, like I had mentioned earlier, uh, my favorite spot to be in. You know, I, I love not upgrading my units. It was something that doesn't happen to me enough. You know, I, I love to sit with two pairs all around, all across the board. Interesting that he values the A bomb over. Uh, I'm I'm some not of those sure items. if sarcasm or not. That's my reaction to that, by the way. I hate it. You know, this is my yeah. least favorite spot to be in in the game. <laughs> okay, okay, just making sure. I was like, mm, you know, I don't think <laughs> you want that. <laughs> no, it's it's the it's the most frustrating thing, especially when you see someone with a two star recon. You know, a two star three cost unit, level five. Nine gold invested in one unit. That's like the cost of his entire board. Those were but, the days, you know. The, 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 was the day the days when I was like, you know, trying to one trick one comp, and then someone uh, would just get everything that I wanted, and they weren't even playing it right. And you're like, oh come on, you don't, you don't even know what to do with these units. Just give them to me. But that's not how the game works, <laughs> unfortunately. It's not how it is. Yeah, and we're um, still not seeing the I mean, upgrades imagine, come through. This is super imagine important. If they start, imagine if they start adding that to the game, right? Where you can trade units with someone else. For like, you know, you can trade one unit for the other, or you can buy them with gold or something. Then then that game takes another turn, but then you do need some more time between rounds, otherwise you don't have the time yeah. to make the decision, I guess. So we do have the uh, the duo mode coming in, and you know, who knows? Yeah. Maybe that's a mechanic Maybe that happens. I know that... It. Yeah. yeah. They, uh, they did mention uh, the ability to essentially give your partner items as like mm. i think like an armory-esque uh feature so who knows we might see uh you know the ability to you know maybe sell your teammate a, a, a unit at a higher cost just to kind of balance that out yeah because the question becomes in general how that works i mean of course we have to wait until the patch drops before we can actually uh, have a proper look at it or before we get some proper announcements for it maybe we'll see something during worlds they demo it or something we'll see yep Right now, though, yeah. going to be looking at, uh, at what Regnar is building up. It's definitely making some uh, some ways. Already got the abomination up, of, of course. Uh, and I do think that, that, that Nidalee is is holding that item for someone. I, I don't think that's that's her her item to hold. I'm just trying to try to figure out where he's going to go because he he does have the two Dawnbringer at the moment and the two Brawler and the three A bombs. So it does make sense to have the Nidalee there but i don't think that's the the end goal yeah i think right now the interim play is if a uh the riven comes across you play the riven and then this just yeah. becomes a um draven board like we saw mm -hmm. seen earlier we do see the riven come across does become the riven we start to finally get the upgrades you know it's it's coming together it's coming together it's been a long time coming you know we're holding all these pairs for a reason but uh you know a healthy spot there's an argument oh. to drop that. Play the, uh... Yep, okay, yeah, I agree with all this. Cavalier. And then at 6, we put in the Thresh. And yeah, great spot. Go 7 as fast as possible, level 7, and um, look for that Draven. Yeah, should be going 6 soon already anyways. Yeah, yeah, next turn it will be 6. We'll most likely put in the Thresh. So we have that uh, Forgotten bonus, as well as just Thresh in general, right? Getting that, yeah, that background thresh, reach, that thresh, thresh, you know, thresh period. That's all you need to know. Yeah, don't even need um, synergies to play them. Is is now is now getting wrecked a little bit by the A bomb they just threw away themselves. But hey, you know, got got the health to work with. It's fine. It's just the street toe things. Um, Curly Harry Frog though came in yeah. at uh, it kind of, it's kind of peaking at the right time, I'd say. Came in just in time to get into that top eight, and it's now just. Uh, showing up really well in this lobby didn't do amazingly in the last one as far as i can remember uh you know that um that second uh, that, that first lobby of the top three of the top eight they get six there but it's at least a sort of a consistent uh 
actually, no, he got third, I think. Yeah, sorry, he got third. Um, oh, so we get the okay. Jackson, we get the Ironclad, we get the Knights. Big pivot, pivot. humongous yeah. pivot, actually. I'm a huge fan of uh, Jax builds, you know, the Fortnite Jax. Yeah. Great, great build. It does not do that well when it is just in the belly of the Nunu, though. Yeah, just, uh, yeah. you know, we need a snack. And what's better than a snack in a can? <laughs> yeah, literally, literally. Full suit of armor, yeah. you know, Nunu I'm eats glad. it like uh, Thanksgiving dinner. Just pops it open and squeezes out the jacks inside. And that's why the helmet Added. is up, right? It can just... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, everybody! Everybody gets jacks. You get a jacks. You get a jacks. Everybody I'm sure that there's another jacks on somebody's board. I don't. The thing is, while I like jacks as a unit, I've been a very big skirmisher proponent. It's just not as good anymore because it's so hard to find the time in a fight to have jacks properly ramp up. Like it just. I, I would love it if this is like the round where everyone tries to build jacks, just like the last yeah. round was where everyone used the blue buffs, the Gwens, and the Garens. Like, it's great, don't get me wrong, and he's got the Skirmisher up, but without Skirmisher 6, it's just not gonna work. It's not gonna do enough. And yep, you don't like I said, there yet, but it has to come up. Like I said, you know, more jacks is on the board. You know, everybody gets a jacks. Oprah, Oprah is handing out four costs today, and it's all jacks. Yeah. Um, one, one tip. You know, so there's a, uh, a streamer, community member named TFT Ren. He actually wrote a guide um, a couple, like about a month and a half ago for the Fortnite Jax comp. And one thing that really helps is playing your Jax on the same side as say a Nautilus, as well as backlining your Jax. So the fight yeah. starts, it get, groups around the, uh, the front line, and then your Jax comes in essentially uninterrupted, ideally. And, uh, you know, allows you to ramp up. So, you know, a little pro tip there. And, and a fantastic and, guy, and, by the way. And and of course, if you, uh, you know, unless there's an assassin uh, comp in the game, backlining doesn't do any harm. You know, like no. if there's an assassin comp, you might want to build him in a little bit so he can't get back, you know, backstabbed either. But generally speaking, you know, assassins haven't really been shown up today. So you could be very confident as well as you, if you scout a little bit your jacks in the back line is going to do pretty well um this complete lineup by just like putting them next to each other is probably not as good for a jacks but so it's got a lot of other units around it i think he'll be fine it's just not yeah. optimal just yet. actually so this is probably one of the better positions that you can have and you know it doesn't seem that way and i i used to not do this either but when you're playing skirmishers right the trait gives you more attack damage over time over time right so when you position in the second uh from the back row you get an, an extra half second second to ramp up ad as well as a sentinel buff gives more time to trade amongst the units because now instead of one unit taking all the damage because it's on the right side or the left side more units are getting hit at once so you theoretically get more of that sentinel shield bouncing between and providing more sustain giving more attack speed across the team so um, stage two, first half into like sometimes by the end of stage three, great item or great positioning. But once you get into stage four, it falls off because the damage is just so massive that it doesn't make a significant difference. Who is going to get irradiated and by what? This is a really tough choice. Like all these items have merit in their own rights for what you want to put up here. Yep. Um, of course, he's already got the Thief Gloss on the Nidalee, so he doesn't have to worry about her. But either a Bloodthirster, maybe the Whisper, but probably the Bloodthirster would be the way to go. Uh, depending on who you want to put it on. Like if you want to make Jax that carry, I would say give the Bloodthirster to him right now. Just do it, slam it down and you're done. But yeah. I don't know. I think he's, he's still a little bit of doubt whether that Skirmisher is going to work out. So he's going to put it on Olaf for now. Because I think he's going to go somewhere else. He wants to go into a different direction. Yeah, I think it's ultimately going to come down to if he ends up getting a crit glove here. If he gets a crit glove here, he can play the jacks pretty confidently, um, yeah. right? Because one of the key down or one of the big downfalls to playing jacks is as soon as Ironclad gets in and you don't have that last whisper, it becomes very difficult to play. But if he gets an AP, he has a fantastic, you know, Lucian Aphelios thing. Yeah, because I, I think I think what he's also really struggling with, he's been scouting boards. You know, he's seen the other players. He knows jacks is, jacks are being thrown around everywhere. So that also means that there aren't a lot of jacks in the in the shop, which means two starring his jacks might already be a struggle in and of itself. 
which could be a reason not to pursue this Jack, uh, Jack Skirmisher comp as much as you know you might might have thought he was going to. Um, that being said, it does look like with all this pivoting right now, Jax might be out anyways. But he's looking for the Six Sentinel, which he's found. But he's left yeah, like, all his items on the on the board. And I think the Six Sentinel is a great idea. You know, the Six Sentinel is such a strong mid-game board that, mm. you know, stage four, it, it's almost always, you know, gonna stabilize you to an extent. Does end up going through with the rolls. Well, well, I mean, yes, yeah, you have the gold to do it. it okay, oh. yeah, we take that too. You know, I, I'm not too it. picky. I'm not too oh. picky. No, it's but, not for two. Yeah, we'll take that, you know? This is going in a good direction. Like, he, he What is going on here? Sure. Who gets everything he needs, throws out the knight, extra armor, let's go. This is a beautiful board right now. Like, all of a sudden, he doesn't even need Jax anymore. Just go with this. Yeah. Yeah, no. You get you get a cloak, you get a cloak or a, 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 a rod, and you you know you basically get to get the a free top two. Uh, you thought that monster oh, was going to get to him? He just swings around. There we go. He's almost got. If he gets a Nikos, this is done. Like if he gets a Nikos, I'm just I'm just out. You know. It's yeah, fine. people. Leave. Yeah, I'm out. I'm. There you get, he gets the, the Nikos. Wow, I had You're to call it. I'm by sorry. Yourself. I'm sorry. No, I was out. You were you were gonna. Uh, we're just gonna. I, okay, uh, cams are off. It's fine. Yeah. Sven, you can turn the cams off. We're out. Uh, everyone's just gonna gonna enjoy yeah. it now. <laughs> Turn his audio on. He can just cast yeah, the rest of this he game. He can just cast himself. Yeah. If I am every player in this lobby, I am. I'm hot. I am I'm hot. I'm angry. I'm just pissed. Yeah. Wow. But you know, look I can't be mad at him. He still got on. Look at the yeah, items he still just got on his bench. He just like, he threw everything away. He just made a new comp and it yeah. just, you know, gets three Sentinel, gets the two star. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, just, just take a sip. Take a sip. He, you know, he's not sweating. Yep. MIA pings come in. Five cost. Uh, th or two, two star five cost. Four two. Just uh, just normal things. Does it end yeah. up opting for that Titan's angle as the last item? Pretty confident that he's gonna get a cloak. Look, it's a different iteration of spin to win, but I'm all for it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's the Tarzan version. You know, he gets to swing yeah, around. Still spinning. <laughs> It's swing to win. That's swing to win. Yeah. Don't need a don't need a thing if you ain't got that swing. Yeah, it really doesn't. And dude, if, the and he's gonna get away with it too because he got the bloodthirster. So by the time they yeah, get to him and they damage him twice, he flies away, heals himself back up, and they can go again. Yeah, it's it's the perfect combination of uh, uh, of well bye and um, sucking the life out of you in more than ways than one. It's yeah. Uh, yeah that's a. Uh, that's a depressing. That's a depressing board to come across. It's like, come it on, it really man. is. Yeah, and he's, he's still really? he's still got a nice amount of gold as well. He's just gonna get top uh, fifty plus again after this. He's got the ivory in the back. Say he's getting he gets an ivory and a, and a volley bear on this board. He's just done. He's just, he's just won the game before it even started. Yeah. Um, and it's looking it's looking like Rengar bot right now. I uh, just took a look at his board and he actually has yeah. found his jacks. Um, so he's fully upgraded too. So, you know, we're getting some pretty strong boards already shaping up uh, stage four. I think people are going to start dropping like flies, if I'm being honest with you. They really are. You know? But Reng Rengar is on 23 HP, though. So he's one of those low ones. Uh, we have we have Brava still being very high and low, of course. We both skip and um, they might actually yeah. be starting to pull this whole lobby back together a little bit because mm -hmm. the bottom yeah. two have strong boards right now and they're pulling back like everyone that's on top of them. So everything's gonna mm -hmm. get very close together and then we're gonna get back back, back into one of those. Everyone is, is like at most 10 HP apart from each other finishes. Um, yeah. What is Brother yeah, gonna I mean, get for an item though? Cause he's, he's got two bows on his board right now. He, had he gets a, you know, a cloak. Tier. Yeah, he gets a cloak and he-, and he Yeah, cause he's wanting to make a Runance. Yeah, of course. Yep. It seems like uh, oh, he may he have. Uh, it. He steals it from Lotus. Lotus won on it. He's not gonna get it. Yeah, it looks like uh, we we might have to dig into the logs here a little bit because there there seems to be uh, somebody that needs to check PayPal. They let him have that. He's already got it. Or maybe they are just like, you know what? It doesn't matter at this point. You know, he's got his two star action. Oh, let's just let him get BIS. Uh, that's a fun Viego coming up. Though. Oh yeah. Plus, plus the uh, he's gonna look for which unit he's gonna attack. Oh yeah, he's a. He wants that. He's, look, looking, he's looking to, uh, you know, 
He's looking. Find the uh find the soft spot. Oh, he puts him on the left still. That's interesting. Yeah. Ends up paying out. That is a free Yasuo. That is uh that's tasty. You know, we take that. Yeah, you want him. You want him really badly. Oh, he's gonna do so off. much damage to Suyan. Yeah, Suyan's not able to kill anything. No, because the Yasuo is just disabled permanently. Can't play the game. Blue buff. Just literally cannot play the game. He's sucked him up. Like a Slurpee. Go right there. Oh man. Rengar, yeah. what a uh, what a big brain play. He just puts those items on it and just says, well, this is going to be a huge ability to come back. It's basically a perma Zephyrus. That's just what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, you just constantly throw yeah. your weapon up in the air. And as long as no one turns on that Viego, because someone else needs to turn on that Viego, he's just going to yeah. get away with it every single time. So yeah, that is one of the strong... That is, that is required. Absolutely. And that's one of the strong uh, iterations of that, or of the four Legion Air um, Yasuo board that you will see is that uh right you have a lot of backline to you know you know pick this up. Yeah. yeah it's it's um it's something that you know i it definitely makes more sense the more and more i see it played it just it wasn't something that i was picking up initially well unfortunately his uh He's Jax doesn't really get to play the game Viego's yeah. looking to save a little bit of HP, but it doesn't look like anything's going to come through. And now Rengar He's, is uh, Viego one life able too much. He didn't. He didn't get the first unit yeah. that he wanted, and then he got disabled because he went into the center. That's unfortunate. Uh, it does happen to Viego a lot, though. Like if he doesn't get the right, he, he wasn't really looking at his position anymore for that round. I think mm -hmm. he, he looked at the other boards, and this was just the one board where the positioning didn't work out because uh, he went after a Senna first, which is in general not really the greatest first target to go on. Yeah, definitely not uh, ideal. We'll see. We'll see what he gets. I mean, he's still he's still alive. He's still in the running, but it is definitely he, he has no room for error anymore. Like any loss he takes, he will just go out. Like eight HP is just not going to cut it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. I mean, it's down to the wire. He's basically at this point with that loss coming through. He's playing for not eighth. Uh, yeah. Last whisper, you know, does nothing for him here. Unfortunately, nope, no. Nope. I mean, he can he can make one anyways, just to be like I, I you know, yeah, just to have it. it. Uh, and he does put a Diana in. Oh, it was a Volley Bear, not a Viego, maybe? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Like, he, he needs to he needs to be able to put something in in order for it to really matter. Yeah, the only other thing that he could do is rather than play that crit, which is, you know, pretty good, considering he does have basically the instant cast Viego. Um, but rather than oh, play that crit... Calio bit. Oh, this is a different setup. Oh, he didn't quite get his Viego in the back, but it doesn't really matter. He's, he's still going to drop. No, straight onto uh, Akon. Get a 50% chance to, uh, of grabbing the action. Doesn't grab it, but he at least does grab something. And it does He's complete, got, yeah. so, you know. Another unit on the Julio's. board. And if that affiliates lives for a little bit longer, it's going to take the action swing rather than let it focus on one of his carries. Wait, yeah, Grubba so actually so might so lose this. So, we, oh, that Jack. Uh, oh, no. no, he doesn't the have The action it. is just nope. too strong. I mean, a death blade, death blade, one hundred thirty is just too much at that stage. Like, you need something with a little yeah. bit more tankiness, and the combination of that plus the just swing around so he hits everything is um, not going to go well for a lot of people that go up against that. One HP, he did survive that. We were wrong. We thought he's not going to get it, but of course, yeah. if you lose against that one unit, you don't lose as much HP. But this is really the last one. I mean, you can't lose with zero HP lost. So no, I mean, unless. Uh... Yeah, no, no, there's nothing he can do. You know, he's nope. gotta, he's gotta maximize these last couple rounds, and he's unfortunately, go Heimer Dinger that Viego, at least he's gonna get the Heimer position. out of the way, but it's, uh, he's definitely gonna get that one. That's not, unless it's get interrupted, but it doesn't look like that's gonna be oh. the case. His he's Jack starts to walk into a great position. You know, avoids a lot of that, uh, that initial burst, getting that ramp up. Though that Lulu can pose a threat here if it's not dealt with quickly. It's dealt. Okay, yeah, it's gone. There he goes. He wins that round. Just Saves there, not eighth. Suyan ends up taking the eighth. That really does not benefit their uh, their ability to it make it into the money. Not. No, Suyan was on six before this, twenty four yep. points. Now he's going to be on twenty five points, and uh, not necessarily on eighth just yet. That's still uh, TSM act, just not doing great. But he's a lot higher in this lobby. Not going to make up that many points, though. I don't think. Um, yeah, Rengar though. Rengar kind of wants to do a little bit better in this lobby. He wants to get up there because he doesn't want to. He wants to. He wants to keep that gap close-ish. You know, maybe even closer. Mm -hmm. uh, but he really. I mean, he, he has to keep winning these rounds. 
He just has yeah. to. Uh, that Viego is going to jump straight onto that middle E. He's going to take that. Oh, great that positioning. Trouble. Great positioning. I actually think that this fight does go in favor of uh, okay, Rengar Box. He gets the Jax. Gets the Jax. You know, it does get Not pulled fully. off. Not fully. But it's he enough to stop down. some of the ramp up. So at this his point, Jax is still ramping. It's the exact same Jax. Like it's, yep. a, it's a complete Jack mirror. Yep. But because yep, Jax right. got disabled, he did get that ramp up, and he's got the he got, he got the Hyper Sky Skirmisher buff as well. So that just kept on going. Yep. And then prior to this loss, Fabulous was sitting in third. So you know, not a big fan of that seventh there. Uh, again, you know, it's doing exactly like we had said, right? You need some of the bottom players to uh, top four, and you need some of the top players to bottom four. So, yeah, you know, I mean, definitely changing up the uh, how we uh, go into this last round. Yeah, and Fabulotus basically did very well in the first three lobbies, but is really dropping off now. Got a fifth place, now got a seventh place. This is not, uh, not where he wants to be at all. Uh, it is a situation in which Ren Rengar, he, he does need to not lose two lobbies in a row for anyone yeah. to even potentially go out. Um, but did get the Garen upgrade, which is always a nice one to get. Meanwhile, at the top, we still have Brabba, you know, just, just sitting there with 53 HP, plenty to work with. Harry Frog dropping down a little bit lot more. It's on 16 at the moment, so could go out yep. in, a, in a round or two. Brabba, unfortunately, the Diego combo is doing very well. Like, I'm liking this. Of course, it's something I've run a lot as a skirmisher, you know, enthusiast mm -hmm. in the past um not it's not quite the same as it used to be of course you know you, you put in a lot more uh, knights than you used to yeah but it is uh it's still a fun one but zephyr doing a lot against that galio that's a lot of frontline uh distraction gone in the beginning but yep. uh, diana with the switch really working out really well that viego gets to do whatever he wants and he's just gonna take braba out yeah number it's amazing that he takes six. braba out here and you know it, it was Funny enough, we had just talked about that Jax positioning and yeah. uh, exactly why you want to do that. So another thing that helped him out immensely here is typically, right, you're going to play that Jax, you know, very standard, we're thinking set five skirmishers. You're going to play that Jax right behind that Nautilus, right, in that, yeah. in that position on either side. He would have been yeah. hooked by the Thresh if, so he, did, if he did that. Because that but, Galio wasn't in the way. He was, he was thrown up in the air. Yeah, so what happened was he walked back, that Thresh walked up, but not nearly as far as the uh, Jax would have. And so the Thresh took the Thresh hook. So that's why, you know, this backline positioning is so key. Like all the fight settles, this Jax is able to just walk up. You know, if there's somebody that does target him, the Galio pulls it off. You know, this is, I mean, this is perfect, you know, you know, to a T Jax positioning. Unfortunately, yeah, but unfortunately the two star actions, are uh, a little too a little too much to deal action. with. He and the thing is, he was on it. He had this Viego correctly, but mm -hmm. before the Viego was even close to pulling up his ultimate, yeah. there goes action just flying away, swinging away, swing the win, and you just never catch him. You see, you just never see him anymore until he put it puts his crossbow in your face. Yep. Um, unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, he did really well until up until that point. Of course, gets out on fifth yeah. place a lot better than we thought because we were saying, of course, yeah. he wasn't play, he was playing for not eighth almost got top four with that so uh yeah no good clap up right good there play. now we have top four left we have uh braba <laughs> skip is um restrito oh, and TSM. those items kk beautiful yeah, items those right items there. for restrico Restri oh. but yeah no i i think that uh you know with those uh with those items that rest Restro is looking at, you know, with the two two star action boards, this is actually kind of anybody's game. Um, it's, really you know, one of those yeah. things that it's kind of going to be hard. You know, I thought Broba had it, but he's lost two rounds. Um, you know, he has a strong ability to win. He has the best in slot action, but, yeah. you know, other people have some very, very, very strong boards. So it's uh, yeah. going to be a little bit of a nervous one. Look right here at, so, uh, at Bravo's board right now. You can yeah. see it straight away. I mean, as soon as that two-star uh, action came on, we were just worried for everyone else, and I think it's only gotten mm -hmm. worse. Like, it, 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 nothing has really changed in that regard. Uh, it's still a super strong unit. Doesn't even have to worry about any assassins anymore because no one else is playing them. So he can just build it in on the back line, just swapping around, seeing what everyone else is doing. And Bravo's been playing some amazing TFT these last couple of rounds. Yeah, and I really like his decision to put the Galio in the backline because what's ultimately going to happen is once that uh, 
Once that action swings around, if that Galio gets a cast off, it's going to pull him off. Uh, does not get the cast off, but in theory, it would pull him off that, uh, that Aphelios and allow him to do a little and, bit more. And that's like the sad part, right? Like he had a beautiful action build, but someone else got the exact same action build and just swings oh. a little bit better. Almost no, they, I, I, better. Think, no. I think that there's the one, one that there. is, uh, yeah, that, that blood Bloodthirster there. paying dividends. The copy didn't win it. He was there first, oh. and he's going to stay there first. Yep. Still, everyone in live, the lobby, Skip Ace, and TSM Ak are do have the high possibility of going out on this one. They're not going to get to yep. play against each other, so both of them are going to face either Estrito or uh, Brubba. So the Akshans are probably going to be one and two on this one. Let's see if they do. Going for the full well. capped board the Revenant Rangers, yeah. the Five Cost Knights, the Gwen. Getting it all. Three star at, three star Aphelio angle. That's just beautiful. Like on the left on your of your screen. Oh, it's gone. He just he had like f seven traits activated and now it's only five. Unfortunately. That's just you know, only five traits. Nothing nothing to stop <laughs> that, of course, but only five traits. Gonna get what are those Glen items? Win. This guy this guy's paying somebody. He, he's, he gets because everything. Mm -hmm. He's getting everything. Yeah. I mean, look, we could say it's up to us making custom lobbies, but there are no custom lobbies, so it's just yeah. happening. Like we, we can't do anything about this. He needs to buy a lottery ticket. Luckiest yeah. guy in TFT. Lucky this guy right now. He's got a scratcher. 20k, easy. Oh, he's get, he's hitting upgrades. Okay, you know what? I, I'll I'll uh, excuse this low roll on the Gwen items. We're we're calling it. We're calling it. Ah, <laughs> uh, no more upgrades, unfortunately. So looking for that Aphelios, he really wants to just top this board off. Okay, he's given up. Boom, that's an upgraded bear. Curious as to why he didn't sell the uh, the spare action. Nobody's looking for that that last upgrade. But great positioning again. The bear should uh, disable a lot and break a lot of trap claws, so will help a lot for when this Aphelios eventually casts. Ooh, does not get the, oh it did get the cast off yeah that took out the Lucian yeah and it you know gets a great fight for him to to play back into right and it, I mean this this right here secures the first I mean you you get a, a upgrade of five cost perfect items four two you're probably gonna win the lobby you're probably gonna win the lobby yeah, and, I mean you know, I still Roma I still, brings it home I still cannot believe that he got that two star that early like you know we call no nah, he's not gonna get nico that's out that's too much they were just yeah. out and he just gets the nico gets the radiant on it it was yep. it was too much like if you get that much of a high roll that early on it can only go like, it can almost only go downhill from there but it kept going uphill for brubba what a game it was uh it was that was actually a great finish and you know normally when skip has a board like that um i would say you know that's an amazing board skip's gonna do great but unfortunately, the same board was just better for Brava because of the Radiant item, because of that early roll, because he got everything already going for him. Yeah. So it was just a catch-up battle. And he, it's hard to catch up to something like that. So amazing games from both of them. I got to yeah. catch my breath from that one, Gum uh, Gooba. I don't think I'm ready to go straight back into the next game. I think we got to take a little bit of a break if everyone just sink, sink in, drinking that yep. entire round. And then we can go fresh into the last game of the day, making sure that we know exactly who our champion's going to be. Yeah, no, uh, we'll take a five minute and uh, we'll get back into uh, back here for our final game. Get some more.
Hello, welcome back everybody. It's the Monkey Bubble TFT Peanut Butter Cup, our weekly tournament right here for 300 euros. Looking over here at this scoreboard right now, we've had an amazing lobby just now where Brabba and Skip basically cheese the entire thing with two star actions. That means they're in t in first and second, and it's basically... I mean, Brabba can get mathematically knocked to third by Restrito if Restrito mm -hmm. takes first and the tiebreakers like work out. Um, but Skip is basically guaranteed top two. He's guaranteed yep. 175 euros already. Uh, Brabba, I mean close he's almost guaranteed to set like that, that as well um so we'll see it's basically a battle between them just as it was at the end of the last round and could anything be more poetic than that i don't know yeah no it's uh it's interesting you know we've been we've seen different end games almost every single game but it almost seems like every end game that we're playing is just mirror matchups which is really funny um but yeah it's 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 interesting to see what gets pulled out this game because, you know, we've seen Karma, we've seen Draven, we've seen Velkaz, we've seen, you know, the two-star auctions, you know, it's, it's going to be really interesting, you know, I'm, I'm just going to call it, it's going to be like, uh, it's a, a chug bug finisher. I, I, I'm, okay. I'm gonna just say okay. it. Okay, shock shock finisher. That's where you're going with. I think. Yeah. I think. Let's just see the opener. Let's just see the opener, and then we can make like a proper call. For I now, we've already bones. we've already seen so many amazing things today. I mean, we coined we coined the term "smolly bear" for for for, for God's sake. You know, like we've we've, yeah. done, we've done things today. We've we've made some things work. But now we got to see what the players can do in that last lobby. Uh, top two is pretty much locked in, but top four definitely isn't. There is only six points between the numbers uh, three and six. So. A lot to yeah. play for still. Uh, they can all still get that top four. I think even Suyan can still get there. Uh, but uh, Ak is uh, pretty much out. Unfortunately, fortunately, eighth place. Let's say the eighth place itself isn't locked in, but I don't think they're going to be able to make it to that top uh, top four anymore. Uh, so still a lot to play for this game. Uh, only one potential griefer, but I don't think they're yeah. going to be like that. They haven't been like that all day. They've been great players. And EU once again showing up their skill. Let's see what we're going to the carousel, what they're going to make happen here. Does the cloak get left off to the side for one final go? <laughs> see, Brubba is checking out his score. He's like, yeah, yeah. I'm He's like, what do I need to do? I'm pretty much in, locked in here. <laughs> yeah, as long as he, uh, you know, Brubba's just got to outplay Skip. And, yep. uh, well, actually, no, he's got to outplay Skip by at least two, assuming that Skip does not, or uh, doesn't bot four. Yeah. So... Still, still pretty like on the wire for first. Yeah, and then obviously on, the, on first is just on the wire because um, uh, like there, there's a different. We might actually have to look at the different tiebreakers there are. Like, what if they get the same score basically? Uh, mm -hmm. Like, if Brava gets first and Skip gets second or something like that, because then you have to look at uh, at all the other games that came before. What did they score? With their placements, etc. Uh, and I think overall, Brava has like the higher average. Um. But I'm not entirely skip might have the higher average. We'll we'll get to that well if we get to it. Let's first just uh, watch the game play out. I hope we don't have do to where our match. openers are. Let's uh let's not do do let that go there. Ragnar yep. has a, a pretty decent opener. Of course, got some skirmishing going on. Already got a rod on that Olaf, which you know you don't need for the Olaf, but yep. it's nice to have Perfect. in the rest of the game. Great opener. Now we're just looking for one sentinel to kind of like round him off. Yeah, um, you can play the Sentinel, you can play the keep the Riven on the board for level five for the Legionnaire, or even level four if you really need to, assuming you don't find that Sentinel. So Rengar, definitely com comfortable. For sure. Of course, it's good that he's comfortable because he's in sixth place currently. He wants to get enough points to potentially shoot himself up the fourth. It's gonna be an uphill battle. He does need no, does need Ooh, a few item. players to not do as well and to go their way, but anything can happen still in this lobby. <laughs> Unfortunate that we don't find that uh, Sentinel. That Sentinel, yeah. but you do still have the Gwinzo Slam, which honestly is not that bad in the current meta. So I'm I'm curious to see if he does ultimately go for it. But uh, guess uh, might might just greed for a little bit. See what this next Karasa or this uh, armory gives him. He doesn't have to. And like right now, we really doesn't have to do it. It's something that like. I opt into if I see an item that like I know how to play around, but maybe he's not an uh a you know a rage blade gamer, so to speak. 
looking here towards... I mean, his first fight is, is looking to pretty much yeah. go his way, just because he's got the tankiness plus the damage, which is, of course, like the, the prime uh, the prime element that Skirmisher really brings. Like, you do have a decent amount of HP, but it's mostly that ramping damage. You will, generally speaking, outplay a composition that is trying to minimize frontline and maximize backline, because uh, they won't get through you in time a lot of the time. Absolutely. I'm excited to see what comes off this uh, armory and what he ultimately decides to go for. Yeah, Ooh, I think it's Cloak. The Ruinons, and then, uh, yeah. yeah. Potentially the Ruinons. No no Sentinels Ruinons. coming through. I would say Ruinons it's is Ruinons. no Rainer here, but there's so much you can do. He's going to build the blade first because uh, it just it just works, period. Um, yep. And, and then, then Ruinons on... Put the cannon in. Yeah, and then the Runons on the Udir is fantastic, but it does put him in a bad position if he gets a Sentinel next round and does not find the, the Olaf, so... True. Uh, does that opt into making gold? Yeah, he's gonna get rid of the cannon again. I think he doesn't really see a way in which the cannon can work other than, like, building further into Skirmisher, because he doesn't want to go Hellion. Uh, and I don't, I totally get that. Like, cannon is an amazing unit if you have a good, if you have a strong Skirmisher comp, because he does so much around the map. Um... Mm -hmm. But at this stage of the game, it's not really necessary. And uh, oftentimes, if you want to go there, you really need to sort of tunnel vision into that certain composition. So Cannon doesn't really open up a lot of other avenues. He's something that you throw away really quickly anyways. And if you're already not that interested in going that route, it's fine. Like just throwing away, get, go for the golds. I totally get it. Um, yeah. I like Cannon a lot, but I, I do respect that decision right here. Yeah, I mean, it's not something that I I'll hold on to for, you know, more than stage, you know, two. Um, unless, of course, I am getting into that, uh, into that Hellion board or something along those lines. Unfortunately, still not finding the, uh, the Sentinels. So, curious that he doesn't double level here, but I guess there's nothing that he can immediately put in to make his board, you know, directly stronger outside of, a, you know, a th an extra unit. You know, an extra body of the board. So, decides to just continue to make Econ, play it safe. Um, because if you level and lose, nothing worse. No worse feeling. Interesting. Skip goes with the... Uh, goes with the Ionic Slam. Also has the ability, if he finds a Ziggs, he can slam a blue buff on that uh, Kled, and it'll pop right off. So, you know, no harm in having that tier on the Kled right now. Uh, if you're not going to use it elsewhere. Does end up, uh, oh, actually, you know, this is anybody's fight. Udyr has can do some impressive things, but that Thresh CC uh, is a little menacing. CC. It is, but he's still alive. He's still doing something. Ooh. No, he's not going to get it. He uh, has too much to fight against. Th that stun really messed him up. Without that stun, he mm -hmm. would have gotten there. That CC was uh, a little bit too hot is... on his heels. Thresh is something else. That is one of those units that uh, I will not be upset about them nerfing. Though he has won me more fights than I can count. So, yeah. you know, maybe it'll uh, drop my skill level by a couple points. Maybe, maybe. Uh, I mean, but that's, I, I think in general, like, it, it's one of those units that if they really nerf him where he becomes, I wouldn't say unusable, but like really niche, uh, mm -hmm. that messes up about 80% of the player base is gameplay. Like, it really changes the game in, in itself. And right now, it doesn't matter if they nerf him because they're almost getting a new set. So he might yeah. not even be there anymore. Who knows? So it's a shame that he has the items that he does because Kled a reroll, um, if you hit in a manner like this, right, seven Kleds at 2-5 is yeah. actually a very viable um, path. But uh, not as strong when you force it, but definitely something that is playable. Where is the magnetic remover when you need it? Absolutely, yeah, exactly. Um, but it does look like he's just opting to go towards like some form of yeah. AP. Yeah, and just have it, you know, at the end of the yeah, day. It being a three, three star is strong enough in itself. And, you know, you might just build other items into it. It might not be optimal for Kled, but you're still building items. Yeah, and so you can play that to like level really eight, level nine. Yeah, he's not a late game unit anyways. It's fine. Yeah, and especially, right, it's not really costing them anything to play these units, right? You could sell a one, co like, so when you upgrade a two cost unit, right, you, you almost always lose one gold. But when you yeah. up upgrade one cost units, you never lose gold. That one cost unit is worth three gold. So, you know, it doesn't hurt him, you know, he's not losing econ, and it provides him his strongest board at the moment. So, pretty smart play.
Exactly. You just get some get some more knights that he could potentially get in the shop. He could even throw in a, a, a Tristana if he really wants to have some fun. But uh, at this stage, I don't think that's the route they want to go. Could I'd say four knight angle. To be fair, could do that. Yeah, the, the Syndra really, I mean, so there's just uh, a concept that I like to, well, I, I didn't coin it, but I like to always be conscious of. Um, oh, and I, again, uh, it's another uh, another socks term, but um, hidden synergies, right? So uh, Syndra, Thresh, Poppy all have an innate hidden synergy as they will always target the furthest unit from them. So really, yeah. you know, that was the thing that he was doing in that last turn was playing a unit that will essentially assist in bullying of a backline corner carry. So always a good, uh, if you don't have something directly, you know, better to play in that moment, always a great thing to play. Yeah, Syndra has always been that unit that you're like, oh, why do you have a Syndra? Oh, that just ruins everything I want to do is a Syndra just throws away, throws my unit around. And it's, yep. yeah. That's how it is. Oh, he has that clit angle. He can play an early three-star clit. There's even an argument for him to roll a little bit at five mm. if he does it not would. just full out natural it. Yeah, yeah, and then that just... Though, like, he's still in a pretty decent spot. Like, he's, he's, he's still on a three-win streak. He hasn't really lost anything because he hasn't lost anything in the last few rounds. He might get it naturally anyways. Like, he doesn't have to roll now. Definitely don't roll before you get the next chop. It's an NPC round anyways. And he's going to get extra gold from these two unless he wants to use them. Yeah, I find it unlikely that he'll keep the Aphelios, but he can uh -huh. definitely keep that, uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, Bill yeah, no Aphelios. Quickly, uh, does, around. Does not find the uh, Club 3 Star, but he does get the Hellion Knight Cav. Perfect synergies. You know, we love to see it. Not, not a wasted unit on that board. Not at all. And it's got plenty on the bench to still use. Not at all. Uh, gotta go. Nice little savings, savings account. No direct goal, but indirectly for sure. Rubba also in a fantastic spot. Finally, he's got Sentinels, got the Legionnaires online, got the upgraded Aurelio with that Warmogs. That Warmogs provides infinite value with that uh, Aurelia damage reduction. So, great, great item, great board. Also fighting another great board. So, we'll see who ends up coming out on top. But it's looking like at the surface level, um, Rubba is the favorite to win here. Yeah. You know, it's actually the easiest win that he's, I think, that he's seen all day. Not a single unit going down. Nope. It's going to get a lot of damage to Skip. Skip's the one that uh, doesn't really want to lose any units right now. I mean, mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's, well, he's supposed to be one of the winners. But uh, currently, Brubba in that first place. So Brubba really gunning for that uh, for the 100 euros instead of the 75. A lot yeah, of levels of speed great... hit, of course. We are in 3 2. This is where everyone goes en masse. Yeah, indeed, it happened. Yeah, we see the level 6 pop in, a couple rolls coming out from people, hitting their pairs. Upgrades coming out, you know. So, definitely a higher tempo lobby just based off those couple uh, pop ups that we just saw. So, people are going to start taking some serious damage. Yeah, they want to get it over with. They don't want those long games. It's uh, they're, they're done, you know. Airy Frog's already on 64. <laughs> it's not a not a great i mean and harry frog you know he has the he has the opportunity to still pop into the top four he's on fifth currently only four points away from number three mestrito so uh, he definitely has the opportunity to uh to sneak his way in but he does need to of course Ooh. do well enough to do that that pike uh kind of being the secret carry of this fight in the back line pretty impressive doing a lot of damage two thousand damage coming out of that pike don't see that too Just often just figuring i mean it, it's one of those things right it's really relatively early in the game still you get a two-star assassin as long as you position him well he can do a lot yeah that and then combining that with the sentinel buff um yeah him just getting additional stacks and capping out that attack speed interesting that he's opting to go for the four legion air play he could also fit that it. sentinel but you have to play a significantly weaker unit mm-hmm I got the Bloodthirster on the Riven. And I, I've oh seen this four Legion Air board. I've seen it, you know, come into me and say, I, I'll look at it and I'll be like, oh, this is such a free win. Like, I'm about to, you know, clear this board. And then it, it just, you, you know, up. runs me over. So, you know, maybe this is something that uh, we're going to start to see more play of just across all of, uh, all of the regions.
Also, we have a more than decent speed buff. You know, you get a mm -hmm. get a very quick thing. So as long as you don't, as long as certain yeah. units are not able to get their attacks off, that uh, legionnaire is definitely gonna just run over you. Yeah, and it's running, it's running boards over. And if we, uh, you know, quick look at Suyan's board, uh, just like from this fight, you can see that he's going for what looks like uh, the Soraka, you know, Dawnbringer reroll. So it'll be interesting to see. You know, maybe we finally get. Maybe a little chug, not so much the bug. You know, so and that's, that's enough real, for me. That's the real reason right there. Brubbit is chugging his last glass of water, knows he's fully hydrated. That's how you get that brain power online. Absolutely. And maybe he's just drinking enough. Maybe that's all it is. It's, the it's, all, it's all about the hydro power. homies. Yeah. It's all about the hydro homies. Don't sleep on I the think water. It was water. I think it was a clear liquid. But, uh, could be anything. That or he's drinking straight vodka. It's also a move, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Power move, I'll say that. Wow. No, I really uh wow. taking two star, that's a good chop. I, I, I was I would I would go as far, you know. I would just go as far to say that is a fantastic chop. Now he has a tough decision. He's not picking up the Galio see. though. I mean why wouldn't you oh, he, oh, the Galio, he is, right? He is. Oh, but maybe he wants to play interesting. Maybe not. Oh, he's not. Nah, okay, he's doing it. I was, I was saying, I would be a little bit worried if he's not picking, picking up the Galio. That would be like the, the, you know, the no-brainer unit to pick up from that. Yeah. One. Even if you're not going to use him, at least you have him. Yeah, I think the, the the internal conflict that he's having right now is whether or not he wants to play and play for that Aurelia three-star, or if he wants to swap items onto the Galio. Right now, it is superior with that four Legionnaire, but. Um, I mean, I don't know how important that the skirmisher buff was, but it does give you that Dawnbringer tool on the Riven, who you have carrying all your items. So, in that situation, you know, I just go with my standard and say, "Oh, he gets rid both? of it." Like, how about both? Well, in this case, how about both? It's not going to happen. But why not both? You know, Ooh, great selection of items. You no, know, right, depending I on the lobby, that Rose Thorn. He's going to go Rose Thorn, right? I think he's checking, but I, I think uh, Rose Thorn is, is the one to go for. No, uh, there's only there's only three AD units. Mm -hmm. It's probably Demon Slayer Rascals here. A lot of uh, AP coming across. You see him think, doesn't know. And that's the thing because he's in such a position to just take everything. He doesn't want to make that mistake. He's oh, he got, he's ends up going for, for it. Still very interesting. It. It's beef. It I, I wonder. I mean. I wonder it if he leans for that. Uh, his, uh, he, might, he might be thinking of those five cost units later on. Where he's like, this is just not going to work better if I put like a Garen in or something. Yeah. I don't know. Like, uh, it could be. There's also the the strong opportunity. And I hope, you know, I want to see, I want to see a three star, you know, Aurelia, you know, full, full on just capped board. I want to see that come across. So, you know, I think that that's where his mind, mind was. You know, I have this ability to play this unit. I already have six of them. Um, we haven't seen that Radiant Blessing come across, though Harry Frog is popping. Unfortunately, I don't think that he's going to scout that Radiant Blessing. Um, but always something to like keep in mind, depending on you know what units are coming across, uh, how many you have, etc. Granted, it's a very long way away from him. Harry Frog hits a Galio 2-star. That'll be interesting to see how his board mm -hmm. caps out. Yeah, I mean, I do, I do like that he picks the legionnaire buff over, like you know, further upgrading uh, anything else. Like, doesn't have to go for assassin, doesn't have to go for nightbringer. It's just the four legionnaire is working for now, and I think it will keep working uh, for the foreseeable future, especially mm. because he's tanked out that are really so much. Um, it does end up rolling. Nope, there's the Garen. But there it's it is. Already, the, here comes the five stars for the five costs. Gets yeah, the Draven. Really upgrade. Pretty good Draven items. Yeah, I mean, pro you probably want to swap out Six, the, uh, the Callista, the Callista for the Draven, though. No, doesn't do it. Actually, throws out something else. Playing Six Legion. Interesting. This is a well, fun again, board. You, you've, you've got that tank on the front line, and if no one is really trying to get to your back line, you've got a lot of opportunity for Legionnaires to properly ramp and just run over everything. And so far, it's been working. So why not buff the thing that has been working? Yeah. He got an and especially with those items about right now, but it's not the same. I mean, Rengar thought this was working for them last game. Why would it not work for me? Well, because you're not you were, they weren't playing against six Legionnaire last game, Rengar. That's why. 
Don't know if that would have made a difference, but at least it's looking like it's not right now. <laughs> go, let's go over to Rengar's board. Let's see uh, see what he's up to indeed. No, may, maybe he gets his break. action. Uh, unfortunately. It's a one star. That's the difference. Yeah, yep. should it be a two star. Well, oh. it's, it's, okay, oh. let, me this, let me try this again, right? Let me try this again. Would be really annoying. Like if he gets a if he gets a Nico right now, then it's just out. Then we're just out, right? Yeah. No. Then I mean, you know, the, the streamcast itself. <laughs> oh. You know, there can can there be a five? Yeah, there can be a five cost on this carousel, right? Of course, there can be. Yeah. 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 He has an opportunity. But also, like, you can just go eight. Wow. What are, what are these five cost shops? Where are they? Where? I better, you know, I'm going to be playing after this, and this better be happening to me. It's very simple. It's A, it's EU, and the reason yeah. that it's EU is because Worlds is not played on this patch. So, you know, on the server. So if Worlds yes. is not played on the server, they can do whatever they want. So they're just experimenting. They're, they're doing like a soft patch, and then making sure that everything with the five costs is in order. So we can have Makes some sense. fun. Uh, and we are at the end of the set, so we're going to get some wacky things. Maybe a lot of five costs is what we're getting. And we do see the golden banana lady, Soraka herself coming out. We get to see some spicy comps today, right? We get to see six Legionnaire. We get to see Soraka, you know, with uh, with some crazy items too. You know, this yeah. is shaping up to be a fun last game. For sure. I want to see a banana win. You know, if you're not going to give me the chug jug, at least, or the chug bug, at least give me like the, the chug. Chug. I don't think it's happening anymore, man. I think I think you've you've cursed it by asking for too much. Uh, it's it's not like Beetlejuice, you know. You don't. It's not because you say it so much; it actually happens. So no, no, no. I'm manifesting. Okay. <laughs> the game's not over. You 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 keep trying that. I will. Unfortunately, okay. I will. Rengar Rengar still with his uh, with his action, still the one star, but he's uh, you know he's looking for. It. He's still swinging. This time it might be winning. That Draven is not going to look be looking at him, at least. Yeah, that's it. That's the win for him. Fabulotus taking that hit. And now we can actually look at a little bit of the health totals. Like, who's, who's doing well? Who's in a little bit of a, of a rough spot? Brava has been losing a few rounds, but it's still Harry Frog that's way at the bottom. Actually, quite a bit away from uh, the number seven at the moment. Two cloaks in this one. Someone's going to have to pick one up. What's Rengar going to do? Going to get to leave the gate soon. Uh, he's gonna pick that sword up. I like a yeah, sword. I mean, in his in his board, always a safe safe item here. Honestly, all four of those items, you know, can lead him into something that he wanted. So, you know, definitely not upset about a four cost sword. Not at all. Yeah, you can look at like for an alternative carry in you know another uh, sentinel in the like giant slayer um, on maybe? action. I don't know. It's there. Oh yeah, giant slayer is a fantastic item. Especially, you know, with all these maybe now. Oh, we, we slammed the sword on sword on fame, but it doesn't finish, finish it. Come on. Come uh, on thinking about the, player. I think, I think he's thinking about the potential for a, a high roll like belt. You know, a little Zeke's action. But I think it's always the giant slayer. To be Just honest, the giant slayer down. The Zeke's Zeke's doesn't warrant it. Like Zeke's doesn't warrant waiting for. I think I don't think you can like say I might get a Zeke's. Let's wait for it. That's not a greetable item, in my opinion. You either have it or you don't have it and if you don't have it you're not going to wait for it no i it definitely agree here i mean yeah it does not make a difference right you have BI oh it does potentially no, but like zeke's zeke's wouldn't have made a difference there i think i don't think that would have made the change there that would have made him win that round like it's a good item but it's not that good yeah the giant the giant oh okay so we get rid of that yeah, unfortunately, he does lose that lobby. Maybe, you know, maybe it was calculated, right? This is maybe. something that, like, even when it doesn't necessarily look calculated, I do a lot. I like to, you know, say I'm going for Stimmy. So maybe he was going for Stimmy there. Maybe there's a maybe. little bit of mental math that I, I wasn't doing. Going for that Radiant Blessing. There's a lot of things you could be going for, honestly. Like, it didn't have to be Fox. Wow. So yeah, Skip never found that that uh, that upgraded cut, unfortunately. But he does find that comfort pick from uh, two games ago, the uh, the Karma uh, Cavalier board. He's with that Aphelios. Like the Aphelios is just was just popping. 
does indeed uh, take out Rengar on that one. Yep. And it's still Skip and Brubba in number one and two, even in this lobby. They're really close together, only two HP apart. This is really the battle for the ages, so to speak. Yeah, no, this the is... The beautiful I mean... thing is, we have both our POVs, so we can keep skipping back and forth. We're not going to do that, of course. We're going to look at other boards as well, if we can. But it's, uh, it's a fun one to have both those streams up. Yeah, especially, you know... I mean, right now they're they're the the most tense competition for each other. Yeah. I, so, all right, we already got a Teemo, right? A four seven. Somebody already got that at level seven. The five costs are coming out. One percent odds. No additional items. Is he gonna go for a QSS Karma? Oh, well, you can get really start right him. now. So I might as well, right? I mean, he's, he's, yeah, he's thinking about locking. Nah. to make you know potentially get an armory but it's such a such a low rate of return yeah thing might as well slam it absolutely right we're playing for the most amount of hp we can save possible and right now 68 66 between him and robo i mean you gotta you gotta save every last bit that you can every point's gonna count suyan so is looking kind of medicine here has got the four renewers down has got the uh you know, a lot of the core units that you want, but that Karma is dropping bombs. Yeah, she's uh, she's going to be doing wow. a lot of damage, and that Soraka, I mean, three star with the blue buff, it's just not, I mean, she's not a damage unit, she's not a carry, she's yeah. a support unit, and it, it's, it's really strange to see someone invest that much into a support unit. Like, yeah, there's cool things you can do with a Soraka, Soraka but you need a little bit more on your board, and I don't think there's enough next to the Soraka that can really make it work. Harry Frog really uh, starting to climb up the ladder a little bit, might actually be able to get up. Uh, the main person they're trying to catch, I mean, per people, uh, main players are trying to catch are uh, Fabulotus and Restrito. So already doing one of those, because uh, Restrito is dropping down. Uh, this if is you the, just the actually end up there, it'd be great. Oh no, the Karma gets caught by the Thresh Hook. Her worst enemy is about to get mowed down by the Raven. Unfortunate. That's a ton of damage coming to skip. A lot, yeah. Fabulotus. Oh, doing but Brava too? Good job in this. Yeah, they're, they, I mean, they're both, they have a lot of HP, but they're still going to lose, lose quite a little bit in these rounds as well because they're just not able to, uh, to consistently win. Now Skip just uh, is already on oh. first and is sticking on first for now. Both taking a taking a hit. Skip is it's playing good. for first. He's saving. You know, he has the opportunity to roll. He has a couple things he can hit, but he ultimately wants to find, you know, that fully capped board. And uh, of course, to beat Harry Frog, you need to. You're you're all or nothing. Yeah, yeah. Harry, but Harry. I mean, Harry Frog needs to gain five points. Um. I mean, Harry Frog just basically needs to get uh and get four or five points at, you know roughly restrito is now out he's eighth so it means restrito only gets one point if harry frog makes five or more points he uh he probably gets up there yeah probably this this blue buff this blue buff item this karma with uh rabadons that is all you need you you do so much damage she doesn't even have doesn't even have dawn Bears, doesn't even need it Oh, Rengar says, with hey. his lobby, unfortunately looking like he's going to throw away that chance at the top four. Not going to make it. He's on four HP at the moment. Very likely to go out next round. Does pick up a Dragon's Claw. Not the, not the worst thing to put, pull up. No, definitely really good with uh, some of these AP boards, you know. Basically, yeah. he hasn't fought uh, someone like Skip in a long time. So, you know, playing for his most likely uh, upcoming matchups here. There we go with the rel. Looking for some upgrades to stabilize. Bike. Where's the claw gonna go though? Where is he gonna put it? Because he's gotta he's gotta put it on somebody. Can't not use it. Doesn't take the senna. Hmm. Interesting decision. I don't think the Lucian is the one he needs to buff up his most. I mean, he really was looking for that for that two star uh, action, but he still hasn't found it. Yeah, and he doesn't unfortunately have the angle on that Karma, but maybe with uh, 
you know, action coming in to assassinate that Teemo and then swinging back around to assassinate the right side, he does have an opportunity, right? Oh, that uh, I think that that uh, like decaw is yeah, paying he's dividends. Getting it. He's getting it. That's perfect. Though, it does send Skip to that stimulus, you know, that, that Radiant Blessing. So it gives him a little bit of, uh, you know, money in the pocket, so to speak, now that he is level 9. Yeah, Brabba now on the verge of going out. Brabba really needs to not go out right now. If he goes out in this <laughs> next round, Brabba is confirmed not going to be the winner. And then Skip can just ride it out. Skip is because Skip cannot be caught. Like no one can catch Skip. If he gets one point, everyone else but Brabba cannot catch him anymore. So he's already in. Like he's already at least guaranteed top two. Um, and if Brabba goes out, he's guaranteed winner already. But Brabba is not out yet. Let's see if these three stars that he just recently hit, he has a rally, he has a Riven, he had the, the Yasuo, but it's already taken down. Is that enough? Fabu Fabulotus is win streak. No, that's not enough. And uh, not he enough. ends up bottom six. Ends up at seven. Let's see what Rengar does. Does he get seven or Rengar six? Rengar recovers. He makes it. All okay, right. So it's confirmed seventh place for Brubba here. Brava, unfortunately, not being able to challenge Skip anymore in this lobby. So Skip on his victory lap, but we're not done yet. There's still an opportunity for um, for other players to potentially get up here. Fabulotus cannot catch Brava or Skip No, uh, He's so the only one for in third. the old top four. Playing for third and fourth even still, I think. I think fourth, it might still, all be, up, might still be up for the grasp as well. Um, because yeah, third everyone and fourth is both in right now, third or fourth are still in, still in play. And Rengar is uh, making a play for it, for sure. He was on 26 points on sixth. Needs to try and catch Resdrito or Fabulotus. Resdrito went out with 33 points total, I think. Yeah, it, it has not... Uh, yeah, because his score hasn't been... 33 points total, yeah. Um... So, yeah, I mean, Rengar would need to get uh, seven, well, eight, eight or nine points, and then he's in. Then he's got that, uh, then he's beating Restrito. If he gets, he, he can get less as well, but it depends on how Fabulotus does, because Fabulotus is really on top of the board right now, so it's hard yeah. to see him not get a top four spot with this already. Great positioning for Rengar. If he gets that Teemo, you know, very high odds that he wins this fight, and he does. He does get it. Ren Rengar is uh, in a position, you know, if he can get this Nico to show up, if he can get this action to show up, you know, he is... Because he's been out. stuck. Skip went out on sixth. That's uh, Skip getting oh. that one point over Brava this round. So he's now wow. on, uh, on 43 wow. points. Harry <laughs> Frog out. Maybe Harry Frog out oh. as well. I think I think that means that Harry Frog is confirmed. Wait, how many points did he get? He got five points, right? Yeah, no, four. Um, yeah, that means he's like no, he's not making top four with that, unfortunately. So Rengar is the only one that can still throw a wrench in the plans of any of the other players at the mo at the moments. Uh, maybe Tsuyan if he wins, but Tsuyan is uh, is is hard pressed for that. This Pretty is crazy. Such a lobby. Like I'm not. Let's just not try and do math and just enjoy this, because honestly, we're just gonna get our get our uh, our brains twisted at that stage. Rengar, yeah, that's with a lot of thinking for me. So we're just getting the action uh, hero plays in these last lobbies right now, because action. I mean, I, I rarely see him in my own games, which is weird, because you know you would think people pick it up more, but you, you can see why it's so hard to make, because you see all these conditions that need to be met for uh, action to be really, really strong. Uh, it's all these specific items. It's the other units around it that need to distract from it and, and buy time. And oh, then you need to you need to act on. Oh, you guys on the back line. This kind of clutching up. Gets behind the Lucian. You know, this is uh, this is yeah. the perfect storm for a win. Gets last that top three. Time, I think last time he lost that matchup because the Lucian was too strong, but the Lucian was distracted for long enough this time around. It wasn't the one one to finish. That means he gets that uh, top finish. It looks like Tsuyan. No, Tsuyan is also still in oh. Fabulotus losing that one. So it it's is between Tsuyan, Rengar, and Fabulotus. And I think all three of these guys can still catch Restrito. Oh, Fabulotus is, is definitely can catch uh, Restrito. But all these other three can still catch Restrito to get that top four in. This is really between these three guys to see who gets in the top four or not. Fabulotus is pretty much locked in at this stage. The other two. I mean, Suyan, 
can still catch him. He is uh, yeah. exactly eight points behind. If Tsuyan wins, he's top four, I think. Yeah, no, he, he would be. Uh, but then Great. if Rengar gets second... Oh, this is math. Again, I'm starting to, starting to do math again. I need to stop. Um, yeah, that's okay. too much thinking for me. Oh, my brain no, is too Akshan small. Is spinning to win, and Action is still swinging to win. Oh, but these calves are, are kind of being a menace. Oh, Action does want to win the game, though. You know, he, he's hitting all the he's right not units. Make it. Oh, he's not unfortunate. Make it. Fabulotus unfortunate. ends the run. Now, how, how, for Rengar, but Suyan does win. Fabulotus. We have the ability for the Banana Mama herself to clutch out this lobby. So I, you know, let's see how this plays out. I, I'm excited. You know, I, I, I want to see something new. I mean, we haven't seen new things every single game. You know, we got the six Legion. We got all the Karma games. We've gotten dozens of Draven games or Draven boards, rather. Well, I mean, but that's that's the beauty about this current meta, about this current patch. That so much is possible and can win under the right circumstances. And you can now see that because he's got that Karma next to it, that that means that the Soraka and the Karma are working in tandem. And then you've got that just ultimate tank form of Garen on the front line. Like there's so much going his way, but Fabulotus right here with this board. I mean, you can see it. There's a reason why this has been winning because you got the Cavaliers, you got the Legionnaires, you got the Draven fully itemized. Like this is just a board full of potential on both sides. But who Ooh, nice. is going to get on top of this? Great positioning wow. to uh, protect that uh, protect that Soraka does not get stolen by the Vago. No. Soraka is just ramping up. Oh my. It's shaping up to be a Banana Mama win. He's going to get it. And soon we have one more wins have mo this lobby. Yep. One more round. One more round. No. Down to the wire. Down to the wire. Indeed. The <laughs> the banana mama. I mean, you know, yeah. what? Monkey Bob, we like some bananas. So I'm all for it. Let the banana mama win and clutch that fourth place out. Because I think that's that is literally what's about to happen here. I think yeah. Suyan might be about to clutch that fourth place, coming in from twenty five points to try and catch Restrito on thirty three. It looks like yeah, it's, it's gonna. Uh, it is a spicy one. Positioning in and a half. It, can that Viego do anything? Because that's kind of the only thing that can stop this. That Viego needs to catch something. But there's no like, so way. So that, or Suyan's positioning is really smart there. He blocks in that uh, that Ivern's with uh, the Nidalee and the, the Daisy Rakan, so, so never comes in. And the Banana Mama clutches it out. That's what I like to see. We did not see the Chug bug, but we saw the Chug and the Banana. So I am happy. Suyan with that. nine points ends up with 34. Fabulot is with eight points on 39. So that's number one, Skip A is number two, Brabba, number three, Fabulotus at number four, Tsuyan. Tsuyan with that last game actually clutches it out by one mm -hmm. point difference. That's the beauty of getting that 10 points out of the way. It's just nine to one, and it's a beautiful finish right here. The Banana Mama does Fantastic. it again. Well, does it again. Maybe it was the first time ever that she's done it, but she's done it. <laughs> and Tsuyan gets that fourth place, gets, uh, gets to walk away with a little bit of cash. But the champion of the day is, of course, Skipeus and Brabba that uh, got that second place. What games, man? That was insane to watch. Yeah, no, I had a ton of fun. I had a ton of fun. You know, Skipeus really, you know, Skipeus and Brubba both, both put on a master yeah. class, you know, master class is in hitting action or action at a uh, 4-2, you know, upgraded. You know, it's a true player diff when moments like that happen. So yeah, no, but it, I mean, the games have been fantastic. That was, that was a radiant item diff, right? Like with that two level, I mean, oh, they both yeah. got the two star action, but the one at the radiant item, that's that's what that one uh, ended up. But yeah, I mean, in the end, I mean, uh, who was it? Rengar almost got back into it with a uh, with a swing to win as well, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. it wasn't that two star that he probably would have needed. That two star might have made the difference. There were a few other factors as well, but in the end. I mean, we did see the the, the the spin to win change this week to the swing to win. We got the new yeah. new terminology. We had the the smolly bear that also came smally out a few bear. times. But I mean, what haven't we seen? I'm, I'm, yeah. I mean, we haven't seen the chug bug. It hasn't come out. Did not see the chug I mean, bug. Kind of asking for it. You're just asking for it too much. It, it's just <sighs> I'm I'm telling you, man. It just it has to be an in the moment thing, not a I want yeah. this, but a oh this also exists, and then just you know it happens to pop up. I'm oh, just gonna say it I exists. am. It's I am a little disappointed with this group of players, you know, no faith in the chug bug, but I get it. I get it, you know. Yeah. It's it's a it's a point of contention, so I don't blame you for playing two star action. Um 
but I, I personally opt in for the chug bug. But no, no, great games. You know, we saw, you know, just about every comp that you could want. Um, you know, really, really diverse meta right now. You know, again, the six Legionnaires coming out, albeit did not top four. Um, you know, Karma, I think, is the uh, the underdog in, you yeah. know, in terms of like being a dominant force in uh, this upcoming meta. Well, I mean, again, and I, I really wasn't expecting Akshan to be that front and center this week or least at all. I mean, it just it just happened to pop up. I mean, yeah, of course, there was that one game where two players get a two star really early on and it kind of, you know, spirals out of control from there. But the fact that it came back even the games after, that just solidifies that so many champions can all of a sudden show up and just dominate a lobby or don dominate a tournament. And that's something we'd love to see. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, obviously, Huge congrats to Skip, Skip Ace for winning that one out. You walk away with 100 euros and uh, I mean the other th top three as well. But in general, all 16 players today showing us some great TFT, showing up whenever it was needed, whenever the world needed the most to show us some beautiful gameplay. And uh, of course, thank you as well, Gooba, for joining me today on the cast. Yeah. I want to thank our producer in the background, Sven, as well. And of course, Monkey Bubble for making this wonderful event happen. Of course, we're going to be back next week. 60 new players, 60 new faces, but again, 300 euros on the line. Same time, same channel. Make sure to follow Monkey Bubble on Twitter so you are updated whenever things go live. Uh, also, outside of TFT. And if you want to participate, if you are Masters or above in the EU West region or uh, any of the, you know, connecting regions uh, make sure you sign up use the exclamation mark shine up or uh, sign up or follow us on twitter or on discord to figure out where you can sign up and how that works um there's no you know wait list in terms of sign up sooner you, you get to play sooner and uh, next week there will just be another cup so with that and, uh, thank you so much for watching and if you have any closing thoughts go up <laughs> Oh, no, I was just going to say, yeah, no, thank you for uh, inviting me. My first time casting, so a uh, ton of fun, you know, great team to work with. Uh, excited to see, you know, some more of the, the tournaments and invitationals that you put on. So, you know, great fun. Um, but yeah, I'm Gooba. You know, I, I stream just about every single day um, around 5 p.m. Eastern time. Um, you can catch me at uh, twitch.tv slash Gooba, as well as my Twitter uh, list below, Gooba TFT. Um, but yeah, no, ton of fun, and I appreciate the uh, opportunity. And uh, yeah, great to are. see all these uh, EU talent, and uh, hope to learn a little bit more. And for all you EU folks that don't know what 5 p.m. Eastern means, that's uh, 11 p.m. Uh, CEST, so European standard. Yes. If, uh, in case you're wondering for now though this has been the monkey bubble uh tft peanut butter cup weekly tournament we'll see you hopefully in the next one uh it's only a week away make sure you sign up and uh, stay tuned for more